we're back. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey. It hasn't been too long since the last episode, right? Uh, I will tell you exactly how long it's been. As soon oh, as God. I pulled up on my phone, because I, personally speaking, I don't have a fucking idea how long it's been. It's been Neither two do I. months. Two months. Yeah, because our last video it was with TC. Our last video was. Yep. Holy. There was nothing fuck. else after that. There was nothing else that occurred after that. Definitely nothing else at all, and we definitely aren't a little... Nothing, <laughs> nothing little, that's uh, been erased from the annals of YouTube history into the unlisted yeah. section of my channel, which you can find a uh, playlist specifically for that um, that no one else will be getting money from. <laughs> yeah, and we're definitely not miffed at a certain company for being a bunch of fucking sharks. Yep. It's been over two months because it's been two months and four days. Fuck. Dude, CM Punk came back to wrestling in the time that it took for us to make another episode. Oh my god, you don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, but that's okay, because one day you will. I don't. You'll appreciate it, and we'll get some fucking CM Punk ice cream bars, and you'll know what I'm talking about. We'll, we'll, talk, we'll cover that stuff, too. <laughs> I do know that we also... I also took a trip in the time that uh, we haven't been filming these episodes. Yeah. I turned a whole year older in two months. I'm... I'm almost a whole year older. Oh, yeah. When is that? What is the day? I keep forgetting. Uh, two days from the day that we're recording this, a.k.a. Uh, the 24th. Uh, yes, the 24th. One I will be a whole... Another birthday. Yes! Mm. Yeah, you can... Maybe there will even be a fucking video. I mean, maybe even alongside this video. Depending on when it goes up, who fucking knows? So yes, much content maybe... coming to this channel. Maybe something will be announced uh, the day after we record this. Capcom, please. That'd be pretty fucking <laughs> awesome, not gonna lie. Yeah. Capcom. Hopefully it's an actual, like, official, maybe like a game or something, and not like a mobile game, but like a real, like, game game. Who knows? I'm calling Man. it now. PS5 and Xbox Series ports of the HD collection and 4SE, baby. I mean, those would be based, but I would also just like a new game. I was going to say, you wouldn't even really be able to enjoy those. Cause... Yeah, I can't, I can't take advantage <laughs> of that. Yeah, yes, yeah. I can. I've already better PS2 graphics than the good PS2 graphics I have on my even gooder game system. Yes, quite. But this is a, this is a big episode, not just because it's been two whole months and with nothing in between, obviously, but... Sorry. Or, you know, I mean... <laughs> We're, uh, we're covering our first movies. Two of them, baby. Yes. And we've also got a guest coming in for the second one. Yeah, Ooh. she did not... W oh, Cause... that's right, you get to hear a woman. I know that's going to be crazy, but oh, yeah. Yeah. And for, the, for the first time, a femoid will be on this show. Now, you might be thinking Moving to yourself, up. wait a minute, you see these guys hate women. Correct. So, anyways, we're talking about the hunt today, and uh... yes, the reason the reason that our guest will not be talking about the first movie with us is because of the fact that uh, it is mentally scarring. It is a little mentally mentally scarring, yes, but it's also a little bit cathartic in a few ways. In a couple, or in scenes. a few instances, yes, but mostly mentally scarring and extremely hard to watch, <laughs> especially the second time around because I tried to watch it last night before we recorded and i oof, i couldn't get very far <laughs> it is let's uh, just say that <laughs> this is probably the best one of the best movies i've ever seen and it's one of the hardest probably the hardest movie for me to watch i would say yeah it's it's uh it's it's very mentally taxing in a good way i mean yeah because it's brilliantly directed fucking amazing acting holy yeah. shit dude yeah, also, Thomas Vinterberg, what a fucking talented guy. Yeah. What a talented man. I guess, uh, yeah, I guess, his, yeah, you hadn't really seen anything of his prior to me being like, hey, we should watch these movies. No, and with, when with two movies, he has shown off what fucking amazing range he has as a filmmaker. Yep. Um, apparently, I want to say his first movie, or at least one of his first movies, one of them that put him on the map, is from 90... Seven maybe, and it's called. I think it's called Legacy, or uh, whatever the Danish word for that is. And oh yeah, he's Danish. These films are uh, in Dutch. Just throwing that out there for those of you who yes. do not know. 
But um, but don't worry, they got subs for all you weebs out there. And the occasional English word gets dropped. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, yes. But, even um, even the Dutch engage in anime English themselves. I'm gonna stop talking now. Yeah. Uh, take it away, Al. But uh, yeah, apparently his first film. Uh, I only heard a little bit about it. I haven't like read up on it. But it was called Legacy, and apparently it's about uh, child abuse, and which which I guess makes this a very interesting follow up to that because this is a movie about a child who was not abused, but tells a little lie that makes people think they were abused, and uh, oh boy, uh, stuff happens. And it also, yeah, a lot of stuff happens, such as the life of an innocent man getting brutally torn to shreds by the community around him. Yep, this is. Uh, if any of you are ever wondering, for some fucking reason, why when someone is having a serious accusation put against them, I'm like, okay, show me the evidence. I'm not going to believe, you know, innocent until proven guilty. Yeah, this movie's kind of one of the reasons why I'm like that. Yeah. I mean, it's a reasonable thing that someone is innocent until proven guilty because there's this thing called evidence. Yeah. Unfortunately, the uh, the court of law and the court of public do not work the same way. Public perception is very... We're going to be talking a lot about yes. society today, ladies and gentlemen. But, yes. Um... On, uh, I don't know how L stands on politics in his videos, but when I finally start getting around to my videos, generally speaking, I will keep my politics out of it. But this podcast is a casual discussion between friends, so politics are just kind of bound to come up. Uh, sorry, if you're not, not into sorry. politics... Yeah, if you're not into politics, I apologize, but it's the way well, this the isn't cookie... even this isn't even politics so much as a well, social yeah, politics. Issues, just... But yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, politics is kind of the general sweeping end all word of just yeah social issues. Um, yeah, I I talked a but little this... bit about it in my PT video series where I was like, all right, you know, there's gonna be politics that come up, and if you don't have the mental maturity to be able to talk about it without fucking mudslinging then sorry the same for you this is a very adult movie so fucking grow up yeah it's oh fuck it's it's also not an easy watch i don't know if i said that already but fuck me i know we talked about that but uh yeah it's uh who it is unpleasant at times <laughs> yes like every now, then, be... every now and then i'll watch a movie and there'll be a scene where i'm like oh you know it kind of fucks me up like this whole movie, it's just like everything. Yeah, it just that, that's worse. just the whole movie. Yeah, it's the whole movie. Yeah, which is funny too because uh, Vinterberg is very like he was very particular about it as well because like the beginning of the movie is very happy-go-lucky. Like there's a lot yeah. of scenes of characters just being happy. It starts off with dude skinny dipping. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> And there's there's a lot of scenes of Mads Mikkelsen's characters, Lucas, just hanging out with uh, his family to an extent and his friends and teaching in his kindergarten class where he currently works. Yeah. And we even get some backstory about how he was a high school teacher, but he unfortunately lost his job and moved to kindergarten. It's uh, yep. it's very nice. There's, there's a lot of stuff going on at the beginning of the uh, movie even without the inciting incident happening yet. Yeah, it takes a while to get to that, and I think it does a good job earning it. Yeah, the movie starts, yeah, it, um, it shows Lucas and his friends, that they're like skinny dipping, it's fucking silly. <laughs> it was kind of funny watching with Luz, because like, I don't really, nudity doesn't phase me really at all. It phases me a little bit. <laughs> yeah, like the movie started and you're just like, whoa, okay, I guess, I guess penises, alright, cool. <laughs> yeah, because I don't, I don't really, like, I'm not a nudity kind of guy myself, like, Especially, so I was a little surprised. You know, chunky Danish boys. <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong with chunky Danish boys. <laughs> I'm just not used to nudity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's, uh, hey, you, you ever notice yeah, how, like, like all... is there, has there ever been a movie with a good-looking penis in it? I don't. I couldn't know because I don't watch a lot of movies with penises in it, but I don't, of the ones oh, that I've seen... Oh, I call bullshit. Hold on. I want to stop you right there. I don't fucking believe you for a second, mate. I, no, I really, I like, you assume that I watch <laughs> a lot of, like, R-rated movies and stuff like that when I really don't. Nah, you watch Transformers. I did watch Transformers. There, there were no penises in Transformers. Except for in the second movie when the one had really big balls. I remember that one. They are like bells or whatever. 
Yeah, they were uh, wrecking balls. Yeah. So clever because so it was the Constructicons. Wasn't he like climbing and... a fucking pyramid or something? I barely remember that. Movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so he was climbing a pyri- pyramid, and their gimmick is they're like that team of Transformers is, are called the Constructicons. They're construction vehicles, and they combine into a giant fucking monster robot called Devastator. So it's like, oh, they're Constructicons, and they're combining. Let's give them wrecking ball balls. Oh. Oh, I'm Alex Kurtzman. I'm such a clever writer. Truly. See, we're I here to talk up. about the cinematic masterpiece that is Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Not the hunt. We we pulled a fast one on you. We're sweeping the rug out. Yeah. Yep. That being said, <laughs> I do need after I, I that being said, I do need to get you to watch the first two Transformers movies with me, because boy are those a fucking trip. The cartoon ones? Or the live huh? action ones? The live action ones. Oh yeah, it's been forever since I've seen those. I remember liking the first one. The first one is the only one that's okay. Like you, yeah. you can see the seeds of something good growing, and then the second one happens. And because of both circumstances, Michael Bay and the writers, everything was just awful. I remember it feeling like when they got that first Transformers movie, they were like, "This is really like something special. Like th- this isn't something you see every day." Because it was like what two thousand six or two thousand seven. I think. 2007 yeah. yeah well the thing about it was like the first one was uh i think steven spielberg was an executive producer on all of them oh wow <laughs> and, or at least i know i know he was an executive producer on the first one and so he kind of kept because you know he's such a big name and everything like that he kind of kept uh a lot of the staff on a bit of a tighter leash and didn't allow them to do as much crazy shit because you know Steven Spielberg knows what a good movie is like, uh, unlike Michael Bay and Alex Kurtzman, the, I believe, lead writer. Um, Yeah, and that's why, and there's also the fact that the second one was just a mess in general, not because there was a writer's strike during the second one. uh So Michael Michael Bay just filmed a bunch of scenes, and the writers had to cobble together some semblance of a story in order to fit them. Yeah, (laughs) Revenge of the Fallen is a production mess. Dude, that sounds like how Mayo makes his videos. Damn, dude, what are you doing? Yeah, but at least Transformers 2 looks good. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) Yeah, fucking crucify me. Oh, my God. I can't... I can't yeah, it's fucking stand. It took us a whole, it took us a whole twelve and a half minutes to finally dunk on Mayo. <laughs> Motherfucker, he released a fucking. I, my voice is cracking because I'm still sick. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I I'm getting cold over on being my trip. sick, so I feel you. Yeah, I caught a cold on my trip. I apologize, but yeah, fucking Mayo, like a couple days ago, released a fucking review of Sekiro, and he only played like nine <laughs> hours of it. Like, fuck off. <laughs> a Sekiro like, video. My wait. Oh, you weren't there for the second half. Oh my god. No, I had I had to dip out for the Dude, second half. The second half of that video is straight up a Ninja Gaiden review. I'm not even kidding. Oh, oh my fucking god. Like he's, of course. He starts talking about Ninja Gaiden and then he just doesn't stop. And literally the video ends with him saying, in conclusion, Ninja Gaiden, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, what? What, what the fuck? What the fuck? Man. Oh my god. This dude just keeps a... setting the bar, man. I'm telling you. He's lowering the skill yeah. floor. I'm telling you. It's gonna. You can be. Anyone. Listen, any of you right now who are listening to this and you're like, I wonder if I can be a YouTuber and a talented review. You can. Uh, seriously, anyone can do it. I. Yeah, I don't think that you can be lower than Mayo. I really don't. I'm sorry. That might sound mean, but Mayo has consistently. Every time that I have seen a video by Mayo, he has consistently set the bar lower with every single review, and he consistently not only spreads misinformation, but is an extremely incompetent and downright sometimes lazy reviewer a lot of the time. You know, I have no compunction about saying that he is one of, if not the worst YouTubers we've covered. I, I Apart from Simply Dad, but that's a given. Simply Dad's way worse, for sure. Um, it's like so the skill floor used to be like for for YouTube videos used to be like oh hey you know you have to go up a couple steps you know get a little bit of work in and now the skill floor is like you're going down steps instead yeah like it's, it's Evelyn sweetheart incredible. stop it sorry oh, my yeah, cat is being a little since, whiny it's been a while since Evelyn has shown up on this channel oh my god yeah uh, I'm keeping her inside right now so she can't get fucking preggers and she's not happy with it <laughs> why don't you get her spade uh i'm working on it i uh, oh, okay. unfortunately not not to get too too far behind the red curtain but i i i would be lying if i said i didn't expunge some money during my trip because i had uh oh, no, that's cool 
Yeah. But I am definitely going to get your fucking whore-ass spade, you fucking slut. <laughs> oh my god. I'm it's not, okay, maybe, I love her. I was about to say she doesn't appreciate that, but I don't know, maybe she does, depending on what kind of cat she is, but... I don't know, man. She's uh, she's a fucking... I don't know. Have I told some of the stories about Evelyn? You've told a couple. And, like, her... Yeah, and her hunting exploits. <laughs> I believe so. She's a... She's a rough one. I remember you shaking her violently one time. That was something. Uh, no, it was one of her kittens. <laughs> it was one of her kittens that I shook. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's it. People are gonna hear that and be like, What the fuck? This dude shakes his cats? <laughs> <laughs> no, like, there was no, one time no. where we were in a call and I made a joke about holding uh, one of Evelyn's kittens like an ice cream cone and then shaking them violently because they were being a bad boy. <laughs> oh, that was good shit. But um, I know I, I, I don't shake my cats, so you know. That's good. That's always good to not shake your cats. Man, you know, anyway, we got uh, into the... We, we started talking about the movie like quick in record time and then we and then we got off the subject in record time. Like we're just... This episode is special. <laughs> <laughs> because fuck mayo because fuck like mayo. oh my right. i can't i cannot fucking i can't get over this man like there used to be a time when like fucking angry joe was like the gold standard of how not to do reviews a lot of the times oh, oh, oh he's calling out angry joe ladies and gentlemen well i myself now don't get me wrong i enjoy some of angry joe's videos myself oh, because i think videos. that sometimes he can nail comedy whenever he does it right i still think his ride to hell video is one of his better ones but like oh that ride to hell video is fucking legendary it was it was it's but so that being said you know i from what i've gathered angry joe's not uh too well liked in the wider youtube sphere or at least in terms of reviewing yeah but um, um we're but now it's 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 mayo. Yeah, yeah, but anyway, mayo fuck, is... fuck mayo. Let's talk about actually good things. Let's talk about actually good things. So after the you know all, all the old Danish boys uh, having their fun and uh, Mads Mikkelsen's with them, of course. Uh, the, the next day, because Mads Mikkelsen, his character Lucas, he's a teacher for. Uh, we talked about it a little bit. He's a teacher for kindergarten. And uh, the first scene we see him in is he's walking to school because it's a small town and fucking Denmark has like 25 people living there. So it's not exactly, you know, busy streets or anything. He's on his way yeah. to school and he sees Clara and he's uh, who's the little girl who's one of the main characters in this movie. And Clara's, uh, you know, she doesn't like walking alone and she really likes Lucas. And he's like, oh, I'll walk you to school. And it's like, oh, it's a sweet little... Yeah. You know, nice and one little moment. detail, one little detail is part of the reason she doesn't like walking alone is because she doesn't want to uh, step on the cracks in the sidewalk. So she's always looking down, and she gets lost yeah. a lot of times. Um, I guess it's so, I don't really know what the I guess it's the superstition of like you know step on a crack, bad luck, break your mother's back or whatever. Yeah, and it's like just, she's a know, kid and everything. It's a, yeah, she's so a kid, had, so I, I can buy into you know little things yeah. like that. So, so her and Lucas have this cute little moment where Lucas agrees to look up while she looks down at the cracks, yeah. and they walk to kindergarten together. It's really sweet, really wholesome. This movie starts out very wholesome. It really does. <laughs> like it, it, it's it's very good at fooling you. Oh yeah. <laughs> like oh my god, it's so fucking good. Like you would like the first yeah. at least like thirty six minutes of this movie. I think is just lovely look yeah you know there's a little bit of struggle we'll get to that but you know for the most part it's a nice little uh quiet life in whatever town denmark but um yes. or no he's not walking her to school i'm sorry he was walking her home and um they he takes her home to his buddy theo who is played i gotta look up the cast because i i get them mixed up all the fucking time let me go to my Actually, I'll just Google the... Uh... Well, no, they were, they were walking to school, because the, the scene after the uh, skinny dipping scene was them going to school. Wasn't them going to school? Cause yeah, because the next scene I specifically... happens, or at least that I have listed, is uh, the, the podcast. Yeah, because I, sa yeah, cause I, specifically, I specifically, like, remember vividly... Uh, oh, a yeah. shot afterwards of Matt Spickleson walking besides, like, a large shrub... Yeah, he uh, he goes into the school and like all the kids like tackle him because they all love him, 
And he's like, oh, yeah. I'm a big monster. And he's like, I mean, who wouldn't? Monster. He's Mads fucking Mickelson. I mean, yeah, true. But, um, let me see. Uh, Theo is played by Thomas Bo Larson, who is fucking awesome in both of these movies. He's so good. He really is. All, all of the cast members pull their weight equally in these films. Oh, yeah. Like, there's nobody who's just chewing the scenery. They're all fucking delightful. Yeah, like, Mads Mikkelsen, I would say, is the best, but he's not, like, distracting, and it's not taking away from any other performance. Uh, it's really yeah. good. Like, he's clearly the center of attention, but he, like, he knows when to give other characters and actors their moment. Right. Yeah, and, uh, yep. so yeah, he walks her to school and all that, and then he takes her home, and then that's when we get the wonderful little scene of, uh, him and his buddy Theo, who, man, he has, like, a fucking lion's mane. He's got, like, this huge beard and long hair. Like, not long, he, yeah. long, but, you know, it's down to, like, his ears, yeah. at least. Yeah, he looks fucking good. <laughs> he does. He's a, he's a good-looking dude. And, uh, we get this fucking awesome scene. We get a couple of little things here. First of all, Every time uh, Lucas mentions his ex-wife, Kirsten, the dog Fanny starts barking very loudly. The dog, yes. They have trained the dog to not like this person's name, which is fucking based. <laughs> it's fucking awesome. <laughs> like, it's, 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 it's one of those things. It, it's one of those things that is, it's not necessarily needed, but it, like, it makes the character of Lucas that much more distinct. Because that's like, yeah. that's Lucas's thing. He trained his dog to not like his ex-wife's name. It, it just gives him that much more of a personality and a presence. And those are the little character things that I just love in yeah. anything. And uh, Theo's wife, I can't remember her name, actually. Agnes. What was that? Oh, yeah, Agnes. Agnes, uh, yeah. yeah. A-G-N-E-S. Yeah, she's, uh, she's making a pie, and, you know, she goes she goes into the other room, I think, like, to talk to her son or something like that. And... Yeah, because she and uh, she, Torsten, uh, which is the older son, and Carla are, I think, no, she and Torsten, their older son, are going to get, like, football gear and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> she's leaving, and she's like, you know, don't let the pie finish. Don't uh, don't just start eating it right away. And like, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, cool, cool. And then, and then they start gone, eating it right away. <laughs> as soon as she's gone, they fucking they're like, let's get the pie, bro. He fucking opens up the he opens up the oven, which is you know, it's a fucking pie. It's like near four hundred degrees probably, and they're they're just grabbing the they're fucking like, pan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's such a. It's like, you know, they're older dudes, but that's such, like, a high school boy thing to do. Yeah. It's fucking awesome. It's, you know... Yeah. You get the feeling from both of these movies that, like, Thomas Bo Larson, Mads Mikkelsen, and all of them are, like, actually really good friends in real life, and they just have a blast working yeah. together. Yeah. It definitely feels like it. And then, uh, after this, uh, while they're, or, like, right before they're about to, like, dig into the pie, uh, we get this little moment where Theo is asking essentially Lucas about how things are going with his uh, son, Marcus, because he is, Lucas is obviously divorced. And uh, Lucas, of course, tries to lie and pass everything off as fine. But uh, Theo remarks that Lucas has this one little tell that he knows about when he's lying. And it's this little eye twitch he does, which is uh, definitely will be relevant later. Yeah. Let's just say. Yep, it's a pretty big deal. Yep, and Mads Mikkelsen is so good at, uh, he does subtle acting in a way that's easy to pick up on, but you don't, it's not like in your face. Yeah. Like, he has this kind of, uh, he has kind of like a thousand yard stare, where it's like you can tell his character's, I don't want to say like dissociating, but you know, he's kind of, zo not zoning out, I guess just phasing out things around him, and he's getting lost in thought and things like that. It's really good stuff. Yeah. He's very good at looking pensive. Yeah. You can always tell that there's something, like, like there's barely a surface that's covering what he's thinking or what he's feeling. Yeah. And, of course, the fact that Theo, like, knows this specific, very, very minute tell about Lucas it goes to show just how much they're friends. Yeah, because I think they said... I know in another round... Uh, Thomas Bo Larson's character, who's named Tommy, he specifically says, like, I knew him when he was in high school or whatever. 
And I think yeah. in this movie, it's implied that they at least knew each other since they were kids or teenagers or something like that. I don't remember if there's yeah. any lines, but yeah. Yeah, which would, of course, make sense since it's such a small town, too. Right, yeah. Remember, it's Denmark. Like, everyone knows each other. Yeah, pretty much. And there's, like, Denmark films have the same, like, 12 actors in them, and I'm not fucking exaggerating, I don't think. Yeah, no, it's... it's uh, there's a lot of people... Fucking, uh... In another round, in one of the later scenes, like, I just... I remember when I was watching it with you, I just picked up on one of the guys from this movie who was in, like, one scene. It was the uh, the meat shop guy. He was one of the pallbearers uh, yeah. for the funeral. Yeah. I was like, whoa, <laughs> holy shit. Like, hey. Yeah, it's like, what the fuck? Like, that guy was an asshole. Fuck him. <laughs> oh, yeah, and another thing about Mads Mikkelsen, like, this, this isn't necessarily relevant to any scene right now. It will be later, though. Like, he has this very distinct way of, like, hugging people. He does. Yeah, he does like, it in uh, Hannibal uh, also. Yeah, because he, he does like, it in another round, too, as well. He, like, puts one of his hands, like, on the back of their neck, and he's, like, kind of... I don't, well, I mean, basically petting, right? He's, like, patting them on the head. Yeah, or, like, cradling their neck and stuff like yeah. that. I want to be hugged by Mads Mikkelsen. I do, too. He seems like such a delightful person. I'd be like, thanks, Dad. Which is funny, because, <laughs> like, despite how delightful he seems, like, he, like, it, it's nothing against him, but, like, I can't be the only one who, when I see, like, pictures of Mads Mikkelsen and, like, interviews and stuff, like, he just has, like, the most, like, I'm done with everything face ever. Like, his neutral <laughs> face is just, I... I don't get paid enough to deal with you, and it's so fucking hilarious. <laughs> kind, of a, kind of, and not in a like a mean way, but it's like kind of like that resting bitch face people talk about, where it's like, yeah, he's just like, like he looks like if you were to just approach him, it's like, oh no, he's gonna be pissed off at me. But like when you actually approach him, he's like, oh hello, yes, nice to meet you. It's like, oh okay, yes. <laughs> and he also wished Kojima a happy birthday. He did in a yeah. <laughs> fucking such a, <laughs> such a fucking sweet lad. Twitter's cropping is interesting i'll say twitter is interesting twitter is much, interesting but yeah I, I can't be on twitter for more than like 10 minutes without being severely pissed off at humanity i yeah as soon as i see my feet i'm just like all right that's enough humans today <laughs> yeah if, if 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 you uh gamers out there really want to hate your own kind then i would suggest a uh a twitter account known as bad video game takes they uh oof there's a lot of bullshit on there boy it's good stuff um but enough but enough about other people let's focus on us <laughs> or I, I guess thomas Vinterberg. so the next scene is pretty much an immediate follow-up to how that scene had concluded with them talking about his ex-wife and his uh the custody of his son and he's trying he calls his wife and he's trying to be like hey so you know you don't answer any of my calls and you don't call me uh, what do you expect me to do? You barely let me see. You see, you let me see my kid like two times every other week or something like two days every other week, and she's yeah. just like, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to you. And you're like, fucking, like I can tell this man doesn't come off as the do as like the type who would like beat your ass over something. Like fucking give him a break. Yeah, which is like, gonna, they do a good... which is something I'm gonna be saying a lot throughout this movie. So yeah, they they do a good job of making Lucas just seem like kind of the average guy who doesn't really like he doesn't really engage in a lot of like violent or mean-spirited actions a lot he just he's kind of just a chill guy he he does yeah he seems like he doesn't really do anything extreme in any circumstance like he's just oh he's very level-headed He's very patient with people. Yeah. God, he's really fucking patient with people. He's <laughs> so fucking patient, which I suppose is to be expected, considering the fact that he's also a beloved kindergarten teacher. Yeah, and yeah. If there's one area you need patience with, it's working with fucking snot-nosed little brats. True. Oh my god! And it's not in like a Gary Stu way either. Like he's not a flaw. There are a couple of scenes where it's like, hi, dude. Yeah. But um, yeah. So immediately, I'm like. <laughs> Both of these movies, I'm like, Mads Mikkelsen deserves a better wife. What the fuck are you all doing to him? Yeah. <laughs> Although by the end of another round, I you know come around to it. But uh, yeah, uh, an- another round isn't as depressing. No, it's really not. Um, in fact, there are two polar opposite movies in a lot of ways. Oh yeah, for sure. And we'll get into that more later with another round. Yeah. But um. After that scene, it's the next day, and Lucas goes to... He's just walking to school, and he sees Clara sitting outside of her house. And you can hear 
uh, Theo and his wife. It's also implied that Theo's kind of a drunk, at least a lot of the time. And you can hear like him and his wife screaming at each other. And Clara's just sitting outside. She's, you know, and Lucas is like, oh, you know, there's, you know, stuff going on. She's like, yeah. And he's like, do you want me to uh, walk you to school so you can look out for the cracks? And he's like, oh, he's like, man, I want to hug you. You're so nice. And, then he, and of course, he, you know, calls Luke at, or calls Theo and is like, hey, so I'm going to walk your daughter. And then he's like, all right, cool. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's kind of, I, I think this is the point where. And, you know, from the perspective of a kid, reasonably, Clara's like, oh, you know, I got a little crush on Lucas because, you know, yeah. he's, he's the nice kindergarten teacher that's always there for her and, you know, helping her look out for the sidewalk cracks and stuff. And, you know, kids get crushes, and that's perfectly fine. Oh, yeah. Nothing wrong with that, mostly. I know. I know I had a crush on one of my elementary school teachers back when I was a kid. She was a very nice lady. I miss her. Oh, dude, I had two teachers in high school. Mm. But anyways, it's not the time to talk about that. Uh, <laughs> anyways. Yeah. That, what, a, what a way to go from wholesome to horny in like 10 seconds. Uh, no, they were, just, they were awesome teachers. And they were, and they were really pretty too. But, uh, so, you know, uh, Carla. Anyway, Clara, depression. Oh, yeah, yeah. Not yet. Not yet. We'll, we we got to work towards that. But Clara, she's like, you know, you can tell she's like, oh, and we'll crush on Lucas. And it shows them at school, and Lucas is playing with the kids or whatever. And Clara draws like she gets this, she makes a little like cut out heart, and she wraps it and draws or uh, writes on the paper uh, like I don't remember what she, exactly she wrote something about like giving her heart to Lucas or something like that. Uh, no, she just uh, she essentially just like wrote Clara on like an envelope for him, and then. Uh, she essentially like hides the fact that it was from her right 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 um she leaves it i want to say at his desk it's been a minute since i've watched this movie jacket pocket jacket pocket that's right thank you um, no problem <laughs> yeah she leaves him she leaves him the little heart and lucas uh let me think because there are two things that happen i don't remember the order in which so they happen. So essentially, Lucas is uh, playing with the kids or playing with the boys and roughhousing with them, and uh, they're all like tackling him and stuff. Beating the fuck out of them, yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And he he pretends to die for a few seconds, and then like he comes, you know, quote unquote, comes back to life and starts roughhousing with the kids again. And then Clara jumps on top of him and kisses him, smack on the lips. Smack on the lips. And then after that, Mads Bickelson tells all the boys, okay, it's time to clean up. And then he takes Clara off to like a little corner or something and basically tells her, hey, uh, first of all, you shouldn't be doing that kind of stuff unless it's like with your mom and dad. And then he tells her about how uh, the heart with the little envelope was left in his jacket pocket. Yep. And he tells her in a very kind way, but, you know, kids don't... Un- they unfortunately just can't really understand things as an adult does. You know, he tells her, like, you know, that's not okay. You and I can't be uh, a thing. And Clara, she's, yeah. you know, she's a kid, so oh, she's there, like, oh. Uh, sorry, there is one scene that we missed that is seemingly small before this, that but is, like, actually very important as well. Uh, there's a scene before this in uh, Clara, or, yeah, Clara's house, where Torsten, oh, her older yeah. brother... Oh, yeah, I forgot yeah, about her, that. Yeah, um, her older brother and a friend of his are essentially, like, they're looking at porn. And they show Clara, and, like, the specific wording, I believe, from Torsten is that it, like, it's, like, sticks straight up in the air like a rod yeah and so it's a it's a seemingly small scene but it it sort of informs clara for something that she's going to do later on unfortunately i had to mute myself because some fucking asshole drove by and was like like the fucking bass turned the hell up uh hate people like that hey if you're listening to this podcast and you're one of those people who turns your music up really fucking loud and it's not bury the light uh fuck you (laughs) yeah if you're with friends and you're like rocking out and shit it's one thing but if you're alone like you're on the highway 
Yeah, like roll your fucking windows up, dude. Like just be courteous to other drivers. If you're on the highway, talk then about whatever. Fucking blast your music if you want to. But if you're just driving by, in, like, in a neighborhood, in a neighborhood, it's like yeah, fuck off. That's stupid. Yeah. Fucking Christ, drivers are getting so obnoxious nowadays. Oh, you're telling me, buddy. You're telling me. Like I swear to God, like I like. I, Never in my life have I been more scared for the well-being of my vehicle as, like, a delivery driver. Because, like, oh my god, people are so fucking aggressive nowadays. Yeah, a little bit. Like, like where I am, like, there's a lot, like, there's an area of the, my town that's, like, 55, or, like, yeah, 55 miles per hour. And it's, like, a loop that goes around my city. And, like, I'll be going 55 miles per hour, and I'll have somebody riding my fucking ass while I'm in the right lane. And it's like, dude, go around. I'm not speeding. I don't wanna. Remember that Remember that SpongeBob frame with, like, Patrick riding the stranger's back while he's, like, pushing a shopping cart or whatever? Yeah. I saw a meme of that, and it was, like, you know, the person pushing the shopping cart, it was, like, this is me driving at, like, five miles over the speed limit. And the Patrick was, like, the Ford truck driver <laughs> right on their ass. Yeah, a Dodge Ram truck driver. Yeah, yeah. And he's got, like, the huge fucking mirrors on the sides <laughs> of his head. <laughs> oh, man. Fuck. Look, I'm sorry, truck drivers. You're the ones making the bad name for yourself. I'm just observing. <laughs> yeah, kind of. But, uh... So, anyway, back to back to sad. Back times. to children looking at porn. Anyway, so. <laughs> oh God! Oh, God. Somebody know. is going to take that out of context. I swear to God. Oh yeah, get ready for the sound bite of that, and it's like, yeah, so. Any, it, well, I mean, I've got the fucking, I've got the hunt right here on screen. So it's like, if you don't get it, then you're just a douchebag. But whatever. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyways, yeah. So, uh, you know, back to Lucas at the daycare. He's telling Claire like, hey, you know, we, we can't be a thing. I'm a grown up, and you're a kid. And she's like, ah, I hate you, Lucas. And he's like, Clara, come on. And she's like, I hate you. You don't love me, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it's a kid. It's, you know, pretty natural reaction. Uh, yeah, and of course, Lu Lucas tries to be very understanding. Is like, you should give this to one of the boys. And she just won't accept it. So she essentially, like, takes it back. But you can tell she's very, like, hurt by it. Yep, she is not happy. And uh, <laughs> that leads to the next scene, which is the start of everything. Uh, and that yep. is, um, it's nighttime, the kindergarten, or evening time, or whatever, and yeah. it's fall, so it's getting, you know, dark out early at that point. Yeah. And, uh, how do you pronounce your name? Is it Greta? It's spelled like G-R-E-T-H-E. It's, it's, I think it's Greta. It's either Greta or Greth. Or Greta. I'm gonna say Greta. Okay. So. I will also say Greta for the sake of consistency. Right. Just for, you know, people listening are like, oh my god, they're on for pronounced that way. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not... I am also sorry. I'm not a Danish boy. I am um, also sorry for not pronouncing Lucas as Lucas as they do in the film. Lucas. Lucas. Uh, but I'm American, and uh, we're the center <laughs> of the world, so fuck off. We're Americanese, alright? Y'all gonna listen to what we say now. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, Greta is, uh, you know, she's closing up the place, uh, it's lights out and all that, and she yeah. sees Clara still waiting, uh, she's in her, she's in Greta's office, and she's like, hey, what are you still doing here, you know, you should have walked home by now, and Greta, or er, Greta, fuck, Carla, Carla, who the fuck's Carla, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> I'm stupid right now, leave me alone. Uh, Clara <laughs> is she's upset and she's moping and Greta's like oh what's wrong and Clara's like uh, you know I hate Lucas and you know Greta's the principal she's looking over the kids so she hears that and she's like oh well, you know come on that's not you know you can't say you hate him he's the nicest teacher yeah. ever and then Clara decides she's gonna tell a lie and she says that she saw uh, Lucas's junk and yes. understandably, uh, Greta, she's kind of like, um... A little shaken by it. That's, uh, it's not something you hear every day from a, you know, five-year-old, four-year-old, six-year-old, yeah. how she is. And so she's like, uh, at first she's kind of like... Old. Yeah, at first she's like, <laughs> okay, she's like, okay, you know, let's, let's take this a little slowly. She asks, uh, Clara a couple of questions and... I don't remember the specifics. I think I've just blocked it out because it is disturbing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Essentially, uh, Clara says that uh, 
I believe the exact lines are that she hates Lucas because he's a man and he has a penis and Greta's like, well, don't they all? And uh, Claire's like, yes, but his stands straight in the air like a rod. Yeah. And uh, essentially, uh, uh, essentially, Greta a- asks if anything happened between her and Lucas, and I think... I can't. I believe she, she denies it at first, but obviously Greta, despite that, is very shaken because that's not something you generally hear from kids, right? Um, and well, well, we'll we'll talk more about Greta later. Or soon. Yeah. But um. Oh, and uh, Lucas and Nadja are still actually there. They're cleaning dishes and uh, they're just. Like they're flirting with one another, and they have a really so. Nadja is another one of the daycare workers, but she's actually from America. I don't remember if she said specifically where, but she's from America, and she speaks English natively. So uh, her Dutch is or Dane it her <laughs> whatever. Dutch. Look, stop having three fucking identifiers <laughs> for your shit, Denmark. All right, I'm gonna. We get got you. we got we got the Danish in Denmark who speaks who speak Dutch. Yeah, it fucks it fucks me up. <laughs> It's like when people are like, oh, they're from Amsterdam, Holland. I'm like, wait, wait, wait hold on, hold on. <laughs> what the fuck? Like, oh, okay. But <laughs> don't they speak like German as well? Yeah, like Swiss German or whatever the fuck. Oh my god, and Switzerland sp- Look, what the fuck? Okay. <laughs> Europeans, stop it. <laughs> god, could you imagine if like Slovakian people were real? That'd be fucking weird. Oh god. <laughs> uh, could you imagine if Italians were real? That'd be scary. I've seen the Godfather. That would be scary. They'll cut off my horse's I have head. seen Assassin's Creed, man. Those Italians, <laughs> they're, they're, fuck, they're fucking built different. Like, literally. They're they pretty, can survive shit that shouldn't be possible. That sounds pretty hot. Not gonna lie. I don't mind. I don't know if I mind Italians thinking about that. But, uh... Uh, yeah, now that I think about it, Ezio is... Oh, God, he's fucking smoking, dude. He's kind of a, he's kind of a stud. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> But, um... Anyway, that's this not what we're talking about. Sorry. <laughs> well, as you, you know what you're getting distracted. into with this podcast at episode 10. All right, I don't want to hear shit. Yeah, as you can see, we get very easily distracted by uh, attractive men. Uh, and turtles. And what the fuck? Just, just turtles. I like turtles, you know? Oh, yeah, turtles are pretty nice. Shuckle's a turtle. Shuckle is a turtle. I'm sorry, Shuck L? Shuck- God, he's your Pokemon. I got a bunch of shuckles, all with different nicknames. Nice. Yeah. I like Eevee. <laughs> Eevee's pretty cool. Eevee's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, Lucas anyway, and Nadja... sad time hours. <laughs> not yet, not yet. We gotta, we gotta get there. But uh, Lucas and Nadja, they are just, you know, they're flirting and uh, all that stuff. And Greta comes by and she's like, hey, you know, uh, I'm going home for the evening. And Lucas and Nadja, they're, I mean, they're just doing their fucking job so they're like oh yeah okay have a good night and Greta's just standing there like hmm she doesn't know what yeah, to think see this... yeah you can see this look where she's like she, she doesn't know whether or not she wants to believe uh Carla or Claire sorry Clara <laughs> fuck now you've got now you've got me doing it you asshole fucking... uh, she doesn't know if she wants to believe Clara or if she wants to believe that you know Lucas is just too good hearted to do such a thing which, of course, in the end, he is, but, you know, she doesn't quite know that. Yep. Um, we then cut to a scene where Lucas is hunting, and it's just, uh, it's a very, I think, I don't know if I'd call it a problem with the movie, but it's kind of on the nose with the uh, with the title yeah, the hunting and the references to him hunting the deer, and it's like, I get it. It's a you know, it's because it's a witch hunt on Lucas. Um, I, well, I mean, I suppose, but I, given how Denmark is, I could believe that he would be the type of person who would hunt as well. Especially since at the end of the movie, we find out that it's. Oh yeah, no, I'm not saying a, like I don't. I'm not saying like I doubt that he hunts or whatever. It's just like that the, particular scene right before the witch hunt starts is a little bit on the nose. Yeah, um, and it does set up for a plot point later on also which is fine it's just i don't know like yeah again it's just on the nose i don't i wouldn't call it a criticism it's just i I, I think yeah i think it 
Yeah, I think it could have been a little bit shorter, personally. Rewatching it last night, it went yeah. on for a decent while. It's um, like 90 seconds, isn't it? About, yeah. Um, I think it could have been stretched or thinned down like a minute. Because all that essentially happens in that scene is Mads Mikkelsen standing around with his fucking pensive, sexy ass, and uh, he shoots a deer. And then uh, after that, we cut to a scene with uh, Marcus. And Marcus is... Uh, his son or yeah uh lucas's son by the way uh we cut to uh marcus's godfather's property and he's with all of his uh friends and stuff after yeah they're all partying having a good yeah. time they're, they sing a song I'm... and i don't remember i don't remember how it's said in their language but like the the lyrics you know because it's like a birthday song kind of thing where it's like you know would lucas have a would lucas have a would lucas have a beer that kind of thing just a little shanty i like stuff yeah. like that cool to me it's very nice it's very nice and they sing it well too they did for a bunch of old drunk white dudes they, they sing their stuff pretty well <laughs> yeah <laughs> um and that's when lucas gets a call from Nadja, and she is like hey why didn't you... their banter is so fucking cute she's like hey yeah like she's like hey why didn't you call me and he's like oh uh well i don't, I don't have I your number to... yeah i was like, didn't you have your number she's like well look at your phone looks at his phone she's like that's my number and she's like so call, call me, me. <laughs> yeah it's like like it's like and then he and then she hangs up and he calls her yeah it's so good it's like a good blend like from the like from lucas's perspective it's like it's cute and it's also it's kind of sexy you know yeah it's very sassy banter yeah like she's then, it's look ladies to all the because i'm sure ladies <laughs> listen to this fucking podcast when you hit on a guy it's really, bound to happen but, i mean at some point i would think we have a woman who's going to be on the fucking show so but um, yeah, like yeah, ladies, men love it when you hit on them. I don't know if I've, I don't know if that's ever been said, but yeah, probably partially because men don't get uh, a lot of positive reinforcement sometimes. Yeah, we don't get compliments that often. It's true. We have to compliment our fellow kings. By the way, Luce, you look handsome today. I don't, I literally don't even know what you look like, but you look handsome today. Thank you, L. No problem. I, I just want to say your voice, it's primo as always. Oh, I'm always self-conscious about my voice. That's really good. You shouldn't be. Like you, you've got a pretty good voice. I think if you, uh, I think if you worked on it and you tried to have more range, you'd be, you'd be fucking set. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're very welcome, boy. Um, but let's see. The party. I get a call from Nigel. And then oh, yeah. uh, after that, Lucas brings Theo back to his house, <laughs> yeah, and there's this. Theo's there's fucking this cute... wasted. Yeah, there's this cute little scene oh, with yeah. Theo and Agnes, because like <laughs> it's 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 very clear it's very clear that there's some tension in the relationship between Agnes and Theo, and there's this cute little fucking moment that just melts my heart, where fucking Theo is just like confessing his love and shit he's to one, Agnes, and they're all hugging. He's one of those drunks. He's like, Lucas, I love you. Agnes, I love you all so much. And it's like, yeah, mm. he fucking kisses Lucas on the lips before he leaves. <laughs> it's fucking awesome. And fucking Lucas, Lucas just doesn't know what to do. <laughs> Mads Mikkelsen's really good at, like, he's he's got that kind of like, okay, yeah, I get it. Later, buddy. <laughs> yeah, he's got one of those, like, okay, can you please, like, not faces. It's like, like you can he's, tell he's like okay, you can tell he's thinking please stop but he just he would never say it because he's too nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. It's so wholesome. Isn't it wonderful? Oh and then the next scene my boy Lucas he gets he gets to crushing some puh. He do. Uh, Nadja comes to his house and they like almost immediately just just, just fucking mm, bang and just, they yeah, start making out outside, and then they go in, and uh, they go up to his room, and the dog, Fanny, Fanny's the best dog, uh, Fanny's in there, and <laughs> Lucas is like, I guess I gotta let her out, so he, ta he takes Fanny out of his room, closes the door, and yeah, we get like a good minute at least of them just fucking going at it. Which is still weird to me, because I'm still like not, I'm not used to seeing sex scenes in like movies and stuff. For those of you who are watching, and are listening... Uh, Mads Mikkelsen movies tend to have some uh, some of Mads Mikkelsen fucking like a lot of it. Oh jeez, oh, and dude, I myself, this... I, I dude, I gotta tell you about this. So uh, there's a movie on Netflix called Polar, where Mads Mikkelsen is essentially he's basically John Wick but way more badass because he's Mads Mikkelsen. 
And <laughs> if mean, you ask Mac- Mads Mickelson, it's automatically more badass. I'll make the rules. Sex Mad- Mads Mickelson. <laughs> I just observe. Um, it's one of the laws of the universe, you know. But there's this scene. There's a lot of sex in that movie, first of all. A lot of nudity. But there's this one scene. So, like, there's this... I don't remember the exact specifics, so don't fucking crucify me for not knowing it. But basically, Mads Mikkelsen has taken this lady to, uh, like, a cabin. And she's, like, this spy who... He knows that she's a spy, but she doesn't know that he knows. And she's, like, got assassins trying to kill him. And, dude, they are just fucking going at it like monkeys they are t- oh my god he is clapping those cheeks like cor- like holy shit that is the most sexy sex scene i've ever fucking oh my god seen like dude he's fucking railing her down and uh jeez so- welcome to seas where we talk about the artful sex scenes of various movies hey hey sex scenes can be uh, good when they're done well and um so yeah he's just fucking like, he is piping her down and all of a sudden gunfire comes through and he's because he's like this badass john wick style mercenary or whatever he's fucking ready he just like he fucking throws her off the table and gets into cover like a fucking badass oh my god <laughs> he kills her and then he kills then he waits for the other so, like he's fucking <laughs> it's great that movie's cool you just watch polar if you just want to see Mads uh-huh. mickelson being cool as fuck that's any Mads Mikkelsen movie. I mean, true. I need. I still need to rewatch Casino Royale, where he's the villain in that movie. James Bond villain, Mads Mikkelsen. Fuck yeah. Oh shit. And then he was also Doctor Strange villain in yeah. in Marvel. I don't remember the name of that villain at all. <sighs> Neither do I. I barely even remember the fact that he was in that movie. To be honest with you, <laughs> the most significant thing about that villain is that he's played by Mads Mikkelsen. Uh yeah. Honestly, I can't remember the fucking name. I can't remember everything that he does. Oh, I remember yeah. a few like gags that were with like uh, the levitating cloak, but that was about it. I remember the Dormammu scene. It was, okay. it was a, yeah, it was okay. It, it, at the very least, it was different from the normal Marvel formula. Somewhat. But uh, let's see. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, they they fuck like monkeys. No, polar is where he fucks like a monkey. But, uh, <laughs> you're, never mind. I'm gonna stop there. So <laughs> okay. uh, probably for the best. The next scene is Lucas arriving at the school, and Greta's like, "Hey, you know, can you come talk to me in my office?" He's like, oh yeah, no problem. And Greta comes, and she, you know, she sits down, and she's like, "Hey, there's been a serious accusation made against you." And he's like, okay. And he's like, there's an accusation that you and one of the students, uh, or that you were uh, indecent to one of the students. And he's just like, you can see... He doesn't really know what to say. You can see that he knows what this is going to lead to. He's like, he just says, oh shit, I think, is what he says. Yeah, and he's like, well, that's not very good. And she's like, no, it's it's not. Like, like, Matt Mickelson does a very good job of just having this face where like lucas just clearly doesn't know what to say like he knows yeah. he's innocent but he doesn't know how to defend himself it's because you know most people aren't faced with such an accusation and it's the unfortunate struggle against public perception where it's like if you don't defend yourself you're guilty if you defend yourself especially if you defend yourself well then you're more guilty and it's like well you can't fuck yeah because unfortunately, yeah, once the allegation is made... Damned if you do, damned if you don't. Yeah, once the allegation is made, uh, you know, occasionally you get an outlier. Like, I don't know if you remember the pro Jared stuff. I do. Yeah, like, that was an interesting case. Uh, Johnny it Depp was. also, actually, it wasn't the same kind of insinuation, but, like, Johnny Depp with Amber Heard also. Uh, yeah, I actually uh, didn't hear about that situation too much, so I don't quite know what's uh, going on with that one. Basically... I don't remember the specifics, so audience, don't crucify me if I get something wrong. But basically, Amber Heard was treating Donnie, Johnny Depp like shit, and she accused him of treating her like shit. But then people found out that it was actually the opposite with Amber Heard treating him like shit. And uh, now not a lot of people like Amber Heard, understandably. Yeah. Seems a lot of people get treated like shit these days, especially voice actors. Hashtag unionize voice actors, for fuck's sake. Yeah. That would be great. I'm still pissed about 
the Peter Cullen situation. Uh, Transformer guy? Is that Peter Cullen? Yeah, yes, Op- literal Optimus Prime. Yeah, and the Predator. He did the... Thing. Yep. I told you about that, right? I knew about him being Predator and Optimus already. Like, way before we met. Oh, I met the uh, uh, situation with him recently. Uh, you may have told me a while back, but I really don't remember. Oh. Uh, I'll save it for later since we're recording. That's fine, that's fine. But, um, Lucas is like, well, fuck, okay. So he goes to, you know, she's like, I think you should take a, a couple of days off while we get things figured out. And he's like, okay. So he goes home. And while he's walking out, he sees... Oh, fucking God. He sees this... Uh, oh, God. Yeah, he sees this dude walking into the building. And you can tell something's up. When I first watched it, I thought that he was just going to be like... Like he was someone uh, looking to uh, apply to be a new, another teacher. Like he was already... They were already looking for replacements or something like that. But no, it's actually worse. <laughs> so, we get this scene where Greta gets Clara to come in and... There's this, I don't know if he's an investigator or what his title is. I'm going to guess that he was some, like, I don't remember exactly, so I'm going to guess that he was some kind of, like, counselor or yeah. something like that who was coming in to, like, talk with uh, Cla- Clara. Fuck you! Uh, <laughs> to, to get a handle on the situation. Because um, that was actually, that was actually, like, the scene where I stopped last night because I was too tired. Yeah, that scene's... So it's, uh... So... Yeah, so... Uh, do you want it or do you want me to take it? Oh, uh, I'll start off. So, they sit down, and Greta's trying to start things off with Clara. She's trying to be like, hey, so can you tell the man about uh, what you told me? And Clara can very clearly see she's like, oh, shit. I should not have yeah, said like that. She's... Yeah, she's fucked up and she knows it. Yeah, and you know, as a kid, being caught lying is like, it's like, it's like being murdered by the devil. Like it's the worst possible thing that can happen to you. It's like Louis C.K. did a really great stand-up bit where he's like, if <laughs> kids being asked if they were lying, like to them, they're hearing like, "Did you take the cookies?" <laughs> you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's like a fucking, it's like a fucking demon is coming to rip their fucking skin off. Yeah, like it is it, just the it's, scariest it's like... thing ever. And as someone who was, like, a kid just a few years ago, like, just yeah, it is. Ago, yeah. Uh, well, a few years ago, by like, that I mean, like, four or five. Yeah, five or six. Um, Yeah. Yeah, Lucas uh, is getting 12. Called out. <laughs> or, uh, Lucas is 12. Whoever the fucking... These names, man. Fuck me. <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm 21 point, like, 9,000. But, yeah, um, getting called out for lying as a kid is... Or having to admit that you're lying is like the scariest fucking thing ever for kids, and I don't know why necessarily. I, I don't know what it is about like being a kid where like lying and being called out for it is just so fucking like nerve wracking. And I, I yeah. maybe it has something to do with the psychology that like like as a kid you just want to be right, and so if you're admit that you're lying, then you're not. So I don't know. I think it's kind of, uh, and forgive me if this sounds cliche, but kind of a fear of the unknown. Like, they just don't know how other people will react. And they they just want to, they just want to go about as if everything's fine. Yeah, it's kind of like how, uh, it's kind of like how, it, like, sometimes your parents might have been like, if you tell the truth, you're still going to be in trouble, but it's not going to be as bad as when you lied. But it's also like, that, like, the kid's not going to care. They just don't want to be in trouble in general. Right. And uh, so Greta's asking her questions, and Clara's like, she's just shaking her head. She's like, no, 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 like just you know, leave me alone. I want to go outside and play. And that's when the man starts asking her questions, and it starts off just like, you know, he's just repeating what Greta had heard. He was like, hey, you know, did Lucas expose himself to you? And she's, you know, she doesn't know what to do. She's a fucking kid, so and she's being like, these adults are hammering her with questions, and you know from the adult's perspective it's like of course they're gonna fucking hammer her with questions because this is yeah like one of the worst things that can happen to a human being basically yeah an extremely indecent action that you know in fairness when happens does need to be punished harshly oh yeah like it's something that they absolutely need to take seriously but unfortunately for you know from the kid's perspective it's not quite that 
So he yeah. starts off asking her, like, hey, you know, did uh, Lucas expose himself? Blah, 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 blah. And he... Uh, it's just <sighs> kind of that st- type of questions, but then it just gets more and more uncomfortable. He's like... Yeah, he, he starts asking her a lot more, like... Specific questions. Vivid questions. Like, he specifically yeah. asks her at one point if white stuff yeah some sticky white stuff came out or if she like touched it and it just progressively gets more and more uncomfortable and you could tell like you could tell that Vinterberg is milking every ounce of uncomfortability possible from this scene yeah and it's effective because my god is it hard to fucking watch literally I, every I, it's like every time either of them says or does anything it just gets worse and worse like he yeah, asks like, her a question and it's like oh fuck he's asking her this question she answers oh my god she answered with this like it, it's nothing <laughs> it gets remotely yeah. better yeah and and it just it like and it it makes it even worse because of the fact that like things just like based upon Carla's an- or fuck based <laughs> upon Clara's answers and the questions of Mr. Possible Counselor Man like things just progressively seem to be getting worse and worse for Lucas based upon Clara's answers. Cause you know, she keeps giving extremely vague answers and she's obviously very scared. And you know, it, chances are that the adults think that she's scared cause she thinks that Lucas is going to like do something to her. Yeah. And which of course Clara knows he wouldn't, but the teachers don't. Yeah, and there's, you know, a logical through line in figuring this stuff out that has other implications that we'll get to in a moment. But, um, yeah, it ends, it pretty much ends there after her having answered a couple of questions. And, you know, it's like no one's wrong in that scenario. Like, even the, the counselor guy, he's like, well, Clara, you know, you're really brave for talking about this and blah, blah. And, yeah, you know, I think you he can... stepped over... I think he may have stepped over a slight line, but then again, oh, I don't... Oh, no, like, he absolutely did, but at the same time, he's trying to... Yeah, it, it came from a good place, right. even if it was, like, extremely, like, uncomfortable and maybe a little too far. There's no good way to ask a child about a penis they've seen, so... <laughs> there really isn't. Yeah. But, um... Lucas and... Oh, yeah, uh, then at this point, uh, Greta and the counselor man, they're like... Greta's like, hey, we should, like, we've got to tell at least her parents, maybe the other parents, too. And he's like, yeah, that's pretty much what the next step is. So Greta calls in uh, Agnes and uh, what's what the fuck's the name of her son? Torsten. Torsten. What an interesting name. But, uh... A yeah. Danish name, probably. <laughs> Very... Or Dutch, even. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, oh. <laughs> perhaps... Perhaps even Denmarkian. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> but, but she calls... Uh, she calls Agnes in and Agnes with Tor- Torsten. And, you know, they're kind of in a rush. They're like, oh, hey, you know, we have to get to a game. My son's got a game. And Greta tells Agnes that she believes that uh, Lucas has exposed himself to Clara and they're trying to take care of things. And Agnes, you know, she's the mom. She's uh, a, a little freaked out by this, as you can probably imagine. Yeah, understandably so. Yeah, um, that's pretty much the extent of the scene, you know. She tells her, and Agnes, she's like, you know, how could this have happened? When can it have happened? She's asking actually pretty good questions, and Greta's just yeah, she like, doesn't fucking know. She she has no idea. Um, and then following that, it cuts to Lucas and Nadja. They're just they're sleeping, not like having sex. They're actually sleeping together. And Ooh. Lucas, I don't know how late it is. He gets a call really fucking late. Or maybe really early. But he gets a call, and it's his son, Marcus, and this is the first we hear of him. And he actually becomes a pretty uh, important character later on. But he gets a call, and Marcus is, like, crying. He's like, yo, what, you know, son, what the hell's going on? And Marcus is like, they're saying all these things about you? And Lucas is like, oh, my God. Okay. Like, he, he, uh, he feels a storm is approaching. Not the good kind of storm that is approaching, but... No, no, not at all. He is uh, very aware of what is about to happen. And uh, Nadja, you know, she wakes up and she's like, hey, you know what's going on? And he's like, well, it's best you hear it from me. There's a, there's a rumor going around that I exposed myself to a student. And Nadja, she's not in like a mean way. 
she's you know she starts laughing she's like that's fucking insane like no one believes that right he's like i don't know yeah Naja, she does her best god love her yeah Naja, Naja's a real chad she is a real chadette not gonna lie uh but oh boy next day so lucas goes to the school and they're like hey you were supposed to take a couple days off he's like hey so you called my son and uh wife or ex-wife you want to fucking tell me about that he goes to the office to uh cigaretta and she's talking to a bunch of parents so it's already like oh my god yeah all, already panic and uh hysteria. misinformation really yeah panic and hysteria has uh gotten the better of everyone yep and yeah it's just it's like as Greta you're in charge of the school like what the fuck do you do in that type of situation you know I well, she's I the mean, character I get the most she's the character I get the most pissed off at but at the same time it's like Jesus what do you do you yeah know? like it's yeah it, it's one of those situations where I get pissed off at her but like I understand her motivations because yeah like what do you do you're kind of damned if you do damned if you don't because like you know, oh yeah there's this if perception. she if she didn't warn others and it turned out to be true, oh my god, that would be yeah, so Yeah, everything, it would have been so bad for her. Like, she would have been out of a job probably forever as, like, a principal or a teacher or what have you. Yeah. But, of course, like, obviously, like, obviously the audience, it, like, the movie itself is also, like, really good at playing to the fact that, like, Vinterberg knows that we're frustrated because we know that Lucas is a really good guy, but of course, everybody else, they don't know what to think because, you know, they're being presented with an extremely heinous act and they just like they just don't know what to do because there's no evidence for or against it. It's some of the best dramatic irony I think I've ever seen in a movie because yeah. it's pretty much the whole... And for those of you who don't know, dramatic irony is when we know stuff the other characters don't. And yes. you know, literary stuff. We're see these these guys. They're fucking, they know what they're talking about. Man, we're so smart. We're, we're the intellectuals of uh, the YouTube reviewer hemisphere. So, what would that make Mayo? Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> what else did you expect? <laughs> oh fuck! Not that. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but anyways, yeah, Lucas confronts Greta. He's like, uh, hey, so, uh, you, you mind, like, not telling every fucking human being that, uh, that I was accused of this? And she tries to, she tries to walk out of her office door and get away from him. And he's, you know, he follows her and he's hollering at her. He's like, hey, so, you know, you're kind of yeah, fucking up my he's life. understandably pissed. Yeah, I'd, yeah, I'd be a little pissed off, not gonna lie. Yeah. Like, this is the first time that in the movie that we've really seen Lucas, like, lose his cool, sort of. And he's, like, he's fucking, like, hunting Gretha down and trying his best to, like, yeah. And uh, trying his best. And uh, trying his best to, like, not allow her to, like, get away without answering his fucking, like, questions and everything. Yeah, I really appreciate the fact that Lucas, even though he's patient and pretty level-headed most of the time, he doesn't just take shit endlessly. Yeah. Like, he's not afraid to snap back and be like, look here, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. There's a, and that's uh, that's also relevant to one of the best Which... scenes in this fucking movie. If you ask oh, me. yeah. Um, but yeah, he's hollering at her. He's like, really, you think I would do this? Like, you actually think I would do this? And Greth is like, look, I don't know what to believe. And, okay, so... On one hand, it's like, yeah, she doesn't know what to believe. I get it. But then she says probably the dumbest thing I've ever heard a human being say in my fucking life. And she says, children never lie. I'm like, what the fuck have you been smoking to think that that is possibly yeah. true? <laughs> yeah. Like, Especially, I am like a like, third of your age and I know that that's horseshit. Yeah. And, you know, they're pro in fairness, there probably are people out there who genuinely believe that kids don't yeah. lie and they're fucking stupid. I mean, and, you know, maybe it's a part of, like, maybe it's a part of Denmark's culture where, like, kids are considered really trustworthy, or maybe it's just, like, this small town where you don't really, I don't fucking know. I don't know. Yeah. It was definitely one of the aspects of the film where I was like, really, Greta? Really? Right. Like, I'm pretty understanding of, like, 
most things in the movie, but that's the one where I draw the line. I'm like, you can't be fucking serious when you say that. And yeah. I mean, yeah. in fairness, it's not every day that a kid says, hey, so I saw this adult's penis. Like, that doesn't exactly happen often. Um, but to say a kid never lies, it's like, okay, come on. Like, really? And, uh, eventually, I don't know what his name is, it's the big dude. He comes in and he's like, Lucas, I think it's time to go home. And he's, like, trying to push Lucas out. He doesn't get violent with him. Yet. Yeah. Yeah, but of course, Lucas is understandably not okay with this. Yeah. Yeah, he is, uh, not happy about it. So then he, naturally, he goes to Theo, because, like, oh, yeah, uh, by the way, during this whole thing, uh, Greta had accidentally let it slip that it was Clara who'd revealed it, and Lucas was like, oh, shit. And he goes to Theo's, because yeah. his best friend's kid. Holy shit. Yeah, like, that That would understandably be the first place that he went to, because that's, like, his best friend. He's got to be, like, Lucas, or Theo. You know, he would, <laughs> understand, he would understand, he would understand, he would understandably want to clear things up with Theo and be like, look, man, like, I, this is, this wasn't me, I promise. Yep, he goes to Theo's, and, uh, things start off looking like they might be a little okay. Oh, how we've been fooled. And, you know, oh, he, he knocks on the door or whatever, Theo comes to the door, and Theo is, you know, he's, uh, spooked. He's like, holy, sh-, you know, he's got this look on his face of like, oh my god, I don't know what to do. So, yeah. But he lets Lucas in, and he's pretty cordial with them at first. Uh, they're talking. Uh, they go to the living room, and Lucas is like, you can't possibly believe that I would actually do this, right? And Theo's like, I, he's like, I don't know what to believe. And there's this really great little uh, detail where, and it's not just here, but like, Theo does not want to look in Lucas's eye because, you know, he knows, his, he knows when he's lying. And he's looking, yeah. he's, he only looks at Lucas when he's talking to Lucas, when Lucas isn't talking. So Theo is looking away the entire time, and you totally get it because he's either going to find out that his friend didn't do it or that he did it, and that's yeah, kind of scary. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's a very hard thing to want to figure out, and it like it's understandable because again, like it's it's like I don't know, finding out your best friend was very inappropriate with your child. It's it's, it's just yeah. not something that you want to like. You just don't want to take that risk because it's such a horrible thing. Yep, and he pretty much tells Lucas straight up, like, I don't know what to believe, but, uh, you know, we can't be seen talking and things like that. And Lucas is like, dude, come on. And then that's when Agnes comes in, and she is uh, not as cordial as Theo. She's like, you need to get the fuck out of this house before I cut your dick off and kill you. Yeah. Uh, and you know, uh, props to Lucas. He's he doesn't. He's just like, okay, I'm going. I'm yeah, going. he doesn't really. He doesn't really get angry at them. He understands. Yep. And as he's going, that's when Theo goes up to him. And he's like, hey, Lucas. He turns around. And he just fucking socks him in the face. Yeah. And uh, he's he's got him by the throat. And I, th- it's it's at that point where Clara comes out in the hallway and she's like, hey, what's going on? And Theo's like, oh, hey, you know, honey, you can go to your room. And Lucas takes that opportunity. He fucking opens the door and slips his ass out. Yeah. And, uh, oh, you thought that was uncomfortable. (laughs) Hmm. It's about to get worse. It only gets worse, my friends. It only gets worse. So, uh, Nadja's with the other teachers, and they're like, hey, so we know you've been seeing Lucas, but here's what's being said about him. And she's like, yeah, I don't fucking believe it. And the other one's... The other people are like, well... Giga chat at. Yep. Uh, you know, it's good for her. It doesn't cost her her job or anything. Yeah, Jesus Christ. But she doesn't believe them, and so she ends up going to see Lucas, and they're talking about it all, and they're trying to figure out what to do. Lucas is pretty pissed off at the moment, and then that's when uh, Clara comes up to the door, and she's really upset, understandably she's like yeah you know she uh, she rings on the doorbell and lucas goes up he's like whoa what are you doing here so clara's like you know people are saying or i said this thing and now everyone's talking about it and lucas is like uh why would you lie and she's like i don't know if it's you know she kids have false memories basically where like their imagination yeah, yeah. runs wild and they just don't really know 
Yeah, it's it's one of those things where if you're, especially at a young age, if you're told something for long enough, even if it's a lie, like especially when that lie is perpetuated by other adults and stuff, like it's it's hard to tell whether or not that's the truth. Yeah, if you tell a kid something, like you, if you tell a kid something a thousand times a day, they're gonna believe it eventually. Yeah. So even if even if Clara at one point like knew, like she knew it was bullshit, she's starting to not know because everybody keeps saying it. Yeah. And Ian, and of course they don't know, but they're believing yeah. the mass hysteria. Yeah. So, you know, Clara's upset and Lucas is like, look, it's okay, I understand, but you need to go home. And Clara's like, hey, can I walk Fanny? He's like, I'm sorry, you can't walk Fanny. And it's like, oh, no. No. <laughs> That's the saddest part. Well, no, it's not. But it's like, oh, I'm telling the kid you can't walk the dog. It's like, oh, no. Yeah. It's, things progressively get more and more just spiraling awful. from here. <laughs> just awful. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, Clara leaves. The movie from. Oh, yeah, go ahead. The movie from here is basically just varying levels of depression. Oh, yeah, and frustration. Oh, yeah. Very frustrating. And Victor Berg, the bastard, he knows it. He fucking knows when we're frustrated, and you can tell just, like, based upon, like, you know, stuff like the cinematography and the writing and everything like that. Oh, the cinematography in his movies are fucking great. Well, they really are. Especially another round when when I was I was because I watched it again last night with Laura our guest and I was like oh my god this movie looks so good like just yeah. every shot so that, meaningful that dance scene too was surprisingly good oh we'll get to that later yeah yeah believe it or not all this in, podcast all in will due end time. On a, believe it or not this podcast will end on a very joyous note <laughs> yes it's it's definitely a good thing that both we watched and are covering the movies in the order we did because oh my god the hunt is so depressing uh, I got him <laughs> but uh Let's see what was I just talking about? Uh, we were talking about uh, depression. You had just gotten done with the scene where uh, oh, Fanny yeah. walk. Uh, I, Claire can't walk Fanny no more. No. Yeah. So Claire goes home, and that's when Nadja, you know, in a very just not even like accusatory accusatory way, she's just like Lucas. I just need you to tell me that you didn't do it. That's all she wants to hear. But Lucas, he's pretty livid at this point, and he's like, "Oh, you th- you're just you know you're like everyone else. You think I did it too?" She's like, "No, I just want to hear you say that you didn't do it." And he tell he basically tells her to get the fuck out, and he grabs her and throws her out. Yeah. And of course, like he can't control his anger and stuff like that because like it's just like, what do you do in this situation where everybody yeah. around you just hates you all of a sudden for something you didn't even do? Yep, something you didn't even know you were being accused of until pretty much the day before. Yeah. And of course, nobody cares whether or not you have anything to say because they've already assumed that you're guilty. Yep. And uh, the next scene, it's a very quick scene. It's just uh, Clara and Torsten there playing with this little Christmas display they've got. Oh, by the way, this is a Christmas movie. Uh, for, the, for, for the family. Didn't know if you knew that. For the family. Yeah, didn't know if you knew that. Uh, it teaches you all about life and stuff. It's a great family movie. Uh, yeah, it's also a wonderful criticism of what happens when people give in to hysteria and don't try to, you know, look up the facts for themselves. Yep. But uh, they're setting up this little Christmas display. And Clara's... She's fine. Like, she hasn't been traumatized in any way other than, you know, people upsetting her. And that's, you know, it's not trauma. It's just her, you know, getting upset. As yeah. a kid does. And Like, emotionally, she is essentially A-OK. Right, yeah. No psychological trauma or anything. But, you know, she's she's just acting totally fine. She's like, oh, you know, Christmas, you know, trains and snow and elves and blah, blah. And her brother Santa. Torsten. Oh, go ahead. And Santa. Oh yeah, and Santa. Yeah, the be- the best X Man. Yes. <laughs> what are you right. talking about? He's the best Revenger. <laughs> oh yeah, he's also the best uh, port porter in Death Stranding. I see what you did there. Yeah. No, he's in Death Stranding. You meet Santa Claus. 
Oh, that's fucking dope. <laughs> I think I think I talked about it in episode seven because I because t- I remember like Chase bringing up uh, Hideo Kojima and I was like, yeah, and that's training fucking Santa Claus and Mark was like, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's fucking sick. It's great, and you get you get a Santa hat for doing his quest for him. It's fucking awesome. Anyways, so they're playing the you old know, Christmas display, whatever, putting you know decorations around the house and whatnot, and uh, it's just this little scene. It's just Torsten. He's you know. He's, he sees Claire acting fine, and you know, he's a kid too, he doesn't fucking know what to think. Yeah. He's like 12 or 13 or something. But, uh... High yeah. school age. Yeah, about there. But he starts crying just looking at her. And that's pretty much it, that's just, it's... And I think there's yeah. a reason for it, which I'll get into later. But, um... It's yeah, just, you know, for the it, most it, part, it, it's just that. It is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, but it it shows that Torsten obviously like cares about his sister and is taking this situation very seriously. Yep. And uh Oh yeah, the next uh the next day, uh Lucas wakes up to a knock at the door and he's like, "Oh god." So he gets a gun. Is it a gun? Maybe it's like a shovel? He gets some kind of weapon. Just, you know, yeah. in case. And he goes up to the door, and he opens it, and it's like, oh my god, it's his son Marcus. Yay! Marcus is here. Yay! So he Who is him. also... Uh, as it turns out, Marcus is also a, a little mini Chad himself growing. Yeah. As we'll find out later. Yeah, Marcus is fucking awesome. And, uh, you know, he hugs Marcus in that Mads Mikkelsen hug way that he does. Yeah, with that fucking, <laughs> like, fucking cradling the head. It's really adorable as well. Like, I don't like, yeah, it's no, it's, just, it's, it's like just a very nice hug. It, it's, it looks like the way a dad would hug his son. Yeah. And in Hannibal, he does it in a way that makes, that looks like Hannibal would hug someone that he kind of wants to kill. So, yeah. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. And it, it's good. Because you know, to keep things from getting too uh, depressed in the islands, uh, there are some like wholesome scenes spread in of with Marcus and uh, Lucas as well. So it's a Christmas movie. It, it, yeah, it, it's it's a nice little breather from all of the depression that preceded uh, those scenes. Yep, uh, Marcus shows up, and him and Lucas they go. Lucas goes to like make coffee or whatever and I think he makes Marcus like fucking milk I don't know uh, <laughs> he's drinking something I guess and they're just milk. talking <laughs> milk. and you know they're just talking and Marcus is like hey what's gonna happen he's like well I've been accused of this so we're gonna try and get things sorted out blah 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 and that's when Brune shows up he is fucking uh, Chad fucking awesome he is Nikolaj in uh, another round I believe and he is the godfather of Marcus so that's pretty much how he introduces himself. He comes in. I don't even has he like he's been seen with Lucas at this point, but you don't really know who he is. But he comes yeah, in. we haven't we haven't gotten like much on who he is. We've seen his yeah. estate. We've seen him. He's talks, but uh, for the most part, like they've waited to introduce him until now. Yeah, we know he's a friend of Lucas, and that's pretty much the extent of it. And so he comes in, and he's like, "Hey," and it's like, "Oh, it's one of Lucas's friends," and automatically you see him, and you're like, "Oh, I guess he actually believes Lucas." Cool. And he, Thank God. Yeah, he greets Marcus, and he's like, is that any way to say hi to your godfather? And it's like, oh, he's his godfather. So that explains, like, in a matter of, like, three lines, like, why he would be close enough to trust Lucas, which, yeah, really well done. Just simple. Clever, clever ex- exposition. Yeah. And, you know, it's a, and it's a, it's a way that I would believe, because, you know, how, he's like, how many ways can you possibly introduce someone as like, I am this family member, right? But he's like, hey, yeah. is that any way to, you know, say hi to your godfather? And it's like, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. That's something I would see. Which is, which is something that I have seen, like, grandparents and stuff, oh, or yeah, her yeah. grandparents and stuff say. So, like, it's a very believable line. Oh, yeah, for sure. I've said that to my niece and nephew. I'm like, is that any, like, oh, come on, I'm your uncle. Fucking hug me, you little shits. Oh, you bastard. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, Bruno shows up and he's like, "Hey, what's gonna happen?" And he's like, "Well, you know, blah 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 blah." They don't really, they just don't really know. They're just like, "We gotta try and get things sorted out." And Bruno's like, yeah. "Well, you know, eventually they'll come and figure it out, and things will be okay." And he's like, "Man, Bruno, fucking high five. 
High fucking Bruin. Or high five. God damn it. I mean, yeah, high as well. He's, you know, he's the godfather. <laughs> but, um, from there, they're like, well, you know, uh, we gotta get groceries. And Luke's like, I can't fucking go out. So Marcus is like, oh, I'll go get groceries. He's like, are you sure? Yeah, yeah. So Marcus goes to get groceries. And to his credit, the store owner is like, you can have these groceries, but I don't want you or Lucas coming by here again. Yeah. It's like, well, either way, it's, groceries. <laughs> yeah, either way, it's yet another instance of Lucas's life just taking a fucking tanking. Yeah, and it seemed like a fucking Marcus and the the cash register girl, they kind of looked at each other. They were like, oh, hey, what's up, girl? <laughs> and then the you know store manager decided to just shit all over that by, by you know, talking about his dad. And, you know, uh, we'll see that store manager again later. And he's way worse. Well, he's not, he's not, he's really not terrible, but it's like, uh. He, well, in fairness, he's not the one in that scene doing the uh quote unquote terrible action right. so he he's just you know doing manager stuff he's trying to you know keep the order peace yeah. i suppose yeah trying to be cordial about it which you know in a situation like that, that's the best you fucking can do i guess pretty um, much and of course he's gotta and of course you know with the store manager you also can't necessarily blame him either because at the end of the day, like he's running a business and he's got to keep customers coming in and stuff like that. Right. So like if the general public knows that like the family or like an actual person who has supposedly uh, done an extremely heinous act is coming to the store, then that's going to obviously like hurt his public perception too. Yeah. That doesn't necessarily make it right, but it's still like, like you get it. You understand. Yeah. Like I don't want to fucking go shopping at a place where I like, I know they're okay with a fucking you know, a pedophile going there. Yeah. Like if Charles Manson was just casually shopping at a Walmart, <laughs> I don't know if, I don't know if I'd be going to that Walmart anymore. I'm just well, going to be honest. First, I'd be curious how he was there. Cause he's dead. Uh, but then I'd be like, wait a minute. Charles Manson never dies. Uh, <laughs> heroes never die. <laughs> oh, oh God. <laughs> That's fucked. No joking. But, uh, top 10 anime betrayals. Top 10 anime betrayals. It turns out Loveless is, uh, he's, he's, he's rocking with the Mansons. Oh, God. Marilyn Manson, Charles Manson. Oh, God. Oh, I remember there was actually a time when I was a dumb little kid that I thought they might have been related. <laughs> Dude, Marilyn Manson's real name's like Brian something. Oh, damn. I didn't know he had a real name. <laughs> 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 I didn't know his parents named him. <laughs> well, no, but, but do you ever have that point where you were a kid where like everybody who had the same last name was just automatically related? Yeah, yeah. I remember when I was in like fucking like second or third grade, like everybody, every fucking kid was like, "Are you related?" To and I just have to be like, "No." <laughs> and I've also just outed myself for my last name, but don't worry, you're never gonna figure out my first. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> if I could, I would like you to cut this out and post. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Uh, uh, I mean, okay. I'll have to edit. And anyway. The, the rendering will take so long. Uh... I'm sorry. Now, in retrospect, like, I forgot for a second that we were recording. And so, like, I'm, you know, I'm comfortable with you. This dude. But, like... <laughs> but, yeah. Brain, brain go... It's okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll edit it out. What is this? The thank you hour and twenty eight minute mark. Just uh, in I'll go ahead and put a text to remind you. Yep, I was actually about to text you. Anyways, yeah, interesting little detour. But uh, so we were talking about the grocery store when Marcus was there. Yes. So, uh, what happens next? Oh, yeah, so Marcus goes home, and as he's going home, he sees a couple of dudes taking Lucas to a car, which they're, it's like they're police officers. And he's like, hey, what the hell's going on? And he's like, well, you know, I'm going to go on trial. Don't worry, you know, I'm innocent, so it'll be fine. 
It's like, okay. And you know, I just gotta say, I'm really fucking glad we did not get a scene of Lucas in jail because Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, and also, like, the officers, like, there's also a part where Lucas asks if he can hug his son before he goes, and the officers are nice enough to allow him to do that. Thanks, guys. Yeah. They don't, like, smack his head against the... You know, isn't it great when officers are, like, <laughs> they do their jobs good? Oh, God. Yeah, now we're getting into some political commentary. <laughs> I mean, hey, you know, I've met great cops and I've met asshole cops. i got friends who are cops and I know people who are pieces oh, yeah. of shit that are cops. So, you know, that's fucking... Oh, yeah. There's there's always going to be your bad eggs. Thankfully enough, my experience with cops has been fairly all right. I remember one time when I was, like, in middle school, I was playing Frogger. <laughs> stupidest fucking thing I could ever do. <laughs> Me and my friends were running across the road like dumbasses. Uh, glad to be alive, by the way. Anyways, so... <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> and, uh, yeah, officer, he was like, hey, so you were playing Frogger? And I was like, ah, yeah. <laughs> and so, officer took me home, and my brother and my, his friends were there. So my brother's like, you got pulled over by a cop! And I was like, ah! Uh, leave me alone. <laughs> they, they're like fucking. They were like, "Oh, thank you, officer." Blah blah blah. blah. Go inside, close the door. Ah! <laughs> it was a good time. Ah, don't play fuck. Frogger, kids. It's, it's fucking stupid. <laughs> like, yeah, don't, 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 don't play Frogger. It's yeah, it's fucking. Dear God, I don't know why you would do that. That's that stupid, kid. I thought it was funny. You were, you were a very stupid kid. Huh? <laughs> no, I was a stupid ass kid. <laughs> but uh yeah no the cops are pretty decent and they t and it, just to add like a little shit cherry on the shit cake uh marcus goes to go inside with the groceries and he's like oh shit i don't have a key looks under the mat oh shit nadja has the other key whoopsie so marcus is trapped outside and that's when he goes to brun's because brun has a fucking estate basically yeah wait no doesn't he uh doesn't he go to theo's first Oh yeah, he does. That's yeah, funny. he does go to Theo's. Wait, does he? Yeah, no, he does. He does. Yeah, because there's a scene of Mark being a small Chad. Yeah. Um. So, uh, Marcus goes to Theo's, and you know he knocks on the. There's a bunch of people over there, and he knocks on the door. Theo answers, and Theo's like, "Oh, Marcus. Uh, you know, you can come in. Like, I don't have a problem with you." So he goes in, and they they want to talk. They're like, "Hey, you know." Marcus is like, I don't like this stuff being said about my dad. And they're like, oh. they do the fucking adult thing of like, oh, you're a kid, you know, you'll understand someday, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, uh, always be condescending to kids, guys. Yeah, especially fucking teen, you know, because teenagers don't have like functioning consciousness or anything. <laughs> like, yeah, you, you definitely shouldn't be honest with teenagers. Just, just you know, be condescending. Don't, don't treat them like, you know, they're functioning small adults or anything like that just just be right. extremely talk down to them essentially but they're doing that whole shtick and that's when clara comes in and clara's Oof. like clara's like hey you know marcus and they're it's just kind of a marcus is like i don't want you saying this stuff about he's like he just comes out he's like why did you say that stuff, lie about my dad and again kid doesn't want to get caught lying so she's like i wasn't lying and marcus starts yelling and Claire tries to run to her room, and Marcus tries to follow her, and the adults hold him back because it's like, oh shit, I don't want this fucking teenager to beat the shit out of my six-year-old daughter. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah. understandably. And yes, both party, both party, both parties were understandably upset by this interaction. A little bit, and so they they're holding Marcus back, and it, you know, I understand Claire's position, and it would... I get it. But at the same time, it's really fucking cathartic when Marcus just spits in this little girl's face and tells her "fuck" a you. little bit. Which, which it's 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 funny because like the film is also very smart about the fact that it obviously criticizes the side that is you know wrongfully accusing a man who hasn't been proven guilty. But it never it, it never goes into straight condemnation of those people because like it understands that like again, like it's understandable. It's an extremely heinous thing. And like like what can you do in this situation? Because chances are you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Yep. Um and it's just it, it's a good like it's cathartic in a way, but it's also 
cheap and i don't mean that in like a, be- a criticism towards the film but like it's a cheap cathartic where it's like it's like fuck yeah you know fuck that little girl and it's like you know three seconds after all of that joy is gone. <laughs> like it's just completely yeah, like, gone. Like it, like the film like gives you that catharsis, but of course, like we all know, like that's only a very small instance of it. Like there's still a bunch of shit that's left to be dealt with afterwards. Oh yeah. So you know the adults they take Marcus outside. Oh my god, did you hear that fucking thunder? I did. Jesus. <laughs> oh my god. Hello. Normally I don't even fucking hear shit that comes through on your <laughs> mic. What the hell? That was some fucking Oh god, there it is again. Mads Mickelson <laughs> clapping some cheeks, man. I don't know, man. Mayo heard a fucking shit. He's oh, no, like May- 2% of his power. <laughs> Mayo's using a whole 7%. Jesus Christ. L hit the fucking deck. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah, the adults take Marcus outside. And they, the big guy from before, who was like, you know, he was pushing uh, Lucas away at the uh, at the daycare or kindergarten or whatever. Uh, that big guy throws Marcus on the side of the street, and Marcus, d- biggest balls I've ever seen on a fucking teenager, just <laughs> runs up to this like six and a half foot, three hundred pound dude, punches him in the face, and he no sells it because he's a big ass dude. He's like, oh hell no, so he. Dex Marcus, and you know, Marcus is a kid, so he falls flat on his ass. Yeah. And thankfully, the other adults pulled the big dude away before he got too pissed off uh, and beat the shit out of Marcus, <laughs> which, Jesus. Yeah. That was shitty. And yeah, Marcus runs away. He's just shouting that they're fucking assholes, which, yeah, yeah, pretty much. It's like it's like it's like I said. There's that momentary catharsis, but there's still the immediate problem afterwards. It's like it's it's like in wrestling when you see like the little dude just smack the big dude, and everyone's like, "Yeah!" And then two seconds later, you're like, "Oh shit, wait, <laughs> no, that's bad." <laughs> yep, there's several moments. There's one moment of catharsis that I just I fucking love the whole the whole way through. But uh, oh yeah, we'll get to that. Soon. It's 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 like one of the best scenes in the movie. Oh yeah, for sure. So, uh, that's when he goes to Brune, and he's, t- uh, that's, uh, it's a really nice, se- Brune has a fucking big family, first of all. Like, yeah. Like, dang, like, oh he, has time to, he has time to be a godfather when, like, his fucking, like, aunt, uncle, parents-in-law, his own parents, like, there's a lot, I guess it's because it is Christmas, so, like, a lot of people are visiting, yeah. which makes sense. Um, but also, he's still got, like, a huge fucking house. Oh, yeah, his house is fucking huge. And obviously, like, a huge amount of land, because it's, like, enough land for you to hunt fucking deer on. Oh, yeah. Um, and we'll, I'll go ahead and talk about this now, because the scene is, like, literally only a few seconds long later on in the movie. But there's one scene where um, Marcus is going through the house, pretty soon, I think, from where we are. And uh, he's going through the house, and he's, like, looking at pictures of everyone when they were younger, and family photos and all. And he sees a picture of Lucas, Mads Mikkelsen, and it's obviously a picture of Mads Mikkelsen when he was younger. And it's I like stuff like that. Um, Fresh Prince of Bel Air also did this. This is a fucking random comparison, I know, but Fresh Prince of Bel Air also did this, where like uh, like Uncle Phil, uh, there were moments where like you'd see pictures of uh, of him when he well not uh, the actor James Avery, you'd see him a picture of him as a kid, and it's like I like that stuff. That's cool. Yeah, it it helps to build the fact that they've known this person for a while. Yeah. And it makes sense that, you know, Brune would... He has pictures of family, and he's the godfather of his best friend's son, so he's going to have pictures of his best friend. It's like, oh, wholesome. Yeah. But yeah, uh, Marcus goes to Brune's house. And, you know, Marcus, uh, he's got a bloody nose because a fucking 300-pound, six-and-a-half-foot dude decked him. <laughs> as so, happens. you know, it's understandable. Yeah, you know, it's like fucking... It's like when Hornswoggle... You don't, you're not going to get this. When Hornswoggle just gets decked by the big show. And it's like, oh my god. <laughs> Poor man. Yeah. But, um... Brun takes him in. And they're talking. And Brun shows him his family. And they all say hi. And they go down to get some food. And there's a couple of Brun's family members. I don't know who they are. I don't even remember their names. They're just yeah, extras. Uh, not to... Yeah. Not to be dismissive of them. It's just... I don't know who they yeah, are. Yeah, they're not... They're not very important in the grand scheme of the plot. Yeah. And that's perfectly fine. So yeah. they're talking about the trial that Lucas is going to go on, and they're talking about how one of the accusations, may, apparently, other kids, you know, imaginations run wild. 
other kids said things about him after they heard about Clara. And apparently all of them started accusing Lucas of taking them to his basement. Which, Jesus. And Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. But, um... The kicker is that Lucas doesn't have a basement. So it's like, oh... So there's... Good. Yeah, uh, I was just adding on to what you said. So, like, yeah, like, we, the audience, know that, like, they've got nothing. There's, there's no way that they can, you know, follow through with these charges because there's no basement for Lucas to take them to. Yeah, and it's a... It's this really joyous moment because Marcus is happy, Bruin's happy, all of them are happy because they know that, you know, because, like, investigators go to Lucas's house and they're like, wait a minute, he doesn't even have a basement. And... Uh, like with many moments, you immediately start thinking that's not going to matter, though, to public opinion. Yeah. And that's pretty much what happens. Uh, they end up meeting up after the trial, Lucas and Marcus. They uh, they go home to have dinner. And it's like, you're, start, you're starting to think to yourself, maybe things will be okay. And you realize how much time's left in the movie. And, uh... <laughs> uh hmm. hmm. Yes, oh god. And now we're gonna get to the saddest scene of the movie, if you ask me. Oh my fucking god. Oh god, they fucking did it. This scene the killed bastards me. did it. So there's a sacred cow in Hollywood known as the dog. And uh, <sighs> you don't harm the dog in your movie, unless you're a horror movie, then it's like whatever. But this movie is kind of a horror movie in its own way. Yeah, it's a social horror movie. Yeah. But, um,. So Lucas and Marcus, they, they uh, go home, they have dinner, and they're, like, doing dishes and stuff, and Lucas is like, hey, you know, you got yourself a girlfriend? And Marcus is like, oh, you know, no, it's, I, I guess it's implied that he might be gay? Cause, Maybe? Because Marcus I, I is like... I don't quite remember. Because Marcus said something to the effect of, like, no, and Lucas is just, like, not interested, and Marcus is just like, mm, no. So I don't know if... I don't know, uh, but it was, you know, it was a nice little just family little conversation. And then that's when a fucking rock flies through the door. Or the door. Because, <laughs> Jesus Christ. The window? The <laughs> big-ass rock. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, and no. a strong man. Yeah, he's just the 300-pound, 6'6 dude. But, uh... You need fucking Andre to fucking do that shit. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, a rock flies through the window. Thankfully doesn't hit Lucas, at least. And, you know... Naturally, they're pretty concerned, so Lucas tells Marcus to stay inside. He goes out with his, uh, I guess, I think it's with his gun. Yeah, it's with his rifle. And yeah. um, he goes outside, and he sees a bag in front of the house. Black trash bag. Trash bag. He goes to look inside it, and that's when it cuts to Marcus coming outside. And Marcus uh. like, oh my god, I can barely talk about this. Yeah, so... Um... <laughs> Essentially, what happens is uh, Lucas he grabs the bag and he looks inside of it and like he knows what it is and so like like you see Marcus trying to come up and like figure out what it is and Lucas just keeps telling him to go back inside and it eventually ends up with uh, I believe Lucas just like blowing up and essentially like being like Luke or being like Marcus get the fuck back inside and then if I'm not mistaken he then spends the entire rest of the night digging a hole. Um, not not quite. So what happens is, uh, yeah, Lucas looks inside the bag, uh, then it cuts to Marcus, and he's like, hey, what's going on? And it sh there's like one really quick shot. It's Fanny. Do the dog's been killed. You see her, there's a quick shot. You see a rope around her neck, which is just oh, un really unpleasant. Oh, God. It's really unpleasant to think about. And Lucas is telling Marcus, like, hey, Marcus, go back inside. Marcus comes over and he sees it and he starts just shouting basically into the woods that he's gonna fucking kill whoever did it. And <laughs> understandable reaction. Yeah, yeah, no, I'd be a little miffed, uh, gotta say. And then the saddest fucking line of the movie. I'm gonna cry. Um, Lucas, he's basically dragging Marcus back in, and Marcus it's starting to rain, and Marcus is like, bring her in and she's gonna get cold. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Ah, I can't handle it. Whew. I need a moment. Fuck <laughs> me, dude. I need a moment, too. That was awful. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I fucking... Uh... Fuck you, Vinterberg. 
Oh, yeah, fuck off, Bitterberg. Why did you do this to me? I, so, I yeah. love you, but why Why did you do this to me? It then cuts to <laughs> Lucas in the pouring fucking rain, digging a hole for his, for Fanny. And, well, oh, watches. she's... Mads Mikkelsen, he's just a mess. Yeah, and he, like, I'm pretty sure he hugs Fanny, too. Yeah, it shows him uh, picking her up, and he hugs her. Gives her in that Mads Mikkelsen kiss. way. Yeah, yeah, not really, he's just holding her, like, uh... Like curling her basically and gives her a kiss and then and that's when he puts her down and that's when my homeboy Brune comes in thank fucking god I needed some joy in my life yeah <laughs> Brune comes out and he's like Lucas you can't be staying out in the rain he's like leave me the fuck alone <laughs> at, that point, he's just like, <laughs> at that point he's like I'm fucking done they killed my dog just fuck this and Brune's like come on you have a son to take care of and he's like okay like oh <sighs> What a fucking, well, what a, oh my god, what a fucking, what a fucking time, man. It's so fucking brutal every single time as well. Oh yeah, I can't even fucking talk about it. Beyond this, you'll never hear me talk about this again. Fuck you. Yeah, I'll never fucking talk about this movie again. Don't except when me. I'm watching it with friends, because it's so good. It's really But good. it's so sad. That's the hardest thing. To... Now, you know, people are like, yeah, it's, this seems like an unpleasant movie to watch. Like, yeah. Yeah, it, it's very unpleasant. And it still gets worse from here. It, well, it's the worst part. I don't know. I feel like that's kind of the low point for me. Like, it stays bad. Well, not, but... not, not worse, but yeah, it, it, like, it doesn't necessarily get better until, like, the very end of the movie. Spoilers. Yeah. Um, I not really didn't really spoil anything, but that's when uh let's see very nice oh yeah the next scene is ooh all right let's fucking go so Lucas goes to the market <laughs> Lucas is like hey you know I gotta get groceries so because you know when Marcus went he ended up going to Theo's and he got his ass beat and he went to Bruins so yeah he doesn't really have Dick. groceries. So Luke, or, uh, Lucas decides he's going to go out and get groceries because he's like, I don't want to put my son through this shit again. Yeah. And he goes to the market, and people are looking at him, and it's like, oh, where, where the fuck is this going? So he goes to get, he wants like, I don't know, some salami or ribs or something. Groceries. So he well, goes to the deli. He, yeah, he specifically goes to the deli, like get some pork chops or something. And uh, he's like, hey, I want, you know, three of the chops or whatever. And the big guy's like, yeah, you're not welcome here. And Lucas, is, he's just like, okay, I want three of the pork chops. And he's like, look, I told you, you're not welcome here. And Lucas is like, hey, uh, I have the right to shop here. I'm a citizen, blah, 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 blah. And that's when the meat guy's like, okay. So he walks up to him, and he decks, this is also, he's not like six foot six, but he's a big fucking dude. He decks Lucas yeah. right in the nose. And um, I want to say he just proceeds to continue beating the shit out of him basically yeah because lucas just will not leave yeah he hits him a couple more times while he's on the ground and he tells him uh, that's when the store manager from before he comes over and he's like hey it's time for you to leave a couple of the other employees come over they pull him out and lucas is like look i just want my fucking groceries halfway out the store he's like hey can i at least get the groceries that i came here to get and they're like no you can leave actually so they throw him out on the concrete and they're throwing shit at him and one dude throws, like, a fucking, like, some frozen meat, and it just smacks him on the fucking skull. Yeah. He oh. is bleeding bad. Like, he his head's been split open. And, you know, even the slightest little cut on your head's gonna make you gush. So, like, he's just, he's oozing. So, at that point, it's like, okay, Lucas goes to walk away. Or, no, no. <laughs> How could I possibly forget? The best part of this, I was yeah. fooling you. I was, I was messing with you. That's not what it is. <laughs> so, Lucas is like, okay. He's bleeding. He looks like shit. He goes back in, and they're like, hey, you're not welcome here. Uh, the big dude that is from the from the deli. Big dude goes up to him. He's like, hey, you're not welcome here. And Lucas goes right in front of him. He's like, I just wanted to say one thing. And he headbutts the motherfucker and drops him on his oh. ass. <laughs> And I'm it's just so like, good. Oh, like, it's like a wrestling pop. I just jump out of my seat. I'm like, yeah, fuck you, dude. And that's always sad. I don't, there's, there's no, that moment is always great. There's no immediate, like, oh, but God, what about? Nope, nope. He fucked that dude up with a headbutt. Yeah. First of all, this dude yeah. is, has, this dude's got a bleeding cranium and he headbutts a dude. What a bad motherfucker. 
Yeah, and then of course the fucking shop, the fucking manager allows him to buy his groceries because like, yeah. the fuck are you gonna do the at manager, that point? The manager's like, okay, 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 look, he gets him the bag of groceries that Lucas had when he first came in before. He brings it up to Lucas, Lucas puts it on the counter, and he's like, uh, the lady's, the girl who's there is like, it'll be, I don't know, fucking Denmark money. She's like, it'll be X amount of units. <laughs> and Lucas, uh, he hands her one bill. I want it to be, he hands I want her, it to be the- Go ahead. I said I, I want their currency to be doubloons the solely because it's God. another D U word. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but <We're... laughs> Lucas hands her one bill and he takes the groceries and he doesn't take change. So it's like he just left her to like this dude just headbutted a motherfucker and left a tip. Like what a cool yeah. guy. <laughs> but uh and it shows him walking away and it goes outside and then it cuts to uh Theo and his family. And they're sitting in the truck, and Agnes is like, oh shit, it's Lucas. And Theo, and she's like, what do you want to do? And Theo's just like, well, I don't know. He's he's clearly like, eh. Broken man, basically. And Clara's like, hey, where, oh my gosh. She's like, hey, where's Fanny? And <laughs> they, don't, they don't answer. So it's like. It's, it's like Theo essentially like knows in a way. It's like Theo, no, like immediately they're like, oh, Fanny's dead. But you don't know, it's never said outright, it's never even really implied, but it's like you don't know if possibly Theo knew about it before and had something to do with it maybe even, or if he's literally just finding out about this, but it's, you know, that's cool. I like that. It's the unspoken what ifs. Yeah. It's, it's again, it's, it criticizes without necessarily going straight into outright condemnation. Yeah. And Theo, it cuts, it does like a close up of Leo, uh, Leo what the fuck? Uh, Theo with an L. Me. But. Uh, yeah. Then uh, it, cuts, it cuts up close to Theo's face, and he's like, he, he, you can tell he's like, oh my god, this poor. Because he, he, he's, you know, his best friend from before, at least. And keep, and keep in mind, at this point, Lucas is like limping. Like, like he is yeah. having trouble just standing up, even. Yeah. He headbutted a dude when he already had a split cranium, so uh, that should probably tell you in the shape that he's in. Yeah, and an injured leg. Yeah. And so, yeah, Theo's like, oh, shit. And you can tell he just feels like shit. So, Lucas goes home, and he's starting to get dressed, and you're like, what the fuck? And it's like, the there's a little subtitle, well, I guess it's not a subtitle, whatever, text that comes up on screen, and it says, uh, like, 1150-something, uh, December 24th, and you're like, oh, it's Christmas Eve night. Because this is a Christmas movie, I forgot. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was definitely a surprise to me when we first watched. Because I didn't realize it was, like, so close to Christmas. I was like, wait, yeah, yeah. what the fuck? Yeah, it starts off in the fall, and it uh, follows him over a couple of months. But, um... Yeah, so it shows him he's going to church, and you're just wondering, you're like, oh my fucking god, what could possibly... This is the best scene in the movie, by the way. I don't know if I've said that before, but holy yeah, hasn't crap. It, hasn't it... It's won awards, right? Oh yeah, it's been said that this scene is pretty much what won it all of its awards. Which makes sense, because it's, uh, it's such a good scene, oh my god. This is a fucking amazing scene. Uh, and it's also the the graphic that I have up of Mads Mikkelsen's lovely face. Uh, this shot is from that scene. It's and once you watch it, you're like, oh yeah, that's yeah that shot. Yep. Yeah, and it's and it's and it's also the poster, which you know again, yeah. it's like oh that shot. It's like it's it, it's it's very simple shot, but like it carries so much weight to it, especially after having watched it. It's really good. So it shows it's... Lucas going to church. He's washed himself up a bit. He doesn't look too awful he's got like a bruise across his he's got like a little cut over the bridge of his nose but that's about it so he goes in and they don't tell him to go away but like everyone's looking at him and lucas he just doesn't give a fuck he just walks in he grabs a little pamphlet or whatever he's like thank you and he just keeps going and this ballsy motherfucker goes to the sit in the front <laughs> like oh my god yeah um, sort of ever well it was also it was also like the only seat that wasn't taken no, it was. Pew. There was an old lady sitting there, and she got up to leave because oh. she didn't want to sit next to him. Yeah. Fucking Giga Chad Lucas over here. Yeah, he's Cut like, them. step aside, you old hussy. I'm gonna fucking sit here. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. 
<laughs> but uh yeah he sits down and it's you know everyone's kind of looking at him and uh theo and his family are sitting a few rows back and on the other side of the aisle and they're like oh it's lucas oh no and agnes is like do you want to leave and theo's like no no it's it's okay and uh what the fuck is going on out there anyways some bullshit I just, yeah so anyways the service is like about to start of course a children's choir comes out uh, how could you possibly make this any more awful of a situation for him to be in? Yeah. And isn't uh, Clara isn't Clara in the choir as well? Yeah, no, she's in it. She's, she's like yeah, towards the front. I think she's like yeah, not in the middle. Because yeah. I yeah, because I remember that uh, that uh, when uh, Greth was talking to Clara at the beginning of the movie, they mentioned they uh, I think the Denmark national anthem. Uh, maybe. I don't really remember specifically. But, um, yeah, no, there's, uh, Greta's there. I think Naja's there also. She's, like, off to the side, uh, telling the kids, like, they can come in or whatever. And so, yeah. oh, oh, let me step back. Before this, there's actually a moment where, um, the pastor comes out. I don't know, I guess it's Eastern Orthodox, so I don't know, like, their titles, but, yeah, preacher man comes out. And he's like, you know, thank you all for coming here for Christmas Eve. Uh, all of you are God's children and are welcome in this house. And, you know, props to this man. He doesn't... He, like, Lucas is in the fucking front. And he doesn't say shit. He's just like, all of you are welcome in God's house. We're all God's children. You know, all of the, you know, sermony, blah, blahs. And it's like, man... Yeah. I mean, to be fair, I guess Lucas fits right in among the church people, so... Uh, yeah, but in fairness, I'm Matt Mickelson also has a very distinct face. I was making a joke about church and children, but yeah, sure, yeah. Oh... <laughs> <laughs> Boy, <laughs> uh, they don't Ooh, mind it. I'm some kidding. people are gonna take issue with that, but not us. Look, I make fun of everybody. Okay, look, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 the best way to deal with life. That's right. But uh, yeah, no, but yeah, cutting ahead again. It's uh, the children's choir comes out, and you're just like, oh my fucking god, <laughs> like come on. <laughs> and uh they start singing and it's just kind of you know they're doing their whole singing denmarkian christmas carols or whatever and lucas is just falling apart he looks back to theo and you know it's this shot from the poster of course and the shot's important because he does not break eye contact even a bit he looks straight the fuck he he looked him dead in the windows of his soul and most importantly, there was no eye twitch. Yeah, and it's also it's also the first time that Theo has made eye contact with Lucas in pretty much since the accusations started to form. Yeah, essentially, like a couple of months. But um, yeah, he looks back, and uh, Lucas. So from his perspective, he sees like Agnes leaning over to talk to Theo and Theo's talking back and he's assuming that they're saying shit about him and he's just, he's had enough. He's getting really upset. He starts crying. Oh, my man. And he, he starts like basically singing along to the Christmas song and he kicks the chair in front of him and uh, that sort of draws attention to him. And that's when he stands up to leave and he just... You know, he stands up, he turns around, walks away, and the kids have stopped singing. And that's when he stops and he looks at Theo, and I don't remember exactly what he says to him, like word for word, obviously. But he's like, he's like, you know, basically he's like, I want to ask you one more time, like, do you really think that I could have ever done that? And Theo doesn't want to look at him. And that's when uh, Lucas leans over the pews and just grabs Theo by the fucking collars, and he's like, look me in the eye, and Theo doesn't look at him, so he fucking punches him in the face he's like, yeah i think he throws a fucking bible at him at one point too maybe but yeah he fucking he's just like oh and then it's sorry good no no you good it's also worth mentioning that when a after lucas and uh theo make eye contact while lucas was still sitting down uh theo essentially freaks the fuck out to his wife and so and like like l said like from Lucas's perspective, they're essentially just talking shit, but in reality, like, Theo is trying to come to terms with the fact that, like, he knows, he knows that now that it wasn't him, because he knows when, like, before, he knows Lucas's look when he's lying. Yeah, 
And Lucas is basic. People are trying to like push him back. Agnes is like slapping him. It kind of looks pathetic, really. Uh, you know, but uh, <laughs> you know, Lucas is like grabbing him and he's like screaming at him to look at him in the in his face and see that he's not lying. He's like, you know, look me in the eyes. You see, there's nothing. There's absolutely nothing. And that's when he stops. That's when he's like, you've seen it now. So he's, you know, he pulls himself away, and he walks out. And the people are, you know, trying to walk and. They don't really push him, but they're, you know, they're making sure he doesn't try anything funny. And he's like, yeah. no, no, I'm leaving. Fuck it, I'm leaving. All right, cool. So he goes home, and it cuts back to Theo, and he's just, he's got this look on his face. He's like, oh, my God. Uh, I feel like shit. And that's when it cuts to the Okay, so this scene's fucking awesome. I just, I just got to gush about it. It's fucking great. Maz Mickelson's yes. acting is unbelievable. Yeah, and it's 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 amazing how it is that they were able to make a shot of somebody just looking over their shoulder so fucking powerful like Jesus Christ. Yeah, like you it kind of looks generic almost. Like you know, from a like from a neutral perspective of like it's just not you know, it's like that generic movie poster of main character looking over their shoulder or whatever, right? But yeah. And you actually, like in the context of the movie, like yeah. like that, like it's it's the most significant point of the entire movie, because that's sort of like the turning point where like things start to slowly look up for him. Yeah, and also, and I don't want to sound like fucking pretentious film dude, but it's like, man, you can see the pain in this dude's eyes when he looks, and it's just like it's heartbreaking. It's so awful. Yeah, you know, like the, it's it's the eyes of a very broken man. This dude went from. You know, hey, just kindergarten teacher having a good old time, gets a girlfriend, you know, looks like he's going to get custody of his kid, or at least be able to see him more often. And no, just... he's getting custody, because uh, well, no, Marcus does, was a parent. You know, like, yeah. before everything had happened. And then it just all went, and it's, you know, it's completely out of his control. He did not expect it to happen. He had no way of ever knowing it could have happened, other than, you know, yeah. Other than just the general knowledge of you're a teacher and... Who knows what kids will say, but, you know, that's, no one, not a lot of teachers expect their lives to just go down the shitter. Yeah, from one simple, like, what was essentially one simple white lie from a kid. Yep. And, uh, that's when it cuts back to, uh, it cuts to Theo and his family, and a few of their friends have come over for, like, Christmas, and they're at their house, and, uh, it shows people are going home, it's getting late. And that's when Theo, he goes to the kitchen, and he makes a plate of food, because they have a they have a decent amount left over. That ham, I think it was ham, looked really good, by the way. <laughs> it did, it looked amazing. It was some good-looking food. And that's when Agnes comes in, and she's like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, I'm making a plate. She's like, for who? And that's when he's like, I'm only going to be gone a few minutes. And she's like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, what? What, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> in that exact voice, I swear to God, she just turned into a fucking thug. Like, I don't know. No, but she's like, you can't be fucking serious. He's like, look, I'm just gonna go talk to him. And credit to Agnes, she doesn't throw a fit or anything. She's just like, whatever. She's yeah, she's clearly not on board, but she doesn't stop him either. Yep, she's like, if you want to do this, then fucking go right ahead. So he does, and it cuts back to Lucas at his apartment, and it's or well, house. It's not an apartment. I don't know why the fuck I said that. And He's just laying on his... He's just sleeping on his couch. I don't know why he's sleeping on his couch, actually. He probably just didn't care enough to get to the bed. Yeah, he probably just didn't have the energy, honestly. He's probably just walked in and was like, all right, bye. Or maybe Marcus is sleeping on his... I don't fucking know. But... Yeah, and that's when Theo comes in. Because... Uh, wait, does Theo have a... How did Theo get in? Did he just leave his door unlocked? I mean, I guess so, because he just... You know. No, I, I think he knocked, and then no, uh, Lucas he, opened the door. No, because he sat down. Uh, he came in, like, he walked into the room when Lucas was asleep. Maybe Theo has a spare key, I don't know. I mean, maybe. I could actually believe that. But, um, yeah, no, it was, but yeah, he comes into the room, and he sits down, and he's got the plate, and he wakes up Lucas, and Lucas is like, he doesn't say anything, he's just kind of like, okay. And... Theo's like, I brought you some food, and I just want to 
sit here if you're okay with that. He's like, okay. So Lucas starts eating, and he's like, this food's pretty good. It's like, oh. And uh, Theo has, I don't remember if it was like wine or beer. He has some kind of drink, and he's like, and he's just like, would you be all right if I chilled out here for a while? And Lucas is just like, go right ahead. And it's like, oh, thank fucking God he finally got a break. Oh, my God. It's a very nice scene. Like it's it's one it's another one of those moments of catharsis where it's like finally one of Marcus or one of Lucas's old friends is finally willing to like be with him again and stuff like that. Yeah. And I don't know, there's something just, you know, it's just someone bringing food to someone else is just a very you know, very natural way of showing a, a sort of kindred between them. I really like when people do that. I don't know. Like when people bring me food, I'm like, oh my god, I'm so touched. Oh yeah, it's it's just it's just a very thoughtful and nice action because it's like you're you're bringing me sustenance that you didn't have to. Yeah, they like you made especially this... when someone cooks for you. <laughs> oh yeah, like when it's a fucking home cooked meal. Oom, mm, mm. good shit. Or like hand uh, like handcrafted desserts. Ooh, yummy. I make I make some good teriyaki pork boy. I tell you what. <laughs> 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 I make some good spaghetti. <laughs> that's, that's what I got. Nice. <laughs> I also cook people pretty good. So, anyways, the next scene. Uh... Oh. What? <laughs> no, but uh, yeah. So the next scene is uh, it, it. We do. We get a time jump. It's like next year, and you're like, whoa, okay, that's oh, okay. And. It shows Lucas and Marcus and Nadja. It's like, yeah, Lucas and Nadja are back together. Yee! Like, I'm happy. Shut up. And uh, I'm happy too. Yeah, they were so cute. They were cute. And so they pull in, and they're at, it's at uh, Bruins Estate, and it's like, uh, and they'd referenced it before, but yeah, Marcus, uh, he he's of age to do his hunt. I guess it's like this little uh, local tradition, maybe something that just happens regularly in Denmark. I'm not really too sure. I don't know the culture, but. You know, Marcus is of age to go on his first hunt, and uh, Lucas gives As him his Torsten. Yeah, and Lucas gives him his rifle, which he got from his dad, who got from his dad, and you know they're having this nice little celebration. But when Lucas arrives, people are kind of just not really looking at him, and like throughout the uh, coronation, I guess, of Marcus, they're like, "Oh, hey." Uh, you know, they're just Marcus looking. isn't a king. Yeah, I don't know. That's <laughs> the best word. <laughs> when Marcus is giving a speech after he's been given his dad's rifle, Marcus, you bow to no one. That scene, <laughs> that scene gives me the fucking cries. Let me tell you. You you know what I'm talking about? No, I don't. You bow to no one. You recently rewatched these movies. <laughs> You could have to be more specific. So there's these four dwarfs, and they uh, and they. Uh, oh. Yeah. Wait, what? Aragorn, when when he's crowned king, and he walks up to, uh, Merry and Pip, and Frodo and Samwise, and he's like, and they go to bow to him, and he's like, "My friends, you bow to no one," and then everyone bows to them. Okay. See, I thought you were saying. Uh, for whatever reason, with your tone of voice, I thought you were saying you bout to no one. What the fuck does that mean? I I, I don't know. If that's why I was so confused. <laughs> but <laughs> anyways, Lord of the Rings. I'm sorry. Right over the head of someone who just watched Lord of the Rings. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm a little bit stupid. Everybody. <laughs> Everyone make fun of Luce right now. Yes, please. <laughs> Never mind. He likes it. I don't want to do that. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no. Anyway, Marcus movie. Is, Marcus is getting his rifle. Bruins the one who's like up there, you know, and all. That. And he's like, yeah, you know, this is the rifle that Lucas used and that his dad used and his dad used and blah blah blah. blah. And it's this nice little scene, but people are looking at Lucas, and Lucas sees that they're looking at him. But it's like, you know, whatever. You know, people. Some people just their minds are made up. They're never gonna change. Fuck them, right? So then they go out on the hunt, and there's one point where Lucas is alone. And it seems like the movie's just gonna end, right? And then just bam, you hear a shot, and it misses. Thank fucking god, because I didn't need that. 
Yeah, I that would have been awful. Yeah. So, bang, you hear a shot, and it hits the tree right next to Lucas, and he fucking scrambles, and he looks up, and he can't quite make out who it is because, like, the sun's, like, right over them. And, uh, but the person, they don't, she, thank fuck, at least they don't shoot him, maybe because someone else was there, I don't fucking know. But yeah, and it's just this uncomfortable reminder of, you can be as decisively innocent, there can be, like, no, but no matter what, there are gonna be people out there that just are not swayed. Yep. And it's a very, it's a very bitter, not awful, but like, very bitter note that the movie ends on. Yeah, it's it's sort of bittersweet because it's like yeah, like Lucas finally has some semblance of a life back, but you know there's still somebody out there who hates him. Yeah, even if they have no right to. And, it, and look, of course, of course, because we can't have anything in this planet. It never like it, it it never divulges into who is the person that actually like tried to kill Lucas. Yeah, and Thomas Venterberg has refused to comment on it. He will not. He will not say. And there's no real telling if there was ever an intention of there being a specific person, or if it's just, like, any fucking rando. Yeah, but I personally enjoy not knowing it, who it was. I think it was Torsten. Yeah, I mean, that's the most logical answer, because he's shown as being kind of protective of his sister. Yeah. And stuff like um, that. And, like... I, refer like, I referenced it earlier. I was like, we'll get back to that. That, like that scene with him and Clara. So, like, Torsten, he just gets these random little scenes, and sometimes he's very out of the way in some shots, where it's like, he's just, he doesn't have a presence, but he's still a character, and I'm like, Thomas Vinterberg doesn't seem like the type of guy that does nothing with a character close to the main cast. So, yeah. you get a couple of scenes with him, and, and it comes off as, even though he's a fucking idiot kid running around looking at porn, uh, he, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, as, as you do when you're a kid. Uh, it, it seems it seems very like calculated the scenes that Torsten is in, even if yeah. it again it seems like he just doesn't really have a place, and so I, I think that was to sort of imply, you know, the some layman credence. might see this character and think that there's nothing about him. Yes, but I, I think it was supposed to imply that Torsten was the one who tried to shoot him and i think yeah. that like the silhouette of the person whatever it shows the shot like when they're right in front of the sun and you can't see them is sort of like a skinnier person and of course torsten is you know he's, he's a bit of a thin guy yeah he's a teenager and i mean there's a few things about it um torsten is appears to be around marcus's age so i would believe that he was also out there able to hunt with them um, yeah I think I think it's I, I I'm pretty sure there might be a shot with him out there. I don't remember exactly. There might be. Uh, there might not be. I'm just really not sure. I think it's implied that several people went out, like more than we saw. Yeah. Um, Which would make sense. Yeah. That's my guess, though. So that was the hunt. Woo! Oh my god! What a depressing movie. I'm gonna message Laura real quick. Yeah, the, so I said it before. It is not an easy movie to watch at all. I don't Especially recommend on watching it. Yeah, I don't recommend watching it more than you need to because it's really, it's frustrating. It's exhausting. It, it and I would recommend like if you're gonna watch it, definitely do it with friends. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't so know you have so you have somebody to like hug. Because oh. you're gonna need a hug after this fucking movie. Let me tell you. I need a Mads Mickelson hug from my shucker. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I need a Mads Mickelson hug from Lady B. <laughs> from oh, I thought you were gonna say Stern. <laughs> oh, no. L yeah. La Lady D is is better. I love Stern, but he ain't, say, he ain't, he's he ain't no I'll see now. He's your pet, he's on screen right now, like He is my pet, but he but like he ain't no I'll see now. I'm gonna I'm gonna have Sturm give you a hug right now. Just me. Ah. Oh, lovely. But, uh, Thank you, Sturm. I appreciate it, buddy. Yeah, so for those of you who are listening and you're like, Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> like, oh my god. <laughs> uh, I assure you, things are about to get much more jovial. <laughs> Thank fucking god. Yeah, holy shit. Like, even just talking about the movie is really fucking depressing. Yeah, man, fucking... 
I don't cry easy, but that scene with Fanny, man. Yeah, that shit. Oh god, it fucked me right up. Someone killed the dog. It's not okay. Ooh. Yeah. How dare they? Want the sacred cows, the dog. Nah, if 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 they really wanted to be completely Oscar worthy, halfway through the movie after Fanny died, it should have just turned into John Wick. <laughs> That's what I would have fucking done. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. Uh, now no, that's that's what we call layers to your movie. <laughs> hey, so uh, here's a little PSA from your old buddy Loveless at Seas. If you hear something horrible about anyone, no matter how awful it is, please wait. Always until... fact check it. Please, please try and actually learn before you fucking jump to conclusions. Yes, and always, no matter what happens, Don't wait to form dog. your con. Say again? Don't kill someone's dog. I would well, yeah, not have obviously. killed. I would not have killed Hitler's dog. Hitler was a bad man. I don't know if that's a controversial like hot take, but Hitler wasn't. Well, it's kind of it's kind of the thing. It's like it's, it's not the dog's fault. Like the dog has yeah. no part in this. Even if like it might have been trained to do stuff, but that was you know that's not necessarily the dog's fault. It's the upbringing of the dog. Imagine if imagine being the dog of Hitler. Like, you're just living this innocent little life in this big house, and you see this guy with a funny mustache, and he treats you really good, and you love him forever. You don't know. You don't have any fucking yeah. idea. And also, before you form your own conclusions after hearing how hor or something horrible that somebody did, uh, always wait until you hear their side of the story, and, you know, then you can sort of form your own conclusions, because you've heard both sides. Yeah. I generally try to take people at their word, which a lot of people are like, oh, people lie all the time. I'm like, okay, well, if I just assume that everyone's always lying, what the fuck kind of world am I living in? Yeah, like, what a fucking depressing view to just think that people are always fucking lying. Like, God. <laughs> like, like if, if you can't at least occasionally take someone at, your, at their word, like, like what, what do we have as a people, essentially? If we don't trust our words. This society, man. Discord presides in your society. Your society. <laughs> it's so... It's kind of fuck. You literally... Like, you cannot say that word anymore without it immediately becoming... You really mean. can't. You really can't. It's fuck. Yeah. Fucking Jake, it's, even like, the Jared it's, Leto Joker said we live in a society. It's like, motherfucker... <laughs> Yeah, it's funny too because there was a in Guilty Gear Strive, like there was a character theme that was originally named Society oh, no. before before the game came out, and that was actually like a lyric from the song that I just spouted. Um, yeah, and it was called Society originally, and it's not like it's not as well. It's kind of depressing, but anyway, like after the game came out, it got ch changed to. Uh, the name for it got changed to Armor Clad Faith. And I don't know if it's because of the fact that Arxis, like, knows about the society meme. I I assume that maybe they the used English the English translators did. Yeah, maybe the English translators did. Um, but, yeah, it was originally Society before the game came out. And when it finally came out and there was an album released for it, it was changed to Armor Clad Faith. It's also a banger of a song, and you should definitely look it up if you're listening to this. <laughs> Society. <laughs> yeah, that was the hunt. It's uh, it's one of the best movies I've ever seen, and I fucking hate it. <laughs> yeah, but it's a good hate. It's oh, a yeah. love hate. Oh yeah. I love it, but I don't like watching it because it's really painful. But now you I've, can't say it. I've just cut over to the the joyous shot of my boy Mads Mikkelsen, whose name in this movie is Martin. And he is drinking with, uh, it's it's the poster shot, well, one of the poster shots where he's drinking with all the kids who are graduating from high school. And it's like, yeah. Oh, yeah, by the way, I don't know. Okay, so I should actually figure out what the exact, but like the age of, the drinking age in Denmark is, uh, in most European countries, really is lower than over here. Pretty in sure it's 14 in Denmark. Denmark drinking. If I remember the movie correctly. I think it's 14, but I might be wrong. Well, uh, Jesus Christ, that's such a low age. The first age of restriction on buying alcohol from retail outlets was imposed in 1998. It was it's 15 years. This was raised to 16 years in 2004 
and again to 18 for drinks stronger than 16.5% volume in 2010. So essentially 16. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, I like drinking. Drinking is nice. Drinking is I would nice. drink. Well, well, never mind. It's past five. <laughs> you know I might grab myself a good old drink once uh, Elora hops in. And then we can, like, back and forth to, uh, you know, keep things going. Let people get their whatever they need to do. Go pee or whatever. Yeah, I'll definitely need to grab another uh, non-alcoholic beverage because I'm, I'm not a, a bad boy. Yeah, we actually, uh, so the person that we're having come on, uh, her and I actually watched another round last night. Uh, I don't know what the fuck she was drinking. We were both drinking. I was drinking uh, sake and Seagram's. I had, I had a decent amount. I had like three Seagram's, which is, I mean, it's a cheerleader drink. It doesn't really, you know, it's like soda, more or less. Yeah. But, uh, sake, sake is fucking strong. And uh, I had a good chunk of it. So. I, was, I still uh, have my rum shot a bottle. Nice. I haven't had rum Maybe shot I'll in drink. a minute. I'll probably drink a little bit of it. Um, the wrestling event that I was watching Friday, though, uh, the one that I got, like, the Chicago deep dish pizza and all that stuff for, I also had, oh, man, I had kinky vodka for the first time in, like, years. Which is <sighs> How was that? So I got a bottle of one flavor. It was, like, fruit mix, whatever, berry, dish. And it was really good. It's pretty good. And I had like two shots of the green apple kinky vodka, which is one of my favorite drinks. That shit is so fucking delicious. And uh, it's pretty. It's a decent strength to it too. It's not like it's not gonna fuck you up unless you have. Even if you have a shit ton of it, it's not really gonna fuck you up that much. But um, mm, good shit. It's very very good. And you know, it looks like we're up for another round of recording. <laughs> I, I hate you because I thought... See, I thought of another joke earlier of, well, it looks like it's time for round two, but I, I guess, you know, we fuck it. Bad. You should feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you don't, but you should. Uh, uh, anyway, hi guys, this is our guest, Elora. Hey, Elora, introduce yourself. <laughs> Wait, but you just no did. All right. Hey, it's me, Elora. <laughs> exactly like these guys said. How are you doing? Okay, but like, <laughs> what do you do? She's stupid do like I us, do? but woman. Yeah. <laughs> also, um, don't really do the YouTube thing yet. It's mostly Twitch streaming, but yeah. Hello, it's me. Tell us about your Twitch content. My Twitch content? I don't know. Right now I'm just doing DMC5 and I'm terrible at it. Oh my so, god, no. another C's guy loving DMC5. Uh, oh, yeah, shit. wow. It's always Wait, like no, it's all your is... guys' fault. Hmm. Wait, no, but this is a C's woman, so it's different. <laughs> it's different another flavor. C's guy's loving DMC5. Yeah. Who would have fucking guessed? It's the flavor of suffering, so it's very different. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, Laura's just started DMC5, and uh, I did. it's been a fun time watching her play so far. Oh, God, if you can call it playing, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of wailing of the dam and going, what is that? What is that? <laughs> good times. It's been pretty fun. Oh, God. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Fucking Eminem stuck in my throat. Oh! Okay, well, this is how you die. Um, do you have any last words? Fuck. Women. <laughs> All right, we'll put but, it on your gravestone along with "Died from Eminem." Thank you. <laughs> he truly was a wonderful poet and wordsmith of our time. Are those periods in between, or dot dot dots? <laughs> I lived loving Eminem's ah. until I faced the bitter end. <laughs> no. His oh, favorite character you. in anything ever was Gretha from The Hunt. Oh, no. <laughs> no that's a lie. Oh, boy. <laughs> but, uh, no. <laughs> we're done talking about The Hunt, though. Now we're talking about another round. Yay! Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Laura, uh, uh, Laura, because she's a little wimp, spared herself from uh, watching The Hunt, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> 
I'm sorry that you I don't be. like climbing walls or behind couches every two minutes. <laughs> you should be sorry. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> you bite but, your butt, uh, I don't care. We watched the. We actually watched another round last night, and uh, we talked a little bit about it. But what do you think? What did you think, Elora? I'm still sad. <laughs> <laughs> but it's such an uplifting. That's not movie. even a joke. I, I literally woke up this morning. I was like, oh man, <laughs> I'm real bummed still. Oh, but it's such a happy story. Well, for the most uh, part. Yeah. yeah, let's go with that. Yeah, I don't know why you were so adverse to watching The Hunt either. It's really happy. It's a Christmas movie. <laughs> For like the first Christmas 45 movie. minutes. Yeah, it's a Christmas oh, family movie. It's a Christmas perfect. movie about family. Oh, just like when my parents rented Black Beauty for me as a child. Oh my god. And then went, oh no. Oh no. <laughs> right around the time where, you know, Black Beauty's girlfriend dies and I was wailing into the abyss and realized that life wasn't fair at the age of six. <laughs> I remember one time a buddy of mine, for, his, for like his sister's birthday, this was like when they were really young, uh, mm -hmm. there's, his sister really liked Cinderella, so they went. So at a flea market, their parents found a Cinderella videotape, a VHS. Oh. Uh, that's a videotape for those youngsters who don't, you know, young young ripper snappers. And um, oh, yes. brought home Cinderella, put it in for everyone to watch on the birthday. And uh, let me tell you, Cinderella and about six other Prince Charmings were having a good old time. <laughs> okay. Oh dear. <laughs> Quite the story. Yikes. This is why, ladies and gentlemen, if you're a parent, watch it first. I mean, yeah. you don't have to sit there through the whole thing, but for the love of God, scan through it. Have, have yeah. some class. <laughs> it's a VHS tape, too. It's not like, you know, you're, it's like a. It's not like a disc in a box, right? Yeah. Like it's just a VHS tape. Yeah. Crazy. Man, VHS tapes, that's a lifetime ago. <laughs> I know, oh my god. I mean, physical mediums, that's a lifetime ago, too. <laughs> oh, dude, I was, at a, I was at a con recently, and I've told you all about that, but, you know, first time for some of the audience. And uh, I was at a con, and... Like me. Yeah. There was this, uh, there was this stand where they had all VHS tapes. They had, like, the box set of Lord of the Rings, Jurassic Park. Man, it was so fucking cool. They had the Godfather set. Hmm. I Dang. thought it was cool. I wasn't gonna. They actually weren't expensive either. Like the most expensive one was like Lord of the Rings. It was like forty bucks. Yeah, I mean, they don't really tend to be because no one owns anything to use those things anymore. <laughs> well, yeah, it's 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 a dead form <laughs> of media that also tends to not have the longest lifespan, anyways. So. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's pretty fragile. Yep. Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> yeah, she got messed up pretty easily. My Jurassic <laughs> Park tape when I was younger, man, that thing lasts forever. I'll give it credit. Did it really? Oh man, I watched I watch that movie all the time. time when I was a kid. Oh, Holy shit! My God, that's actually that's another movie I can't watch. So <laughs> what? What? What's that? What the fuck? What? I have problems. <laughs> I was introduced to certain movies at like an age too young. <laughs> So I, I I'll, I'll tell you where I got to. All right, the guy on the toilet, and then and then a big <laughs> dinosaur comes and eats his his hymns, and I went. Eh. Oh man, I can only <laughs> and then imagine. Never how... watched the rest of it. To this day, I can't watch any Jurassic Parks. I can only it's imagine. <laughs> I can only imagine how little you would have reacted to the. There's a scene where two people are trapped in a kitchen, basically, with two velociraptors. <laughs> It is so. Oh, it is intense. I mean, yeah. that doesn't really it's, it's bother me good. as much. It's when people show like agony <laughs> and oh, then yeah. like terror. That's oh, that's God. what gets me. I'm 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 not good with those things. So, are you looking forward to watching Hannibal with us? Oh yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Yeah, why don't we watch uh, all of the Alien movies while we're at it? Let's oh, hell yeah, revisit I'm down my for childhood. That. <laughs> I'm always down for Alien and Aliens. Oh, God, no, please. <laughs> if you're in elementary school, please don't, please don't watch the Alien. Yes, to all of our elementary school viewers, uh, please uh, don't yeah, watch yeah, Alien. No, also, just, also just, where the fuck are your parents? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, that's... So, so my mom it was, of course, British, right? And we met some Americans. British? Well, there's your first mistake. <laughs> oh, your first mistake. 
we met some Americans. And so I had an American best friend, of course. And so I went over to her house and my mom saw the movie and she's like, alien, isn't that like a bit much for kids? And the mom was like, oh no, no, my kids watch it all the time. This was a mistake. Oh, God. I was a sensitive Dude, wee baby and I, to this day, again, <laughs> the alien series, Prometheus, I ran out of the movie theater of Prometheus crying. As oh my adult. god. <laughs> like I just I had a full breakdown. It was bad. Anyway. <laughs> I think Jurassic oh. Park is like the reason that one of my biggest I don't really want to call it a fear because like it's very impractical, but like things that just mm. makes me wince or uncomfortable is like people being eaten. I'm just like, uh oh. Yeah, no. <laughs> agree, agree, hard agree. <laughs> when I started watching Attack on Titan, I was like, oh fuck. Oh, good. People being eaten. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. I'll put that on the list of animes <laughs> I was going to watch, but will now avoid. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's not as bad in like um, animated media. It's, I... it's real life actors where it's just I'm like, nope, I tap. The tag on Titan's <laughs> pretty me. fucking brutal. Like Is you it? see, you see it all. Okay. Also, when I was a kid, I watched the original animated series for Berserk on VHS. Oh my fucking god! So <laughs> I had an interesting Jesus. childhood. Jesus. Don't worry about it. <laughs> does the word Griffin yeah. cause you internal turmoil? It does. Very, very <laughs> internal turmoil. As a child, I was like, "Oh my god, I love him so much!" And then you get towards the end of the series, and you, oh, oh no. no, oh no, no, no. no. <laughs> I should really read it because, of course, the um, the original animated series, which is the only one that exists, and yes, there was definitely not. More... No, there was what are you talking about? There was this really beloved 2016 series. I think it was 2016. I hear it was lost in a fire. Several fires. I heard people cried over how good it was. Did they cry blood? Because I can understand that. No, they cried cum. The animation was so <laughs> janky. It looked oh. so bad. Hey, the music's good, though. Go. Just close your the eyes. Goes, oh, go Just close fuck. your eyes. There you go. I fixed it for me. <laughs> no. Just willingly blind yourself, and it'll be fine. Jesus. <laughs> I don't want to blind myself. That sounds unpleasant. Just close your eyeballs. Yeah, just close them. Oh, dude, you would have a hell of a time watching the Saw movies. <laughs> no, thank you. I just saw the commercials and that was enough for me to be like, okay, so anyway, I'm going upstairs. <laughs> and they're like, but we're watching yeah, American was, uh... Idol. And I'm like, not anymore. I'm leaving. <laughs> there are commercials on TV that are terrifying me. Uh... Yeah, Saw was one of those uh, series that kind of fucked me up when I was a little bit younger when I watched them for the first time. <laughs> Look at them now. They're really fucking goofy movies. But like back then, that first like, one is uh, still great. I will argue that till I'm. I oh yeah, it is. Way. But like, but like one of one of my always like biggest fears is just getting kidnapped in general. I just. Ugh. Fair, fair. That's fair. One guy offered me puppies once. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> And here's the best the thing. No, 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 no. Hold I, on, hold one of on. my biggest fears here's is the... being kidnapped. Yeah, that's reasonable. One time a guy offered me puppies. Oh. No, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. It was in my apartment complex where there were like a huge amount of units, right? And we were like way, way far away from our apartment units. And he's like, do you want to see some puppies? And oh, me and the God. other like three, like six-year-old girls were like, hell yeah. Oh my God. We dead ass went to his apartment. And do you know what we found? Puppies. Puppies. <laughs> and my mom was oh, like, god. oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, <laughs> I was such an idiot. It's fine. Nothing terrible happened. It could have, though. Oh god. Yeah, no fucking kidding. <laughs> it was just terrible, too. Because he was like a single young guy who looked kind of weird. And I remember thinking, man, he's kind of weird. <laughs> maybe he's legitimately just this fucking kind-hearted dude. He's like, hey, you know, maybe, kids love puppies, Maybe right? he was like, oh, yeah, I have a whole bunch of puppies. I should share this with the world. Who knows? Like, nothing else happened after Look, that. Look, to be like, fair, nowadays, if you offer someone puppies, they're like, dude, fuck oh. yes. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> My emotional support animals. So, yeah. I also had someone drive down from Washington because my friend thought it was a good idea to give him my address and oh my. he waited at the high school for me even though he was like 23 and I was like 17 
And then so he pulls up, all my friends get into his truck, and I'm like, oh my god, you guys are all idiots. I'm walking home, and he's like, that's fine, I'll just drive next to you. <laughs> he turned out to be a fine guy, but I was like, dude, that was very unacceptable. A little over the line. <laughs> Jesus. Red flags. So many red flags. Oh, I remember, I remember one time. It's, it's not really that personal a story, I don't mind. So, uh, Jess, for those of you who don't know, Jess is my kiddo. So, mm -hmm. uh, Jess was living in, I want to say Texas at the time. She's mm -hmm. moved around a lot. And uh, we had, like, a friend group, and one of the guys was starting to get a crush on her. And it was like, whatever, mm -hmm. fine. And he talked about wanting to visit her. And everyone, uh, Jess was like, no. And I was like, yeah, no. And he was talking about, like, wanting to pay a surprise visit, and I called him, and he didn't have my number, so I just called him, and I was, he answered, he was like, <laughs> he's like, hello? I was like, if you go anywhere inside of Texas, I swear to fucking God, your tires <laughs> will not be the only thing that gets slashed. <laughs> oh, God. Dang. And then I yeah, hung up. Uh, surprise and then, visits. And then I hung no. up, and I, uh, I hung up, and I joined the, like, PlayStation party, and I was like, I was like, hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> How's everyone doing? <laughs> Good. You don't wanna. Uh, you leave a person's kid alone. Mm -hmm. You get the bunk. Shh, bank. So, anyways, uh, another round's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. That's, All right. It's a uh, solid <laughs> three out of ten. Hold on. Uh, okay. Hold yeah. on. <laughs> I don't know if I really deserved an Oscar to be honest. <laughs> What the Don't fuck? hurt me, please. I'm too young to die. I will. I will. I will, I will actively hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was excellent. You could see why it won. Um, the only shame is that uh, foreign movies are like partitioned into their own yeah. arbitrary category. It's just like uh, animated movies. Mm -hmm. Animated movies yeah. aren't allowed into the yeah. Oscars because people haven't taken them seriously as a medium. They're like, no, no, no. Yeah. You can sit over there at the kids' table. <laughs> at least they're not horror movies, which just don't get shit. Yeah. Fair. Then again, given the horror movies we've gotten the past few years. Oh, yeah, no, <laughs> most horror decade. movies are. Sh can look, you blame them? <laughs> look, okay. Yeah. 2019, we got Color Out of Space starring Nicolas Cage, and it was fucking amazing. Never seen it. Oh, we're gonna watch it this Halloween. It's, it's, I fucking love that movie. Do you know what's really good? Cabin in the Woods. That's pretty good, yeah. It's a good movie. Watch it, it on New good. Year's. Kind of, kind of a weird movie to pick for New Year's, but yeah. <laughs> Interesting watch. Fun for the whole family. Oh, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> sure. Let's go with that. But uh, another round. Uh, it has mm -hmm. all of the people from The Hunt, uh, mm -hmm. Thomas Bo Larson, Magnus Malone, and of course Mads Mikkelsen, and it's all about four middle-aged white boys who teach, and they just, their lives are kind of, they're having a midlife, all of them are having a midlife crisis, they're just they're bored, yeah. life's just <clears throat> meh, uh, may, our main character played by Mads Mikkelsen, Martin, he doesn't see his wife pretty much at all because she quote-unquote works night shifts, <clears throat> we'll get to that later. <laughs> and uh let's see peter is the is peter the music teacher yes peter's yes. the music teacher nicolaj is a uh, psychology teacher martin teaches history and tommy is a gym coach and he teaches like all ages he's just the all-around gym coach <laughs> which i guess that makes sense uh he's also like the coach for like the soccer team or sorry yeah. football team football football <laughs> How dare American was showing. Yeah. Fucking American, oh my god. American football, silly. It's shot. <laughs> Isn't American football just rugby, but PG? Yes. <laughs> yeah, rugby, but it's less violent. literal violence. rugby. <laughs> <laughs> and they barely use their fucking feet for the actual ball. Nice. There was a rugby match in England where it was uh, police officers versus firefighters. Someone got their ear bitten off. Oh my god. So... Fucking Mike yeah. Tyson Evander Holyfield shit. Good times. Yeah, no, they're the four guys. They're very, uh, they're kind of lost is like the big thing. They're just kind of, they lost their spark. Yep. Oh, and I should probably mention the, the movie opens with a scene of basically a bunch of kids. Uh, they're the high school, it's like the senior class. They're all partying. They do this race where they it's like a three-legged race. You have to run with your partner, and you got to drink at certain points. And if you throw up, you lose time and all that stuff. 
you know, they're all just partying. They go out in the streets. They, there's this fucking amazing moment where they go on the train, right? And uh, there are, like, these two officers that come up, and they're like, oh, you know, they're not, like, dicks about it. They're just like, oh, you know, kids, be sure to keep it down, you know, don't party too hard. One of the kids goes up to one of the officers, and he hugs him, and <laughs> officer's like, oh, he's drunk, whatever. Kid fucking handcuffs him to a rail. <laughs> <laughs> So bad. Oh man. Oh, and they're playing God. a song uh during this scene called What a Life by Scarlet Pleasure, which is a fucking awesome song and uh it, it may come into play later on, who knows. <gasps> Gasp. It's in the, <laughs> it's in the, it's in the final scene of the movie. Ooh. It's fucking amazing. So anyways, back <laughs> to the main <laughs> plot. We have all of our teachers and it's pretty, pretty much the opening scenes are just establishing what they do. It shows mm. uh like like Peter, it shows him teaching his choir class, and the choir is really unimpressive. Luce had a lot to say about them when we watched it, actually. He was like, holy <laughs> shit. Yeah, yeah. I was a little, I was a little, me I was a little annoyed, because uh, the choir was very not good. <laughs> they were not. <laughs> and uh, Mads Mikkelsen, Martin, he teaches history, and it's... You know, we love our Mads Mikkelsen, and he's doing a great job playing this because he's supposed to be a boring-ass teacher. <laughs> and oh my god, is he? He's just, he's so low, he's so soft-spoken, he doesn't really make eye contact with a lot of students. And like, mm. he, his course doesn't, he does a bad job of like, structuring his, like, he's talking about the industrial age, and then all of a sudden he's talking about Churchill, and one of the students is like, what the, what the fuck, how the, what? Uh -huh. But? And he's like, oh yeah, so once, and then one of the students just walks out, he's like, this is fucking stupid. <laughs> and, um. <laughs> he doesn't even stop the kid either, he just goes, no. He's wait, just like, do you have somewhere, you, he's like, do you have another lesson you need to be at? And the kid just fucking leaps. He's like, oh. <laughs> like, okay, I guess that's yes. Mm -hmm. Alright, fine. As also, I, I, I was waiting specifically to talk about this until Laura finally got into the chat, and now it's time for me to hatch my delightful plan. Can we talk about how hot Mads Mikkelsen oh is? Like, <laughs> oh my god. He's so hot. For starters, I resent that that was your expectation. But yes, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I well, wholeheartedly my, expectation, agree. my expectation was that you had good taste. <laughs> You'd be surprised. <laughs> Look, I'm convinced that a lack of sexual attraction to Mads Mikkelsen is its own co it's its own mental condition that needs to be categorized. <laughs> yeah, you should, you should probably think about your life if that's your decision. I don't decide who I'm going to try. Yes, you do. Yes. <laughs> you do when it comes to Mads For Mikkelsen. For this one. <laughs> he's, like this, he's like the sexy Vladimir Putin. I don't know what the fuck is like going on with him. Vladimir such Putin, a, what the fuck? He looks like Vladimir Putin in the face. <laughs> look up Vladimir okay. Putin. Don't even fucking tell me they don't we, look similar in the face. Hold up, hold up. Hold up. <laughs> Research. Uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, Mads Mikkelsen is super fucking hot. Like, oh my god, I love this man so much. Kind of a stud, not gonna lie. Oh my god, you're right. Right? <laughs> What? <laughs> They're brothers. Confirmed. Uh, Illuminati is real. <laughs> <laughs> they are, in fact, part of a satanic cabal sacrificing children. <laughs> Twilight Zone. <sighs> That's uh, terrifying. Yes, I'm Danish... going to move away from that. Oh, yeah, yikes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this Danish man from Denmark who speaks Dutch, Dutch. is related to Vladimir. Who has Putin. Denmarkian monies from Dutchland. And Denmark money is called doubloons because I say so. <laughs> Only because it starts with a D. Yeah, naturally. What naturally. is it actually? I don't know. Denmark currency? I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> Laura can oh, oh gosh, she's typing. <laughs> the clickety clacking. Oh, it's a crone! Of course. Crone. I'm an idiot. I like doubloons more. I like doubloons more. We're going with doubloons. Croner. Sorry, Denmark, you've lost your currency. You now have doubloons. There's a yes. 500 kroner note. <laughs> Dang. The fuck does that even mean? I'm assuming it means something along the lines of money. <laughs> if I had to fucking guess, Luz. <laughs> it's probably not gonna mean I'm gonna duck. <laughs> I'm gonna probably. Over here. 
Fucking Alara's over here. Oh, 500 Chrome Note. What the fuck are you speaking? Is that English? I don't yeah. think it is. It's a, no, it's not. It's fucking... Mm. Is it, <laughs> it's the is, Danish is it, currency. Is it Denmarkian? Denmarkian. <laughs> Yes, I'll take five Denmark dollars, please. I will take five I'll, I'll... Denmarks. <laughs> ah, five Denmarks. <laughs> I will take uh, five Dutch, please. If I t I'll take three <laughs> Danish and a Denmark, please. <laughs> well, that's just pastries at that point. <laughs> I'll take uh, I'll take uh, uh, two Mads Mikkelsen's and uh, about a dozen. Denmark's. I don't know if anyone could take two Mads Mikkelsen's. I'm gonna be real. I am damn sure gonna try. Yeah, <laughs> we, we gonna try it. <laughs> and with that, I finish off my drink. Oh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mads Mikkelsen, come on, seas. <laughs> Mads Mikkelsen, please come on, seas. Oh wait, no, hmm. hold on, wait a minute. What's that? Oh my god, it's him. It's Mads Mikkelsen. Oh my god, it's him. <laughs> I got a picture of him on screen right now. It's him. He's just, he's looking he's at you, there. Alora. He's looking at Virgil. He's like, mm. oh, oh, man. <laughs> with, with his voice, you know, his, his Mads Mikkelsen voice. He's like, oh, Virgil, hello. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's the Mads voice. He's, <laughs> yeah, he's going to, like, oh, Mads Mikkelsen for live action Dante, but he just speaks Denmark for the whole movie. Just speaks Denmark. <laughs> Denmark. <laughs> What is he a Pokemon? <laughs> Denmark, Denmark, Denmark. <laughs> What's he evolve into? Good God! If you want it, uh, then you'll have to take it. But you already knew that. Denmark, Denmark, Denmark. <laughs> How many times have we fought? Denmark, 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 Denmark. Denmark. Ah! God's sake. I, I have a feeling like if Thomas Vinterberg ever stumbled across this and he somehow got to this point, he'd be like, what the fuck are these idiots talking about? I mean, I, like, I mean, because obviously celebrities are in fact human beings and they therefore do very normal human being tasks like, uh... Mr. Fraser being caught playing Nintendo Switch, but it's just really funny to imagine that you know they probably do watch YouTube videos and stuff like that. They Who probably knows come, what they come across. They probably Who have like alt profiles. Like <laughs> they have like alt accounts. They come in like, oh yeah, I really like what you had to say about Mads Mikkelsen. He seems like a charming fellow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> upvote your own shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah you come across a fan fiction you're like actually this is pretty well written <laughs> i'm gonna save that for later <laughs> they really think i'm sexy oh. don't they you pat yourself on the back like yeah good job me <laughs> so anyways martin meets with the parents at the school and uh yeah and he's and the parents are like hey so uh and they're not mad they're not being dicks about it. they're like hey so you know we got a bunch of people here on a short notice because a lot of our students are really worried about their course because your class is a C plus average and they want to at least have a B average for some of the universities they want to go to. And at first Martin's like, you know, he's like, okay, sure, fine. And they're like, is there anything you can do uh, maybe to draw their attention more or something like that? And he's or a like, different t-shirt. He, he, he said... He says, uh, well, you know, maybe it wouldn't be so difficult if your kid's uh, face wasn't buried in their phone. It's like, oh, 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 oh. that's fired. That's fired. <laughs> uh, the parents take it in stride, though. They're like, look, you know, we're just worried about our kids. And then one of the kids actually is there and they comment. They're like, look, you know, you go from the Industrial Revolution to fucking Winston Churchill. And we're just like, what the fuck's going on? And he's like, OK, you know, I'll, I'll find a solution. We'll, we'll figure something out. It's like, OK, cool. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, that's when we, and you know, after that, Martin goes home and, uh, sees his wife for all of three seconds. <laughs> He's just like, oh, hey, Annika, what's up? She's like, oh, yeah, go on work. Okay, fine, yeah. It's a real cheery start. <laughs> you really I get mean, the after, feeling there. After the teenager's partying, it suddenly goes into, and this. <laughs> it really, it really makes you feel like someone having a midlife crisis. Midlife Spider-Man. Yes. Midlife yes. Spider-Man. Mm -hmm pretty good stuff and it's you know it's all set up like there's nothing you know it's just it's that's what it is it's all just set up for the moment <clears throat> so martin goes over to tommy's because he's going to celebrate his 45th birthday some birthday i don't fucking know 40th 
He looks a little old for 40. It's, uh... so I, I think Thomas Bill Larson complained is... about the people in High School Musical, despite they were obviously uh, in their yeah. 20s. <laughs> I, think, I think Thomas Bill Larson himself is like 53 or something like that. I don't think know. Hmm. Looks good for a fucking 53-year-old. God yeah. damn. <laughs> It's a hot oh, man. He's a stud. <laughs> All right, where's the spray bottle? Hold on. <laughs> Never mind. This is loose. We need a fire hose. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, f- no fire hose hurt. That might just make it worse. <laughs> oh, no. Whoa. But, but, uh... Stop telling me on live television. <laughs> live television, yeah. Live television? So, oh, but our ratings. <laughs> yeah, gotta worry about, gotta get those ratings, man. Sex sells. Ah. Um, yeah, Martin goes over to Tommy's, and uh, Tommy, he's uh, he doesn't really have much. He lives with his dog, and his dog's getting old. Uh, what was his dog's name? Sad. L- his dog's name sad. Laybun. Yeah. It's yeah, and uh, you know she's old, so he has to carry her out to go pee, and it's like, oh, he's taking care of his dog. What a cool guy. And then they go out to drink. And this is probably the first scene of the movie that's like longer than 30 seconds. Mm. And they're just kind of chatting and going over things. And eventually Nikolaj is like, oh, hey, you know, Martin, how have you been doing? He's like, oh, you know, uh, you know, okay. And he's like, okay, Jeez. <laughs> come on, what's going on? <laughs> I heard about, you know, he's like, I heard about the stuff with the parents and all that. And Martin's like, oh, it's fine. He's like, mm, mm, okay. Okay, whatever, man. So then the waiters come out with drinks, and man, <laughs> cinematography and the lighting, like these are some sexy drinks. I don't know about you all, yeah. but I'm just like, dang. It's <laughs> almost like it's almost like the movie is about drinking. It's damn. Like, no. What? Is that why it's called another route? Oh, no. no. In Denmark, it's probably in Denmark and in, in Denmark and it's called drunk. Mm-hmm. Also, the hunt in Denmark and is called uh, Yachtin. Nah, another round is probably in reference to the Street Fighter tournament that is the uh, crux of the climax of the film. Stop. Stop that. Fucking nerd. Again, where's the fire hose? Fucking... Street Fighter has rounds, right? Nerd. <laughs> Oh my god. Joke, I've never played a Street sure Fighter. Of the foundation. <laughs> I've never played a Street Fighter game in my life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so here's what happens. You go out, right? And you punch some asphalt. You fight straight. Oh. Yeah, punch the Street asphalt. Fight. Until you break it. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. The it being the either game. your hand or the asphalt, whichever comes yeah. first. <laughs> nice. But um they're all pretty much just, you know, they're having a typical conversation. Nikolaj talks about, uh, I can't remember the name. It's some philosopher. They talk about it a decent amount in the movie. Uh, Skuldred, or whatever his name is. I don't know. And it's basically this philosopher who's like, hey, so humans have 0.05% too low of an alcohol level, a blood alcohol level. And uh, you should consistently drink, like, two glasses of wine throughout the day to maintain, like, higher spirits and increased confidence, being more laid back, etc., and all the guys are like, oh, yeah, 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 so it was cool. You know, old white guys are like, oh, yeah, drinking, cool, yeah, yeah. And Mads Mikkelsen is just kind of sitting there. He's just, he's got this, I talked about it earlier, like with the hunt, he's got like this thousand-yard stare where he's just mm-hmm. zoning out, kind of dissociating, and he's like in his own little head. And then that's when the waiters come, and that's when he starts to drink. And, like, you start to see him kind of, he doesn't get like sad immediately, but like you can tell something like he's bothered. <laughs> it gets worse, and yeah. And he just keeps <laughs> drinking and drinking and drinking. And finally, uh, he's like just starting to tear up. Nikolaj is like, hey man, are you okay? <laughs> and oh man, Mads Mickelson, right off the bat, I'm like, dude. You're yeah, kidding me. fantastic performance. And also, yeah, I felt it. I was like, oh, he needs like 12 hugs. I need oh, to dear. give him the Mads Mickelson hug. <laughs> Oh yeah, so you uh, didn't see Mads Mikkelsen hug anyone, did you, in that movie? You saw him fuck someone, but... <laughs> yeah. I yeah, no, sure Mads... did! <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Mads, Mads, Mads Mikkelsen has this specific way that he, like, hugs people, even when he's, like, acting and stuff, where he, like, he'll, like, cup the back of their neck and cradle it and stuff like that. It's, it's very sweet. It's a very sweet hug. Yeah. Weird, I hate it, but I also dislike hugs. It's, it's a very dad <laughs> hug. And, uh, I'm bad at hugs. Someone, <clears throat> someone teach me how to be good at hugs. You don't want to talk about hugging Mads Mikkelsen. 
well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> because obviously I'm not going to. <laughs> oh, all talk, boo. Ah, you're right. You're right. Fucking harsh. I've seen through no my shock. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. But um, Mads Mikkelsen, you know, he starts crying, and Nikolaj's like, "Hey, what's going on, man?" He's like, "Oh, you know, life's basically shit. <laughs> it's like it fucking yeah. sucks." He's like, you know, I have uh, haven't done anything in years. I got a PhD. Uh, what's his name? Tommy brings up the PhD uh, that he yeah. was going for. And he's like, nope, never got it because I had kids. And he's like, oh, pff, mm-hmm. whoops, sorry. And uh, yeah. Ooh, yes. so he drinks a bit more. And that's when uh, I think it's Peter. He's like, no, 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 Tommy. Tommy's like, he's hey, Tommy. remember that dance you used to do? I remember when you were young and you'd wear jeans and act like tough shit. Yeah. And, uh, and he shows him the, he's like, you took up ballet. And he's like, it was jazz ballet. Oh, yeah, 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 jazz ballet. Yeah, yeah. And so Tommy starts to do the, da- <laughs> he starts trying to dance. He looks like a fucking idiot. And then Peter gets up and he's like, oh, no, 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 wait, it was something like this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they try to get him to do it. And he does like one move and he's like, yeah. And they're like, yeah. And that's when they start drinking more and they kind of get into party mode and that's <laughs> oh man it's awesome they they like they go outside and the fucking strut <laughs> and they're doing i don't even know if it's like a race what the fuck they're doing oh uh, they're speed walking yeah they're speed walking and Mads mickelson mm-hmm. looks like fucking vince mcmahon he's like yeah they fucking they start like ar- he starts re- arm wrestling Tommy standing up, and Tommy's like the strongest of them all. So like, uh, it's like Martin <laughs> yeah, and pile onto him. like Martin and Nikolaj are trying to hold his arm down, and then fucking Peter jumps up on his back, and, like wrestling him to the ground. It's just this wonderful wholesome scene of drunk buddies just having a good old time together. Oh yeah, I mean you know you know they're drunk because the jackets come off and they're just <laughs> yeah. started onto the like. That's how you know they're warming like, up. Yeah, yeah. Fight me. <laughs> I'll kick all of your asses. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Sylvester Stallone for some fucking reason. <laughs> oh yeah, Sylvester Stallone is Danish, don't you know? I thought he was from Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> He's That's Denmark Danish. Oh, okay. <laughs> Denmarkish. Well, Denmarkish. <laughs> but yeah, I like that this movie is like, okay, so drinking can obviously be bad, but it's... It's not, it's like, you know, sometimes drinking is fucking awesome. I'm like, yeah, it's not you. inherently evil, but it very much has the potential to become yeah. such. It's like any good it's, thing. It needs it's, moderation. It's playing with fire. I mean, <laughs> playing with fire is fun. But know that you can definitely hurt yourself. Um, just a heads up, I will have to step away in probably half an hour just for like a few minutes. Uh, oh, please. Which I'm glad there's... Liz. No, no! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Jeez, you act like we haven't hung out multiple times. Jeez. <laughs> I don't know that. I mean, what are you talking about? <laughs> Dude, this Lies. is our new streamer friend. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, I don't even know who any of you are. Hello. Oh, <laughs> yes. It's me, Alora. <laughs> I just typed in a random name on the fucking Discord and I was like, oh, this person. There you go. <laughs> this person. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it might as well have been, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. No. <laughs> Hey, so, uh, Luz, how do you like my bus? Do you like the feel of the tires? What the fuck? What the fuck? Because I throw you under my bus. All the time. All the time. Oh in fact, God. I'm pretty oh sure I put it in reverse as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> these, these guys, you never know what they're going to fucking say. You really don't. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't know if I mentioned it. Yeah, I introduced the Laura to Mayo. <laughs> Uh, how's it feel is it painful did you enjoy the ninja gaiden review oh god it's so bad (laughs) (laughs) oh man that wasn't great what a strange thing to use an example of a game that's better it's literally he went i don't know this is kind of (laughs) weeby nothing alike (laughs) literally nothing alike and he's like yeah that's why this one's better and i'm like how that in conclusion, so... Ninja Gaiden is better. Like, yeah, right. in conclusion. <laughs> Let's um, wrap up my review, Sekiro. <laughs> Never mind, it's just something about Ninja Gaiden. Okay. Yeah, up. so as you were saying. <laughs> it was interesting. But yeah, no, it shows that they're just, you know, they're probably and they're having a good old time. The next day, uh, I almost said Lucas, Martin goes to the school and 
he uh, it, it's immediately the scene starts off like in a bathroom you see him going in and then he goes into the stall and you're like oh my god he's gonna shoot up heroin he's gonna kill himself holy shit he's gonna <laughs> shoot up heroin oh okay <laughs> I thought he was just gonna poop sadly, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be something. But no, he uh, he goes into the stall and he's just kind of like, he's like, okay, am I gonna do this? Am I gonna do this? Am I gonna do this? Reaches into his bag, pulls out some fucking Smirnoff. I'm like, damn, dude. <laughs> Dead ass. <laughs> Dead ass on Smirnoff, and he has a couple swigs, and he just goes to he goes to his class, mm-hmm. and. He's he just has a fucking great class. He's like way more energetic, and he's like, hey, he, like he raises his voice, like, hey, all of you, come on, listen, listen up. And yeah, and they're like, oh, okay. they engage with it. They're like, yo, we like Mads Mikkelsen when he's it's like, oh my god, my teacher is teaching. Yeah, yeah, basically. Hey, if you're a teacher, try like engaging with your students. It's pretty useful. <laughs> I thought you were gonna yeah. say try drinking. <laughs> well, that too. I mean, I'm look, done, you're dealing I'm with done. kids all day, every day. You need to fucking drink. <laughs> That's yeah, if you're, a teacher, <laughs> if you're a teacher, try actually engaging with your students in case if if you know if you want them to be interested in your class. Maybe even offer them only, a drink. <laughs> you only tell us that we're gonna need these skills every day of our lives for the rest of our <laughs> lives. You know. Yep. <laughs> yep. The and everyone loves him, and you know it's pretty good. It's not like a you know it's not like incredible, but he's like you know way, he's noticeably better. So Martin goes to leave. You know it's in the end of the. the end of the day bleh, and he goes to his car and he's like i don't know if i should drive because <laughs> you know at least he's got that much wits about him and nicolas sees him and he's like hey are you okay <laughs> he, he, he does the classic like drunk thing and he goes up to his buddy and he's like nick i'm drunk i can't drive he's like oh okay <laughs> and apparently <laughs> dur- apparently during this movie they did not drink for any scene like the- they did not actually drink anything yeah. they're just they- they're just so experienced with being drunk they know how to <laughs> act it out perfectly I guess when you see other people's the people's people being drunk yeah <laughs> yeah like, well it's also the fact that I'm sure they've been drunk a decent number of times in their oh, lives yeah, for sure especially you know fucking Denmark where legal age is 16 <laughs> But, um, it's just awesome. I, I love every, well, not every scene, but, like, the scenes where they're, like, goofy drunk, it's fucking great. Mm-hmm. And so he's like, yeah, I need you to drive me home. Nicolaj is like, okay, yeah, sure, sure, no problem. And <laughs> Nicolaj is driving him home, and he's on the phone with his wife, and his wife is, can we talk about his wife? <laughs> yes, please, for the love of God. Not what a, a bitch. Movie. She's... Well, I mean, to be fair. Fair. We haven't seen like the lead up to this, and these are all guys who have kind of like lost themselves. So yeah. it might just be that like she's used to just you know at this point telling him exactly what to do all the time, just because he literally has no input ever. So who knows? But yes, I agree. The way she is acting to him is very bitchy. <laughs> she just talks down to him and like kind of cold shoulders most of what it... he's like. Uh, he's like, hey, I don't remember his wife's name. Do you remember Bruce or Elora? Fuck no. Okay. I don't remember bitches. Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus. Wow. These fucking seas guys and their sexism. I can't believe it. <laughs> but, uh. Yeah, he's just like, he's like, hey, honey, you know, I'm on my, uh, I'm on my way. Uh, I gotta drop off Martin. And she's like, why do you have to drop off Martin? Doesn't he have a car? He's like, oh, it's, it's the most generic excuse fucking ever. His car is at the shop. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like, oh, what why does, does that mean? <laughs> it's like, oh, why does this need to happen? Oh, you know, I was dealing with that thing. Like, oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> the thing, yeah, yeah. Of course, the thing. <laughs> and, you know, as he goes to get off the phone, his wife's like, hey, you know, you need to pick up blah, blah, blah. blah. He's like, okay, yeah, uh, love you. Tell the kids I love them. And he's like, kisses. He's like a little dork. And she just hangs up on him. It's like, okay. <laughs> Okay, whatever. Like, wow. <laughs> Yikes. He's like, oh, honey, I love you. Tell the kids. Lo- oh, okay, bye. I don't like her that much. I'm going to be real. I don't like her that much. She <laughs> can't tell say. I couldn't tell. Like, there's one scene where she's reasonably upset, but, like, most yeah, of the time, I'm fair. just like, eh. I think the problem yeah. is also because you, you only see glimpses into their, like, uh, yeah. Like, three glimpses, I would say, into that sort of home life, really. Well, four, I guess, because of the phone call. But, um, 
No, it's just really interesting because just how she interacts with him and it's just an obvious breakdown in communication of like oh yeah they're getting angry and like upset with each other when something upsetting happens and like neither of them are meeting with their words they're both completely disregarding how the other person feels and just going yeah but this is my problem the other person's like yeah well this is my problem and it's just like guys stop <laughs> yeah and uh there, there's a. <clears throat> I was about to talk about a specific scene, and then I was like, ah, we'll, we'll wait until we get to that. <laughs> but yeah, there's just, uh, yeah, they do a really good job, I think, um, of showing because like the movie's about the main four characters. Like, it's you don't really see the story of other characters other than like in the glimpses those four characters get and how they interact with them, which I think is actually fine. I think it's perfectly, you know, you have four main characters, so already it's like okay, mm -hmm. you don't really need any more. You know, the Avengers or some shit with like 27 fucking stars. Um, <laughs> but they drop by, I want to say Tommy's? They drop by one of their houses, and Tommy and Peter are there, and they're like, what, the, what did you call us for? <laughs> and Nick is just like, Martin, my man, he's a brave, wonderful son. He's just fucking singing his praises, and it's like, and Martin's like, well, you know, I drank Smirnoff in the stall, and they're like, hey! Hey! <laughs> hey, my boy! And I mentioned it earlier in the hunt when we were talking about the hunt, but it's like they do a really good job of like showing, like you really feel like these people are friends in real life. Also, like they just hang out and they just bring it into the movie that they're in. Yeah. And that's when, uh, and that's when the start of the, the study, we'll call it the start of the study. <laughs> they, yeah, they're gonna write an essay about drinking. Yeah. <laughs> As you do. The best kind of essay, really. I mean, we do it every day. <laughs> they're talking about it. They're talking in the kitchen. They're like, hey, so should we really do this? Should we really talk? He's like, you know, drink. He's like, oh, well, come. Peter's like, oh, come on. We're not the first people to, like, drink during the day, surely. And then <laughs> Nikolaj the is like, well, you know what? Let's make a paper. <laughs> and they're just like, oh, yeah, 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 a paper. Yeah. Uh, right. Next official. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do with this paper or what the fucking plan is, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh,. That's when that's when things start to turn around a little bit. Another round, mm -hmm. you might say. Uh, 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 clever wordplay. Thought so. Yeah, I've been talking a lot. I don't mean to like keep anyone else. From oh no, you're fine. If, uh, no, it's all right. I just want to see where you're going. <laughs> I'm just going scene by scene and uh, making yeah. little comments and stuff. Of course. I mean, I figured. I just figured I'm here to chime in occasionally. <laughs> yeah, no, yes, 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 yes. If you ever want to say anything, just uh, go right ahead and speak up. Uh, I mean, what is there to say about that scene? I think it's just kind of funny because it's just, they all collectively go, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's such uh, a funny, it's like, don't worry, it's okay, it's uh, it's research. It's a paper, it's research, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's like people who say, it's, totally well, official. it's like people who say, oh yeah, show me the porn for science, but unironically. <laughs> yeah. It's like th them them saying that it's an experiment is basically just like the teacher equivalent of, no, nah, it was just a prank, bro. <laughs> One of my wise teachers once said, the only difference <laughs> between science and just fucking around is taking notes. <laughs> Ah, there we go. And I was like, genius. <laughs> Wise it's words. Not fucking around if you write it down. Wise words from that teacher. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, but most of everything that's happened at this point is set up. The movie spends a long time setting up, but it's uh more than bearable because all the characters are really likable. Like they do a good mm, job of showing. Really good. None of it feels like it goes on for too long, which is. Yeah, the really scenes silly. go by pretty. Like, there's yeah. been a lot of scenes already. It's just you know one after you the also, other. You also get a lot from a lot of scenes where there's not a lot of like people talking to fill in like relationships or what's going on. A lot of it is handled just by expressions and just like visual cues. Which is really nice. <laughs> yeah, no, there's a lot of uh, physical acting where, like, they don't mm -hmm. say anything. Like, yeah. Martin's, Martin's kids especially, like, they barely say anything in the whole movie, but, like, mm -hmm. you get where they are when they see things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they have the exact, you know, sad expressions that children have. I feel like, yeah. I remember that as well. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's a... Oh, yes. <laughs> this movie's, like, a really balanced... Uh, 
comedy and drama where it's like mm. it, it knows how to make you feel sad but it can just immediately make you f- laughing your ass off yeah <laughs> that's a, a f- <laughs> the next scene is uh <laughs> so they're like oh yeah we're gonna do this uh, blah, 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 blah. and then they all go home and the the next scene starts <laughs> it shows a uh, Nikolaj at his home this is actually the scene i was going to talk about and mm-hmm. Nikolaj is at home it shows him he's like sleeping on the couch which first of all oh he's sleeping on the couch and um <laughs> <laughs> like that's a big house really you gonna sleep on the couch uh, hmm. yes and he's got one of his kids on top of him mm-hmm. and they're both asleep but then you see his fucking shirt starts darkening up mm-hmm. <laughs> his kid peed on him it's like <laughs> ah. <laughs> And he well, wakes they up. also talked about this at the dinner as well. They already like let you know that his kids pee on him. He's like, yeah, all, all the time. He's like, <laughs> I have a beautiful wife and a lovely house near the ocean, and uh, my kids pee on me. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, my huh? kids pee on me, and everyone goes, "Whoa, what?" And he's like, "Yep." You know, parental struggles, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, he gets woken up. He's like, ah, oh, you know, I don't remember his name of his kids. He's like, oh, son, what the hell? His son's like, oh, I'm sorry. He's like, you just, you gotta let me know when you're about to pee. And then his kid yells, I had to pee! <laughs> and uh, that, of course, wakes up the entire house. Dog starts barking. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, God. And then wife comes in, babe in arms, being like, I haven't slept in three years. Because they have three young children. She, yeah, so she's, like, she's like, I slept like 20 minutes last night. He's like, I haven't slept in three years. She's like, well, what the hell? Woke you up? It's piss! It's piss! <laughs> the way he says it he's just like it's piss it's piss, it's piss. <laughs> it's like that perfect Denmarkian accent she's super upset and like the kid's upset but it's interesting too because that whole scene he deals with it really well like as a father oh yeah he's like, like he's not he's not a fucking asshole about it or yeah. anything he's just like look he fucking peed on me yeah but like the way he talks to the kid is really interesting too because it, it's obviously yeah, yeah. set up that he is a very caring loving like part of the household is parenting correctly but then the wife steps in and is all like oh it's okay sweetie blah 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 and like completely undoes all of his you have to tell me when you gotta pee my guy <laughs> you can't yeah. deal with it. and she's just like she's just not even paying attention to the scenario she obviously just wants to go back to bed she's not listening to her husband at all she's just drowned in her own problems and it's just it's a good example of this like communication disconnect that they have because the, the oh, kid's yeah. just like all right cool gonna continue peeing on people <laughs> he's like what the fuck bro and um <laughs> and yeah like uh, they get uh, that that family they go to have breakfast and Nikolaj mm-hmm. goes downstairs to the basement and his wife hollers from him he's like oh hey you know breakfast is ready and he's like okay go ahead and start I'll be up there in a minute and that's when he goes to grab his booze I don't know what he got I think it was like wine or something yeah um, I can remember he has himself a good old swig <laughs> and uh, that's when their day starts and we get this fucking awesome scene which uh, Elora actually caught on to I was like oh shit you know about this and it's when uh, it's when Martin is telling the students oh, yeah. He gives them three examples. He's like, oh, hey, who would you vote for? Person number one has, like... Uh, has polio. Polio, crippled, yeah. Has high blood pressure. Like, often, like, you know, dr- like, all this terrible bad stuff. Drinking like, a lot and taking yeah. pills with that alcohol right before they go to bed. Blah, 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 blah. Second person is this... <laughs> yeah. Second person is this fucking asshole nobody likes. Constantly smoking cigars. Constantly drinking. Uh, you yeah, know, all this so. shit. Take sleeping pills. Take he sleeping was the pills. one who drank a lot and then would take sleeping pills. Overweight, uh, mm-hmm. things like that. And then person three, decorated war hero, colorful. Uh, Respects speaker, women, loves animals, respected, doesn't smoke, occasionally drinks. Artist, <laughs> just this fucking glorious human being. Mm-hmm. And the student's like, oh, obviously I'd vote for person three. And he's like, congratulations, you passed up, who was it? Uh, Roosevelt <laughs> and Churchill. <laughs> Roosevelt Churchill. Hitler, yeah. <laughs> <He's up there. laughs> oh. That's so he, fucking cool. Uh, that was fucking hilarious. And he's like, and the point of this is that the world is not as always as you perceive it. <laughs> and um, I think my, interpreta- my interpretation, you know, for the douchey film snobs is, uh, <laughs> you know, to, to paint up that image of myself. My my guess was that it was uh, about how drinking isn't just, you know, like I said earlier, it's not just bad, and how the movie talk is pretty good about 
not making up as oh alcohol ruined their life. It's like well, it's not alcohol that fucks with them. It's it's their decisions that fuck with them around alcohol. Yeah, it's not. It's 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 their lack of moderation of said alcohol. Yeah. That was my uh, my interpretation of that uh, line. <laughs> are, are we are 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 we pretentious film snobs yet, Mom? Not until we have Mahler on. Then we're film snobs. Yeah. Mahler, come on, sees. Mahler, come on, sees. Be awesome. <laughs> I wonder if EFAP 150 is still going. On. I gotta look at this because EFAP <laughs> 150 was still going on when we started. Are you fucking kidding me? That was yesterday. Yeah, no, they started yesterday afternoon. Uh, let's see. What the fuck? EFAP 150. Okay, no, they've stopped. They stopped. Oh my god, what the fuck? I want to say they had three 12 hour streams, so yeah. Oh. Fucking legend. Oh, it's delightful. Hey, look, we'll have our first 12 hour plus stream once we get that Mass Effect trilogy covered. <clears throat> oh, yeah, that's right. 12 hours? What are you, Rebecca? <laughs> look, we're going. I'm a, it's a, I imagine it's at least going to be because we have three very, very large games to cover, and we're going to do it all at once. Say? I mean, very. I mean, the first one is is relatively not as long as the others. Oh no, it's nowhere near as long, but it's still like, oh, it's fucking great. Mass Effect one's so good. It is. It is. Where the fuck is my heat sink in Mass Effect two? Two, uh, EA. What the fuck happened to it? Yeah, Bioware. What the fuck? What the fuck? Yeah, Laurie. Oh Mass no, Effect. we Look replaced. It. Oh, yeah, we replaced an entire galactic arsenal in just two years with an infinitely worse alternative. Oh, 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 oh. we're so smart. <laughs> There's going to be someone who comments defending that, and I'm going to be like, oh, no. <laughs> no. Sorry, I have no idea what you're talking about. Play Mass Effect. Yeah, I, yeah, there you go. Well, play Mass Effect. I want to. It's got the word ass in it, and I'm... That's a reason to play it. <laughs> Hey, look, Believe okay. me, there is plenty but of ass in this in, in Mass Effect. Look, hey, okay, you know what? Go watch Mass Effect porn and then tell me you don't want to play. <laughs> right, well, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let you know. I yeah, I've I've seen it. <laughs> it comes up. I don't know why. I'm not looking for it. But occasionally, just out of nowhere, I'm like, no, it's that person from Mass Effect again. All right. <laughs> it's the blue lady with Apparently, the huge penis. Yeah, the yeah. aliens are immensely fuckable in that game. That's what I've gathered. Oh yeah, <laughs> they are. The they Elcor are. Oh. And also, people were very upset about some ending shit. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's not uh, yes. Novel. Entire game that. bad because ending is not good. Mm, no, you, no, no. The time will come. The time will come. Oh god, uh, I, I won't get you into that don't just open yet. Up Pandora's box. Don't fucking do it. Oh, 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 I'm gonna open it up eventually, Al. Just will. you wait. We will soon. I think I'll. You I know what? I'll that should some, really be C12 some... because uh, 2012 is when Mass Effect 3 came out. Oh, sick. So then we'll have to find some kind of filler for episode 11. You don't remember what the next plan is? A certain uh, unalive trajectory? <laughs> oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah. Our good boy. Our, our good buddy. Yeah. I can't wait for that one either. That'll be great. <laughs> Silence. We're went. talking about. <laughs> Is this the Twilight Zone? <laughs> it feels probably feels like it. Yeah, yeah, it uh, sure as hell does. <laughs> <laughs> you like Huey Lewis in the news? No, I'm not gonna go down that. So, anyways, it's okay. I don't know what you're talking about now. We get the good it's an American Psycho reference. We get the Hitler history lesson oh. where everyone's like, "Oh yeah, Hitler. I'd vote for that guy." And it's like, "Oh, it's Hitler. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that one." Uh, <laughs> person uh, number I three seems. <laughs> person number three seems pretty cool. It's Hitler. Well, you made him seem pretty cool. What well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Man, um, Hitler's kind of base. Not gonna lie, somebody's gonna take that out of context. <laughs> Louis Belmont, 2021. <laughs> Hitler's pretty base. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm ready to be canceled. Do it. <laughs> Sound bite that. Do it, you. Do it, you fucking cowards. So. Do it, you won't. Um, <laughs> do it, no balls. <laughs> so we jump to Peter, and he gets a, he's uh, the teaching the music class, and you know kids are shit, and he's and he finally he's like you know what no 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 kids we're gonna fucking we're gonna actually like make music happen, 
So he's like, okay, everyone, stand up. First of all, stand up, you know, get the, get the air going through the lungs and all that stuff. Take your deep breaths. He goes over and closes the blinds. And when he does, he fucking takes himself a swig. Wait, are you just in the back? Because all the students have their eyes closed and he's like... <laughs> takes himself a you. big swig. Magical fire water, make me magic. <laughs> Give me some big soup. <laughs> Let me get some soup. It's also really funny because I like how they portray alcohol being like that thing that goes hell yeah in like less than a minute. <laughs> they get that buzz. Like, like you take a shot that's done. Like by the time you're done putting it inside you, you're already at the. the it's, it's, like, it's, it's like it's like swallowing it is like pushing the drunk button. Like bam. Yeah, yeah. I think that suddenly <laughs> makes you go hell yeah. I could do this. It's kind of like it's kind of like how it's the exact same in video games. How like the second you just like take more than like four swigs of beer, you're just immediately fucking stumbling through your fucking yes! house. <laughs> you're like, what is oh yeah. Happening? Oh, you can get drunk in Mass Effect too, by the way. It's fucking awesome. No good. Okay. <laughs> you sure can. You pa you pass out in the bathroom. There's a Turian peeing like right next to you. It's fucking. Your squad's nice. like, dude. Your squad's like, dude. Are you okay? <laughs> Oh my god. But, um, so yeah, he, he like closes the blinds, tells the students to stand up. Um, he tells them to close their eyes and he tells them to hold their hands, which made Alora really uncomfortable. I did. I'm really bad with physical contact. My parents were very, like, huggy or, like, touchy feely. I don't know if it's because they're British or whatever the fuck. It's because they're just weird. British. <laughs> I, have, like, I have, like, the physical, like, the affection intelligence of, like, a six-year-old. I'm like, ew, yucky. Like, it just makes me really uncomfortable. Ew, cooties. Like, I don't know what to do. They're touching me. What if, what if they touch me and they go, ew, gross? Ah! Like, I get very in my head. It's, it's, it's really funny. People always thought it was hilarious to hug me because I just stiffen up and be like, ah, 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 what do I do? <laughs> what is this? Am I being murdered? <laughs> oh my god, you're about to get German yeah. suplexed. Oh god, yeah. It's, I I guess that's what I was expecting. I don't know. <laughs> um, but he finally, he's like, all right, you know, everybody uh, just, you know, he gives like he hasn't pulled their hands. He's like, find a common pulse. And he goes over, plays the note. And they're not incredible, but they're significantly better already. Noticeably better. <laughs> and um, yeah. it's a bit, I don't want to say corny, but it's like, you know, that movie thing where it's like, oh, now we're way better. Right. But mm. it, it, yeah. not a bad. I mean, you know, it, you know, not the most logistical thing ever. But it's not terrible or anything like that. Yeah, um, and it's nice. It's, I mean, it, it, in fairness, like, because like as someone who's been in choir, changing your position. Oh yeah, like, no. depending on like yeah, like changing who you're singing by or even like your position can actually affect how well you sing. Like wh whenever you sing next to somebody you're not normally like next to, it, it can like it can make it feel completely different in a lot of ways. I actually remember um in my in my choir class when I was in high school, the way we did it was um the teacher Sulu, she was wonderful she would have she would be like okay everyone go to where you feel you would be best like go over here if you think you're um soprano bass baritone blah 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 blah. and she would have us like sing around a, some generic whatever and then she'd be like okay so you know you try going over here with the baritones you try going over here with the bass you know switch a few people around and then we would do it and it's like immediately just better um, noticeably, oh, yeah. again, not like we're not like amazing all of a sudden, but it's like yeah, yeah noticeably better. We're we're off to a good start. So yeah, it, it is practical. It seems like one of those movie things where it's like oh, it's suddenly better, but there's actually it actually makes some sense. Yeah, though generally it is better if you're like in your voice group because oh, you yeah, can definitely. like. Yeah, I was a bass. Mm -hmm. I imagine L was a bass in the choir as well. No, I was uh, I was back and forth from uh, baritone to not soprano, but like higher pitch than baritone. Tenor. Tenor. Yes, the tenor. We were. <laughs> you were a fucking tenor. All right then. Uh, vocal range, bro. I mean, yeah. I guess I I guess I normally just hear your normal voice and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, no. Often, when my because so. uh, we only had like a few tenors and uh, Sulu, she was like 
she was like, uh, L, you know, because she called me fucking L back in 2012. She was like, hey, you know, yes. I think you can go over to Terrence. I was like, really? She was like, yeah, yeah, give it a try. And she thought I did all right. It was, you know. You're like, all right, well. I like baritone more. It was that nice in between. Because uh, <clears throat> in elementary school, you got to pick whether you had an instrument for orchestra or you went to choir. And I looked at choir and I was like, nah, not hard enough. <laughs> So I picked violin. The funniest thing is, to this day, I still remember that being like, God, I was a little shit. Like, not did this, really. Did this British shy, person just say like, elementary <laughs> school and not primary school? Yes, well, because I went. I, fuck you. <laughs> I'm America, all right. You betrayed your culture. Ah, jeez. Oh man. Yeah, I still got bullied by Americans for being British. So I, was oh, like, nice. I don't know, man. Yeah, good time. All right, good Look on them. You. <laughs> Look, to be fair, when it comes to school, kids will find any reason to torment oh. you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Having a funny accent was uh, my problem, and that's also why I dropped it as fast as I possibly could. There's still some words that I say weirdly, but I also tend need, to over enunciate. We need diversity on C's. <laughs> you need to be, go be British again. British again. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking dropping the team. Uh, hashtag make Elora British again. Hashtag, <laughs> hashtag speak Harry Potter now. God, whenever anyone hears... <laughs> Jesus Christ. Whenever anyone hears my father, they're always like, oh my god, he's painfully British. And I'm like... <laughs> Does he sound like Freddie Mercury? Uh, I, I don't know. I can't. <laughs> hear me out. I can't actually hear his accent anymore. Not really. Like, I have yeah. to actually thoughtfully think about how different I sound, and then I hate it because I'm like, oh my god, I sound so American. What's with all these flat A's? Uh. <laughs> oh no. Yes. No, no. I used to have to translate. No, bring it, come on, see. <laughs> like, still occasionally this happens when we're ordering food, especially at drive throughs Oh, yeah. Right? Because <laughs> those are already not great. Oh, but dude. it's just really funny. Occasionally I'll have to lean over and like do the order for him because they have no fucking idea. <laughs> dude, I remember growing up in the fucking South and when I'd like go on vacation to like the city, like in New York, for instance, and I'd say, like, I or one of my family members would say, y'all. And they're like, what the fuck? What is y'all? I'm like, what? Really? What is that? He's like, hey, what the fuck? This guy's speaking southernese over here. Why is he saying y'all? Uh, I'm sorry, Elle. I'm going to have to stop you. Y'all is a war crime. I fucking hate that word so much. What the so fuck? Much. I use it, and I am distinctively nowhere close. Look, I have committed <laughs> war crimes, and I can tell you that y'all is not one of them. <laughs> I fucking hate- I hate that word so much. Why? I hate it. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm not a huge fan of Texas accents and, like, or southern accents, and that's, like, the most southern fucking thing you can say. No, Other a than, friend of mine- I'd like some sweet Y'all need tea, to please. come meet my sibling, my sister over here from Alabama. We just got married. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. My friend When's the wedding? Me. It was yesterday. Oh, God. Sorry, what, 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 Laura? In his area, they use the phrase "young to." Young to. And I, I just, I was like, "What? What, what does that is, mean? What is young to?" It, it sounds like, "Do you want to?" <laughs> oh, where, where someone's like, "Young to." Yes. Young to go get some ice cream. Yes. Or, oh, young oh, to. God. Yeah. And I was like. I, that's oh, man. God. I have heard that sparingly. It's fucking weird. Yeah, I was like, that's pretty niche. But interestingly enough, because obviously my family is British, there are certain phrases and sayings that I don't know are British, right? And it's only when someone points it out, which Americans are, I don't know if it's that they're embarrassed because they don't know what the fuck I just said, or like, they just don't want to bother to ask me what the fuck I'm talking about. But like, very rarely does someone go, what the fuck are you saying? So I never know. But how many <laughs> Americans do you know that are willing to be like, oh, I don't know a thing? Like, seriously. I, well, I mean, fair. <laughs> yeah. That's that's not our thing. Admitting we're wrong <laughs> is like, it's, 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 it's like weakness. the most un-American thing you can do. You <laughs> cannot show weakness of any kind. <laughs> yes. So anyways, another round. Uh... Hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, we did get off on a tangent there, didn't we? Jesus Christ! No, we went to choir. Oh, it was fun. And it was fun. Jerks, which you know, is still technically valid to the movie. Um, but the next scene is ah, uh, it's it's one of my favorite parts. Well, like one of my favorite sagas, I guess, of this movie. 
uh, Tommy, he's teaching the, the Little League football. And uh, Specs. So there's this little kid, his name's Spe- They call him Specs because he has glasses. And uh, it's not like a mean spirited thing. They're like, oh, it's Specs. Yeah, yeah. And um, the other kids don't really talk. They're not like mean to him. Like, they- he doesn't get bullied, at least from what we know. And, you know, the other kids don't really talk to him. And so he's like, all right, everyone uh, go have a drink of water. And Spex is standing there, he doesn't have a water bottle. And Tommy's like, hey, what's going on? Spex is like, oh, I don't have, I forgot my water bottle or something to that effect. And hmm. he's like, Tommy's like, well, I can't give you my water. Because, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. This one's special. <laughs> this water will make you play much worse. <laughs> probably. So, so Tommy's like, he pulls over one of the other kids. Uh, uh, Hjalte, I think his name is. Um, it's like HJL, HJL. No, H J A L T E. It's, it's interesting name, and uh, we—it's so interesting. These fucking these Dutch lenders, like they call people like Tommy, and and then Schalte. <laughs> yeah, you got you got shit like Tommy and Martin and Peter, and then there's just fucking Borsten. <laughs> yeah, these fucking Borsten. These fucking Siberian ass names or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> Vikings or whatever. But, um, oh yeah, he, he calls over this other kid. We're getting further and further <laughs> away from the point of Denmark. These people from Antarctica, like, what is going on? <laughs> These people from Antarctica. <laughs> so, uh... he calls over another kid, he's like, hey, you know, give uh, give Specs a sip of your water. And he's like, uh, he's like, why do I have to do that? He's like, look, he's like, don't backsass me, I'm the coach, all right? You have to work as a team, <laughs> and you have to be willing to share. And he's like, okay, whatever. So Specs gets a drink of his water, and, um... I believe, yeah, this is the scene where, uh, Specs, like, he, he comes over to Tommy and he, like, he, like, Tommy puts his arm on his shoulder and it's like, oh, so nice. They've got a very, they've got a very nice relationship that gets better over the course of the movie. Oh, it's, yeah. It's fucking great. It leads to one of the best scenes ever. We'll talk about that when we get there, though. Um, yeah, no, it's just this nice little scene of, uh, establishing him as the coach and, uh, Specs. It was probably my favorite character in this movie, unironically. <laughs> <laughs> he's a good character. He's a, he's a lovely little kid. He's just cool as hell. And um, it's weird, though, because uh, we jump from this to uh, Martin and Anika. Anika, they're having uh, they're like, at the dinner table, and they're talking about like having this canoe trip. And it's cool. It's showing that they're uh, reconnecting a little bit and all that. Like, Martin's talking more because he's more confident and all that. But I'm like, wait a minute. Uh, Nikolaj didn't get a scene with his class. Because he he's like the psychology prof- uh, professor, student, student, fuck, teacher. And, uh, like, we saw the scene with him at home, and he starts to drink uh, before he leaves, but we don't see him at his class, and I don't really, I don't know if we ever see him in his class again. We really don't. We only really, the only time we ever sort of, like, see him with any of his students, actually, Sees I believe, him? is... <sighs> my fucking god <laughs> you know the time we ever really see him with any of his like students or anything is towards the end of the movie when he's helping another kid out and stuff like that um but yeah i i i, I don't believe I we see anything other than that peter when he helps out the one kid who's I got like be. anxiety over tests Right, right. I'm sorry. I, I got, I got, I got their names confused. I apologize. Yeah. Like Nicholas Whoopsie is a pretty, Daisy. he's a pretty predominant character. Like when you see the group and they're discussing things, but you don't really see a lot of him, and you even see a bit of his home life, but you just don't really see a lot of him at school, which is interesting. A weird decision. Yeah. I think it was because of the fact that we're already seeing like so many different like classes and everything. They right. didn't want to like, they, they yeah, they might not have wanted to. uh I guess overwhelm the viewer with so many classes that they had to keep track of. I know at one point, and it might have been around this time, I might be uh, mistaken, but I know at one point we do see him in his class at least once because he's talking about, you know, psychology and all that stuff, and he talks about, um, maybe it was Hemingway. He talks about some person to do with drinking. I don't really remember this. It was a really short scene too, um, but I yeah. just really don't remember. Could have got a little bit more. Like, one extra scene, I think, would have been... Yeah. Acceptable. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, we see uh, Martin and Annika, and they're... Uh, they're having a nice little din-din. They're chatting, and Annika's... She looks away... Like, she does not look him in the eye, like, at all. 
she'll glance at him for a moment and she'll just be like, okay, yeah, yeah. And that kind of persists throughout the movie. Yeah. And, it, mm, yeah. and he was trying to <laughs> me. And Martin's like, hey, we should take a we should take a canoe trip. And she's like, we haven't canoed in eight years. And he's like, that's exactly why we should go. And he's like, well, I mean, okay, I'm, you know, I'll try. And he's like, all right, cool, cool, cool. A canoe trip, you say. More like a canoodling trip. <laughs> oh. It's weird because their kids are there. <laughs> Martin's about to use that paddle for the first time in eight years. We here at Seas have the most highbrow of humor. <laughs> Highbrows. Highbrows, yeah. You could even say our humor is at the high top. <laughs> mm. Fuck that channel. We haven't even covered him yet. We haven't, but people who are watching probably know who he is. Oh, if yeah. not, I'm going to look like an idiot, but, you know, that's besides the point. That's fine. No, 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 no. See, before you said you were going to look like an idiot, if you hadn't said anything, you just seemed mysterious. <laughs> <laughs> now you've ruined it, so. Well, <laughs> well uh, good job, good job. Just like my parents' marriage. Oh, my God. <laughs> That was a joke. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I'm all for states. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Well. <laughs> anyway, back to more life affirming stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, earlier it was like back to the depression. Now it's like back to the life affirming stuff. Yeah. Um, oh, the next scene is when Tommy's alcohol stash is found by one of the other teachers. And the teacher's like, oh, yeah, I found this bottle of like, you know, bourbon or whatever down here. And Tommy's like, <laughs> Tommy's like, oh, shit. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> could... yeah, gee, weird. <laughs> Funny. Uh -huh. it's, who could have brought down all of that alcohol? And the teacher's like, it gets crazier. There's a bottle over here, too. And over here, and over here, and over here. Oh my god. And he goes, there's one wrapped up in this newspaper. And <laughs> there's this fucking moment. Tommy, he's like, oh my god, let me see that. He grabs the newspaper. He's like, this is a newspaper. <laughs> yeah, he's like, <laughs> it's a newspaper. He's like, oh my god, it is. <laughs> Fascinating. Oh, uh, did you, uh, did you tell the principal about this? And he's like, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> he's like, good, good. <laughs> he's like, oh, okay, now I can prep my alibi. I mean, uh, prepare to meet people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, you know, uh, props to Tommy for putting it in a place where students could not get it. Good for you, good sir. Yeah. You know, and most teachers couldn't either, except for that one, sir. Yeah. That one dastardly teacher. That one dastardly well, that inconvenience. Wasn't the, that wasn't a teacher, was it? That was one of the, um... Oh, teachers. yeah, it was a janitor. Oh, yeah, yeah no, it was a custodian, that's right. It was, yeah, ground staff. That's right. He was just that. He was just in there, obviously, just like tidying it or whatever. And then he was like, "What the fuck is this? Hold up! <laughs> Someone must have forgot to lock it." You're like, "What?" Well, because first he says, "There are very few teachers who have keys to this," and Tommy's like, visibly sweats. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, "Yeah, they must have just forgotten to lock it or something." He's like, like, "Oh my god, yeah." It's like Ooh, that Keen Peel sketch. Definitely that. It's like that Keen yeah. Peel sketch where he's trying to lie to his wife and he starts sort of sweating more and yeah, more. Yeah, just shit profusely. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that one little bit kills me. He's like, it was even hidden in this newspaper. Oh, let me see. Oh my god, it is. <laughs> it is a newspaper. <laughs> yes, the floor over there is made of floor. Yes. <laughs> okay. Oh man, he's so fucking good at comedy, uh, Thomas Thomas Bill Larson. He's awesome. But um, and the next scene, that's when uh, Nicolaj gets everyone together. He's like, okay, so you know everyone's doing better so far. Martin's like, oh man, this is the best I've ever been in my fucking life. It's yeah, like, it's okay, you know what? Best I've fallen in years. <laughs> and Martin's like, I think it's Martin who pitches it. Nicolaj is the one who like pushes it. He's like, we should drink a little bit more. And he's like, oh. And then Peter's like, well, hey, remember that fucking. Uh, Demarkshan piano player who was like, "Hey, I drink before I play, and I'm, the line between sober and uh, and wasted when he plays his music, and it's so brilliant." And that's when they're like, "All right, we're gonna drink some more." No, it's even better than that because then they go, "Let's listen to that." So they sit there like, yeah, music, like imagining how great it's gonna be if they get a little it's more like, drunk. It's like, <laughs> it's like okay, it's like what. <laughs> He's he's like, well, yeah, that piano player. Oh yeah, I should play it just to show, to really show you, you know. 
It's like, okay. I mean, out of all the scenes in the movie, I feel like that one was kind of the most, like, non sequitur. It's, like, <laughs> it's, like, it's like when you have, you have that one bunch? friend. It's like when you have that one friend, like, all of you are having a conversation, and someone just, like, makes a reference to one song, and the friend's like, oh my god, we've got to listen to that. And it's like, well, we're having a conversation. <laughs> it's like, all right, thank you, I guess. Or like, when you're, or, like, when you're hanging out with your friends, and they insist upon playing music, and it's like, bro, it's fine. I'm just, like, vibing. No, I gotta play music. Okay, yeah. but why? Music! Music! <laughs> it's like, you don't need to play music constantly. We're all fine vibing with what we're doing. I need to play you the music of this drunk piano player so that you know drinking more is better. It's, like, well. it's I mean, the weird thing is, though, it, even though it's kind of a non sequitur, it's still, like, Fits. somehow super necessary. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. It's like, in a way, I mean, <laughs> to be at risk of over-interpreting something, but it does, like, anything that is in any sort of, like, movie or whatever, it's there for a reason. And that part's interesting because it's sort of, it's not really, like, self-reflection, but it's sort of, like, that you see idea the cogs turning. of... Yeah, that idea of the music playing in your head that encourages you to do something more because well the first thing was good so <laughs> yeah it, it's a good way Shouldn't of showing more of it be better yeah <laughs> it's a good way of showing the care like because it shows shots of all of them like as the music's playing <laughs> and you know you kind of get the feeling of what they might be thinking like you see martin and he's like oh you know the canoe trip and uh how yeah. he might improve as a teacher and things like that mm -hmm. and yeah. you know you're related back to all the stuff you've seen them dealing with uh, Nicolaj dealing with the fucking kid peeing on him. Yeah, I'd want to get wasted too, not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, it, sh it cuts to uh, the next day, like Martin's in his like little home office or something, and he's just, tr he is pouring them back. He's drinking one, he's drinking another, and you see, because like, in this movie on screen, they'll show the blood alcohol uh, percentage of each character like whenever they start drinking in some scenes not all scenes but in some scenes where they like want you to know where they are and uh 0.05 was what they were originally going for so you see the number go up a little bit like slowly to 0 0.05 and then it starts just going up 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 to like 0. 0.12 <laughs> and you're like oh my god it's dude. almost comedic in a way yeah yeah no it's this movie's really good with this comedy there's a couple scenes that are just fucking hilarious um, and then fucking Nick, Jesus Christ, Nikolaj is snorting alcohol. What the fuck is this man thinking? <laughs> yes! I remember that. Oh, it was funny too because then he like, because he dripped some on the underside of a mug. So you know, <laughs> you know he really thought that out. He was like, well, obviously I need somewhere to pool it to snort it. So if I slip my mug up and you're like, oh my God. Because well, he was the one who was talking about, I bet if you snorted alcohol, it would get in you faster. And everyone kind of looked at him like, <laughs> no, yeah, they just, just like disregard it, but then he does, and of course immediately fucking regrets it. <laughs> um Yo, if you snort your alcohol, you're fucking insane. I just want you to know that. Yeah, uh everyone, so we here at Seas, we love our drinking, but don't snort Smirnoff. <laughs> Bad call. Okay. Also don't like don't don't like smoke your alcohol either. That's also weird. <laughs> it's a little weird. Nicolaj, Actually, he's definitely no, more he's... importantly, don't don't inject it. Oh my god. Yeah, Nicolaj is definitely he's definitely the uh experimental one of the crew will say. Like he's not the you know, like Tommy's the heavy drinker. Nicolaj is the experimental one. He's like, what if I shoved alcohol in my toenails or some shit? Like that's he's <laughs> he's that guy. What what if I what if I gave myself an alcohol enema? Oh no. Uh... <laughs> I've heard of people doing that, and it's like, why the oh, fuck? Oh, it you works. Well, because it's oh, a monster. Coffee oh, animals no. are also very popular. Jesus but anyway. fucking Christ! Oh my god. Uh, uh, oh, oh yeah, no. no please it, God. Is it is it Nicolaj that mixes coffee with alcohol? No, wait, no, no, no. Never mind. There's a scene later where Martin's like, "Oh, you want coffee? Alcohol? Both?" Never mind. Yeah, no. We were talking about how gross it would be to mix wine and coffee. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't like coffee. I'm gonna anyway, try so that just, now. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't like coffee. Like I run mixing on them, raw like, sexual energy. Are we talking about like mixing them together in like a single cup? Is or either about preferable? That would. That that would. Be I've, I will. Which sipping one is less? Sipping coffee wouldn't be that bad, to be honest. 
and yes, L, one is more preferable. I want to know how to properly mix my coffee and wine. Thank you for whatever I inevitably try out of morbid curiosity. Here's, I mean, here's my know. favorite thing, is you can imagine the flavor of one thing and then imagine the flavor of the other thing and tell, by virtue of that, whether or not it's going to be garbage. You don't actually have to try it. I won. Oh, what a waste of wine and coffee. <laughs> I'm a child. I only know through sheer That's taste just... alone. No. That, to me, sounds like mixing, like, chocolate and broccoli. I'm like, no thank you. Ooh, thank you for the idea. Ew. That was a joke. I'm not actually going to do yeah. that. Yo, okay, but hear me out. Bread, butter, potato chips. I put I put some potato chips on, like, sandwiches every now and then. Like, Just just do it. It's called a buddy sandwich. A buddy sandwich. And it's great. A chip butty. I mean, okay. That's delicious. Um, also, then... lettuce. Lettuce butter sandwich. But then we get my favorite scene in the movie. Uh, oh wait, hold on. There's there's one more thing before that. So uh, Martin goes to teach, and he asks. This is when he's like asking the kids how much they drink. He's like, uh, "Oh hey, you in the back?" He's like, "You're the party one. You know, how much do you drink?" This kid's like, "Yeah, I drink like 14 to 15 units uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and on Wednesdays I and Sundays I drink like five units." Like fucking Jesus! Oh my god. What home life do you have, dude? Holy shit! You, you, man, you fucking Denny's across the pond, or, or you do your built <laughs> different, Denny's. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes, open twenty four hours a day. That feels like the racial slur for Denmarkians. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, those fucking those Denny's are my over Denmark. There. <laughs> <laughs> we have like one Not viewer from Denmark, princess. and they're like, "Dude, what the fuck?" <laughs> <laughs> You've alienated them. <laughs> no, Denmark, I love. Uh, I'll pay you five Denmarks to come back. I swear. Denmarks. <laughs> I'll pay you. F I'll pay you ten doubloons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> five Denmarks <laughs> and ten doubloons. How can you pass up such an opportunity? That's like, that's like, fifteen Danish. <laughs> that's like a fortnight of currency, man. Hi, Evelyn. How are you, sweetheart? Meow. Did you just wake up from a nice little nap? Meow. Yes, you did, you sweet little girl. Oh, my God. Hot, I'd ship it. <laughs> oh, my God. No. <laughs> ah, loose elf fan fiction. When am I no. writing it? <laughs> ah. <laughs> you know Don't what? encourage them. Bet. <laughs> <laughs> No, I actually haven't even thought about the potential of like if we get popular enough and we start like potentially like getting people making fan art of us. Oh no! I I shudder to think. <laughs> of the no, keep it. No, no, no. Keep it like Mauler. It, keep it like Mauler and Rags, where like he's a little cowboy and I'm just giving him a little head pat. He's like, oh. No. Wholesome. No, no, keep it wholesome. Because it, no, because I'm a cowboy. There is no such thing as wholesome fan uh. art. <laughs> it's only it's only horny. Um, but yeah, now we get to my favorite scene in the movie, Specs soccer game. Oh man, this scene's fucking awesome. So, uh, it, it shows Tommy, he's at the, the football team. That's soccer for those Americans who don't understand I'm actually talking about you know, soccer. But, uh, they're playing football and, you know, it's, it's just kind of showing generic shots of like what you would expect from like a sports game in a movie. You know, they're running around, shows Tommy telling the students like hey you know you go over there you go there blah 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 and uh martin peter and nicolaj are all over on the side and they're like cheering for the team and uh then tommy's like hey pass it to specs and he passes it to specs and he gets the fucking goal and they're like yeah <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's even better than that because it's not even that the specs is just standing by the goal it's that they pass it to specs and specs pulls out some fucking yeah he's got moves bullshit like kid kid goes hard yeah they fucking <laughs> they jump and uh all the kids run over to specs and they're all hugging him it's like oh and then uh tommy the comes over like, to him Yay, and hugs him. our kids start suck as bad i mean i'm proud of you <laughs> so awesome like <laughs> Uh, such a wonderful and like wholesome scene. I don't like many children in movies and stuff. Most of them are fucking mm. annoying assholes. 
But I just don't like children in general. Just, yeah, oh well, I don't like kids in movies just because the the industry is very difficult, even on adults. And oh, I'm yeah. just I'm always worried. <laughs> I'm oh, yeah. always yeah. worried. <laughs> and then there's the fact, and then there's the fact that uh, like a lot of movies tend to use kids as like props. Yeah. For like emotional yeah. beats, but it's also hard for kids to you know within certain age groups to act. <laughs> Acting yeah. is hard, oh, yeah. especially as a kid. You you don't know what the fuck you're doing. Kids are good liars, but when it comes to acting, eh, they kind of struggle. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's this awesome scene, and you know, Tommy goes over and hugs him, and I'm just like, oh, so nice. Yeah. Very nice. Oh, it's God. such a good scene. I love it. And then immediately, Tommy is Tommy is such a good character, and I wish nothing but the best for him. Yeah. And uh, the immediate scene that follows is uh, it's like after the game, everyone's left except for. Uh, our boys, the four bo- the boys, and they're like, they're they're drunk and they're playing their own little football game. And <laughs> he's like, go for the sliding kick. He's like, I don't. Fucking oh my god, get the it. sliding kick is fucking <laughs> hilarious. Because they're not even good, but everyone becomes fearful of them. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna get your ankles. <laughs> I want to say that like I want to say Tommy goes for a kick on the ball and it, like bounces against the uh, the rim of the net. And mm-hmm. fucking Nikolaj is like putting two alcohol bottles on top of it. He's like, yeah. ah, zoo, zoo. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like the best kind of drinking scenes where it's just homies being homies. Yeah, you don't see a lot of that in movies, honestly. You really don't, honestly. It's more of a slice of life movie in a way. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's a. I'd say that's pretty much a lot of Vinterberg's work, from what I know of his work. Because these are the only really two movies of his I've actually seen. I've just heard about a couple others. Nice, 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 nice. Yeah. Well, I, I, I wish Vinterberg a lot of success in the industry. Lord knows he's doing a good fucking job so far. We will talk about him uh, a fair bit after we're done talking about the movie. Because uh, there's, there's one last little thing we'll cover after that. Um... I have to step away for a moment. I just gotta. No! Oh my god! <laughs> the Look. end is nigh. Hey, write write fanfic of Luce and Alora. That that'll sell. Oh, oh no! The <laughs> large muscular woman and the small <laughs> cat boy. Women in fan fiction? No, 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 no. That's not how ships work. <laughs> is there is there a woman in any fan fiction that's not an object or a complete and total dominatrix? Like honestly, I don't. I, I don't I, think I've read enough to weigh in on that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I read much fan fiction either. Actually. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I, I, I was just, I was just gonna that. I'll leave you with this. Mm-hmm. The next scene is when Peter consoles Sebastian, who is the he's a kid who has test anxiety, like really oh, yeah. bad test anxiety, and it's one of my oh, favorite parts yes. of the movie actually. Me, but a guy. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, oh, yes. But yeah, go it's ahead also a and very... talk a bit about that. I'll be right back. Uh, it's also a very, a very wonderful scene, and it gives a. It's okay. I got this. Okay, it's also cool. a very wonderful scene. <laughs> it manages to give, it manages to sort of ground Peter as well, mm-hmm. because you know, the entire point of the movie, or a lot of the movie, is them helping their students and stuff like that. And to this point i don't think we've seen peter really uh help uh anybody i can't oh, exactly yeah. remember. No. but um yeah it, it's just a very wholesome scene as well where they're both breaking the rules but it's still for a good cause nonetheless because it's you know they're not he's not fucking getting slammed or anything he's just given enough to you know help his anxiety a little bit and stuff like that so it's not necessarily harmful which is something hmm. that the film has been trying to say about alcohol from the beginning. You know, as long as it's in moderation, it, it, it's not exactly <laughs> like some devilish thing. It's so funny because initially, like, the teacher goes into the bathroom, right? Well, I, I don't even know if it's actually a bathroom. It just looks like sinks with, like, mirrors. And the kid's like, yeah. in the classroom? Yeah, he just says Vaguely hello. bathroom-like. Kid tries to walk past, but, like, you know, in that way where you go, oh, boy, something's wrong, like, just by the body language. And so he stops, and he's, like, obviously being, like, you know, tearing up, and he's really upset. Yeah. And she's like, you okay? And, like, kid doesn't really want to talk about it. Teacher assumes it's about, like, heartbreak. 
<laughs> yeah. And then the kid's like, it's not that. And he's like, oh, okay. So, so like, what's what's going on? And he's like, I just, I've I been don't here test. before. Yeah, it's like, I've been here before. I've failed before and I'm doing it again. And I can feel it's going to happen again. <laughs> and he's just like, he's freaking out because he wants to go to metal sc- medical school. And in order to start that, he needs at least a C. And he's like, I'm in danger of failing the class. I don't think yeah. I don't think I'm gonna get the C. I think I think I'm boned kind of thing. And the teacher just kind of sits there and goes, "Have you tried drinking before a test?" <laughs> and the kid's like, Whoa. <laughs> and he's like, "No, no, 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 no hear me out. <laughs> it's not weird. I promise." He's like, "Like I'm like I'm not I'm not telling you to like do shots. I'm like you know just like." just like a couple sips before the test because you know drinking yeah. a little alcohol will relax you and if you find you have to test anxiety bad enough that you literally can't recall any of the information yeah i mean you might want to give it a try so the kid's yeah. like oh okay i i, I guess and so then wanders off and the teacher's sitting there like oh i hope that doesn't get me in trouble <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sure this is fine. But, uh, yeah. No, that was a really good scene. I liked it's it, very, too. Yeah, it's a very wholesome scene. They give they give a lot of wholesome scenes to pretty much all of the characters in the movie. And it's, it's very touching yeah. to watch. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I believe that about... That's it. I believe that about covers that scene. Right. L- what Wait, isn't, isn't isn't this the part where we start uh, shit talking him? Oh, uh, all right. And then yeah. he'll so like, he'll only encounter it once he's editing. Yeah. Uh, oh oh so, no! Like, Wait, quick, do it quick! I think I heard him. Oh, <laughs> uh, what a fucking uh, little it's bitch! God, L, so stinky. stupid. Man, stinky naming dude. yourself after a letter. What a fucking what a fucking <laughs> little what a fucking little pussy boy. My God, like. <laughs> Oh, look at me. I'm L. I got a letter. I'm so cool. Oh, geez. Nobody can write my name in the death note, guys. Oh. <laughs> Brilliant. Fantastic. No, but I mean, the movie so far up to this point has been... Like, it's been very interesting. Also, I have to say, every time they, like, did any sort of drinking, all I could think about was, no, 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 Just waiting for something horrible to happen. Oh, God, yes. I was very tense, I have to say, because, I mean, especially because they keep on bringing up, like, uh, the principal was, was like, ah, so we've heard that students may be drinking some, like, alcohol was found in the gym and stuff like that. You're just sitting there like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh god, we're almost we've almost been boned. Yeah, it's uh it's pretty nerve-wracking. It's just like yeah. especially because the other thing is that you can see immediately that the pattern is that they are going to continue trying more. <laughs> so yeah. in the back of the head, you in the back of your head you're just going, no, 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 <laughs> don't, don't do it. <laughs> no, it's not worth it. This way madness lies. This way. Uh, oh, yeah. God. It's just like, okay, all right. Well, because uh, mm, the other thing is that what they're talking about is the sweet spot. Yeah. <laughs> Which is notoriously between... difficult to try and keep, like, a hold of or find reliably without yeah. doing it. So... Mm. Yeah, don't do that. It's yeah, don't. Dragon. It is. It is. And it's a very dangerous thing to do. Don't fucking do it, kids. It's bad. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's bad. I don't know what else there was. It's uh, still yeah. hot. It yeah, Mickelson is still hot. hot. Uh, he, yeah, so at I, some point, it becomes even hotter, which I didn't know yes. was possible, but it, yep. Especially when <laughs> he, like, slicks back his hair and cleans up real nicely. <laughs> I must say, I'm biased. <laughs> yes. I do for like hair slicked know, back on, guys. <laughs> for, any, for anybody who doesn't know, Laura's favorite Devil May Cry character is, in fact, uh, Virgil. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Uh, not, a, not a bad choice. Very, very hot man. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. He's very tall. <laughs> he's, yes, he's yes, very tall. Very, he is. Yes, I mean, fact, he and Dante are very tall, but he's very tall. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he gets even taller when he goes into Devil Trigger. Yeah, we yeah. discovered the other day that uh, because of his tallness, he he, I could actually use him as a bed. <laughs> oh, <laughs> because oh, I am smallness. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think it was like there would be like God. one foot, like five inches of like wiggle room or something ridiculous. It was oh crazy. my God! I was like, that's like bed proportions. I could definitely. <laughs> It's a really weird train of thought, to be oh, honest. Yeah, like, you saw huh. say. <laughs> this just in. Elora likes her beds masculine and katana wielding. <laughs> Seems like it would be a very uncomfortable bed. I'm, I'm fairly certain Virgil's just made of cactus. <laughs> Probably. Have you seen his fucking hair? That shit looks prickly as fuck. <laughs> He's random people. <laughs> it somehow looks extremely soft and extremely prickly at the same time. Done. What is this? <laughs> There's some crazy shit right there. It's like it's like it's soft when he's in neutral, but as soon as anybody gets near it, it just fucking spikes out like a porcupine. <laughs> <laughs> that would be hilarious. <laughs> There's any time he's upset. <laughs> He's not so great on the, you know, showing emotions part. So that would be really <laughs> funny if he just had a really stupid tell. <laughs> just yeah. any intense emotion is just like pricky. Pricky. Are you okay? Are you hungry? Are you mad? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God sakes. Uh, so yeah, L is a bit of a an idiot poop face. Wow, um, his... also, it's way too hot. I hope you can't hear that fan. Can you? Yeah, I, yes, I can. I'm sorry. You're, no! you're gonna have... <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna have to turn it off. Sorry. My fan. <laughs> uh, yeah, right, let's yeah, so, move into um... the other room and yell at my microphone. <laughs> uh, anyway, so yeah, uh, L, uh, L's control scheme in DMC5 is uh, hot doggers. Mine is infinitely yeah. better, especially since, especially since my jump for Virgil is a uh, right trigger or R2. Um, a Chad is... move right there. I like how this always uh, comes back to DMC5. Like, it doesn't matter yeah. what it is. In fairness, in it's fairness, like DMC5. Not your magnet. <laughs> in fairness, DMC5 is a pretty big part of both of our lives right now, especially since Al is currently doing a fucking massive review of it. That's fair. But Which, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he is getting very close to uh. the summit of his review. So, uh, oh. Up, oh, no, uh, no, L. No. If you don't have a uh, devil trigger for Nero on square, then you fucking suck at the game. I'm sorry, kid. Also, put a seat on circle. You fucking idiot. Jeez, what a fucking crock. Oh my god. Uh, your control scheme for Nero is uh about as bad as uh Mayo's videos. Uh, these fucking C's uh, guys always talking about DMC five hey. on their videos. Hey. About Hey, what's up, buddy? How what's you up? doing? Oh, well, you know, I'm good. Got some clothes oh, and laundry, you know. You came back at, like, the right time. Oh, sure do tell. I'm do like tell. turn the AC up, because I'm about to die. I'm dying right now. Oh, no, I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to let you find out whenever you're fucking looking through the video. What? Oh, no, it's the fan fiction. No. It's already begun. Yes. No. Dread it. Run from it. What the fuck did you just shove into my ear hole? That's my rendition of Burn My Dread. Uh huh. Yeah. I like how you say uh huh as if there's more. It's like, no, that's that's the end of the sentence. That's it. No, it's... <laughs> I, I would have preferred. My dick get burned. You're in, well, you're into that, so that doesn't really mean much. What is, Ooh, what is this? And if you would like to, you know, assume that I am without any proof, then good for you. Doesn't make you right. Well, we've talked enough about Luce's barbed penis on this show, okay? I've, enough's oh, enough. Oh, God. 
I, th- I'll, I think we've only actually talked about it like three times. Only three times out of our ten episodes. Good job. <laughs> it's a third of our past episodes it's, up to this point. It's, it's not enough. Not enough. Well, no. It's a whole, it's a whole third of our catalog. 911, I'd like to report a crime. I told you I've committed war crimes and I will not stop. <laughs> Apparently so. Good God. Uh, so anyways, we were talking about... I left you all with the Peter talking to Sebastian, right? Yes, and we were able to talk about that scene until the very moment upon which you came back. Yes, definitely. Mm-hmm. I sense... Dece- <laughs> I sense deception. Wow, look at this funny meme I am definitely laughing at. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Doge, what will your next shenanigan be? <laughs> Do go on. Yes. But, um... <laughs> Yeah, no, Peter talks to a kid named Sebastian. Kid's got... At first, I'm going to tell him a little bit just because, you know, I like... I don't want to talk about it too. Kid's freaking out, and Peter's like, hey, what's going on? And Sebastian's freaking out. He doesn't really say much. And Peter's like, ah, girl troubles. You know, I had girl troubles when I was a kid. He's like, no, dude, I'm freaking out. I'm a fucking test because I've already been held back a year. And he's like, oh, shit. He's like, dude, he's like, wait, your exams are, like, several months from now. He's like, I know. And it's like, oh, shit. I feel that so much. Everyone, I don't think there's a human being that can't relate to that in some way. It's true. Oh yeah, test anxiety sucks. Like, especially when a single test can determine whether or not you go to the next grade, even if you like do perfect for the entire year. Oh yes. On that note, I have a very fun story. Oh. You know how in elementary school you have to learn your times tables. In primary school. <laughs> Daddy's talking. Sit down, child. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, you're supposed to learn your times tables, right? And so the whole idea is, is that like every like set of times tables you learned, there was a test for it. And when you pass the test, you got like a little cutout of like an ice cream scoop that you put in your little like paper dish that was pinned to the wall, and that would show how many scoops you would get at the end of the year. I didn't get any ice cream. Oh. Everyone else had ice cream. It was the worst. That is a big fat F for my homie so Alora. Oh, yeah, F in the chat, please, oh, for the love so of God. I, I need you. I need you. Oh, the entire school got ice cream. I was the only kid that was just sitting there, like, yeah, yeah, yep. I, I'm terrible. Oof. I'm worse. This is it. Oh God. Yeah, it turns out I had really bad ADHD, and I don't know if you know, but um, <clears throat> mathematics are. Not good with ADHD. <laughs> Turns out you, you need to say. pay attention when you're doing, oh, I don't know, anything with numbers. Yeah, so I just, ooh, yikes. <laughs> F. Pretty terrible. I think I... the teachers felt bad once they realized. I just kind of slipped through the cracks, basically, and they were like, oh, it's probably kind of terrible that there's one kid the entire school that doesn't get ice cream. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, they still didn't give me any, but like you could see on their faces that they were like, oh, yikes. Felt- they so bad, but they didn't do anything about it. They didn't do anything. They just scarred me for life. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible. They should be ashamed of themselves. I remember when I was in college, and I only went to college for a few semesters, but when I went, I took, because I, so for my English major, I had to take, I had to learn a foreign language, naturally. So, you know, oh. I, need, I need to know a foreign <laughs> language to write things, as, as you know. But, to um, write English things. Yeah. But I was like, well, I want to learn something I actually, you know, want to learn. And the two options that I was really going over was, uh, it was Japanese and I want to say Spanish because I'd already taken some Spanish in high school and I knew some basics. Fucking a weeb. Uh, yeah, fucking Spaniards, am I right? So anyways, I ended up picking uh, Japanese because I'm not a Spaniard. And it was okay at first, but it, dude, that course was fucking hard. And I was so embarrassed because... Uh, basically the tests were conversations and the professor would it would just you know go down the rows of the of the desks you know, one person be like oh hey you know in Japanese it'd be like how are you uh, tell me about your day blah 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 and goodbye and such go on to the next person try to have the same conversation but you can't directly copy off the person next to you you have to say oh, stuff on your own god yeah <laughs> and so they get to me and I'm just 
I was at a bad point in my life and I was having a hard time studying and focusing on anything and I just mm. I bombed it so hard and I was like the only one who bombed it and I was just like oh, oh yeah. god oh. yeah it yeah, wasn't great bad. <laughs> that shit's it's real the worst. but um the scene that follows good old uh, the scene with Sebastian is the canoe trip yay family's on a canoe yay sex <laughs> well Hold on a second. You can't. You gotta. You, gotta, you need foreplay first. All right. So we're gonna go over what happens first. You God. see the family. They're having a good old time. Uh, I want to say Martin's with one of his sons, and uh, yeah. Annika's with the other. The boys are split. And they're, and they're like they're competing ra- a la American Family Road Trip style. Yeah, they're like racing through the water to see who can get to the camp spot first, and then they go to build their tents. And fucking Martin, this absolute specimen. He's building his tent with his son, <laughs> and his son messes something up, and the tent falls, and he's like, I need a better partner. <laughs> oh my and god. It <laughs> <laughs> like, what a specimen this this dude is. And um, then they're playing 20 questions, and one of his sons is, like, just asking random ask. He's not narrowing anything down. He's just like, oh, is it a fucking, you know, a, pe- a, a pelican or whatever? It's like, no. Oh, is it a flamingo? No. Oh, is it an alligator? Like, I don't know. He doesn't actually say these things, but yeah, he's just asking, like, random questions. Mm. And Martin's like, oh, we're gonna be here all night. <laughs> it's great. And uh, then we cut to fucking. Yes, we're finally yeah. here. Yeah, <laughs> which was just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> it's funny, because you prepped me for it, and I was like, oh, God, ah, gee, <laughs> it just, it happens so fast. You, you, you sure prepared. said you sure said we need foreplay first and then was like all right that's enough foreplay time to jump cut the fucking (laughs) (laughs) but yeah so yeah as Mads Mikkelsen does in his movies he's just right he's piping this girl down and (laughs) it's this really is (laughs) that's the worst part is you're like it is it is at first at first it like suddenly appears on screen and like there's those like like one Mississippi of like what's going on then you go oh <laughs> your brain finally reads the scene you're like oh my god it is it is some passionate fucking <laughs> oh it's the first time oh, they god. fucked in who even knows how long and uh mm. you know they finish doing the thing and annika starts crying he's like oh shit are you <laughs> like, like, damn did i know i'm mads mickelson but i didn't hurt you that much did i <laughs> you okay <laughs> oh no i know i'm mads mickelson but jeez i'm not that good at sex uh mm-hmm. i i need test results uh to, to to deduce a true answer but anyways he's like hey why, he's like why are you crying you know what's going on and she's like she's just like i've missed this and it's like oh it's like actually yeah. a like you know, we you know joking about sex scenes and all, but it's like it's actually a nice, well not nice, mm. but you know it's like <laughs> it's a nice. It's just a pri- yeah, it's no, a surprisingly it's just... like wholesome, wholesome scene at the very end of it. Yeah. I don't even know if it's I don't even know if it's actually wholesome because like hmm. you know there's that underlying like they've been really miserable up to this point hmm. to an extent at least uh, yeah. holding it inside, and you know hmm. you, you definitely feel for them, and it's uh. Thomas Vinterberg does, he knows how to do sex scenes, I think. <laughs> I wouldn't know, it was just railing. <laughs> <laughs> railing and then a heartfelt conversation, so I, t- I would were... say by that point, the sex scene is over. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, you were too busy thinking about Mads Mikkelsen, but you know. I was not, actually. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Hold up. Hold up. <laughs> Don't put tick in my mouth, I mean Jesus. Um, oh dear. Yeah, yes, no. It, go on quickly. I'm leaving. Just... <laughs> um. Then we get. This is the point where it's like, okay, things are getting kind of bad because then they get together, and they've got like this beach house. I guess I think it belongs to uh, Nikolaj because he's like wealthy, and I think it does. Yeah. Yeah, because like uh, his wife shows up. Doesn't. Yeah, don't his kids and his wife like go somewhere and like Nikolaj essentially just has the house to himself yeah, yeah that's right it's actually his house and he's got to himself because they're going to visit family I want to say I believe so I believe they're going to be visiting his wife's family which I mean yeah. ugh. god only knows um, this is where they decide alright we are going to and they've isolated themselves for this reason they're like we are gonna get 
fucked up. <laughs> we are going to blast our craniums out through our assholes. It is going to be insane drinking. They get this fucking, like, like moonshine, or not moonshine, absinthe, uh, it's... bourbon, mm. vodka, concu- like this fucking green goblin ass science experiment of alcohol. Absolute concoction of a thing. This is like Jimmy Neutron if he were an alcoholic. Like, this shit is incredible. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's he just takes, pure alcohol. He takes a fucking orange slice and like rubs around it so that it f- fucking chemicals or whatever as it enters your mouth hole. <laughs> then he puts like this ice oh. b- fucking whatever in it. This thing, like, this is like incredible to watch. <laughs> it's like you really just want to blow your brains out oh with alcohol. God, it just it made me like my stomach clenched <laughs> because I was just like. <laughs> I want to try there have one been day. <laughs> very few times in my life where I have drunk just like your ass alcohol not cut with anything right. and those have not been good times <laughs> like I've always done that being like oh I regret that oh oh that was incredibly unpleasant ah now I remember why mixers are a thing oh yeah. god <laughs> yeah their mixers <laughs> was more alcohol basically. yeah if you're if your mixer is more <laughs> alcohol that's not a mixer that's more alcohol <laughs> <laughs> Um, and Martin at this point, because he wasn't drunk during the canoe trip, it was just, you know, and it was a really great time for the most part. So he's like, at first he's like, well, I don't really want to do this. And they're like, well, look, and then, you know, his friends aren't dicks about it. They're like, oh, okay. You know, I understand. Have a good one. And then as he gets to the door, he's like, you know what? Nah, I want to stay and drink. So he goes over and she's, yeah, Christ. he really thinks about it for a while. He says no, like more than once, but like, you know, he looking at it, he kind of yeah. watches it. He's kind of hesitating with the leaving, and then yeah, just as he hits the door, yeah. he goes, "Yeah, fuck it." <laughs> and they're like, "Almost like an work? addict." Ha <laughs> ha, <laughs> <laughs> dearie dear. And he, you know, he just he's like, "All right, fine," and he goes over and he starts drinking. And at first, you're like, "Okay, well, they're drinking this." They literally call it pure alcohol. So off the bat, I'm like, "All right." <laughs> poison yeah moderate <laughs> you're poisoning your liver basically oh, just God. you're pouring acid in your liver is what you're doing at this point and you know you see them drinking at first and at first they're like <laughs> okay uh tommy has some fucking dance moves this dude is swagging it up <laughs> as he busts a move yeah. like like uh peter gets uh, like they both jump up on like this little like not a couch but you know like one of those little flat cushiony table things I don't know what to call it. And, you know, Peter's doing his little dance or whatever. It's, it's a cushion table. I don't fucking know. A cushion table. Oh, yeah. It's a table. No, it's not a table. It's like it's like a footrest almost, but it's like a, a whole seat, but without oh, yeah. a back. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Oh, you mean an ottoman. Yes. Thank you. Holy fuck. The word was escaping me. Um... But yeah, it's like Peter jumps up on there and you know, he's doing his little dance. And Tommy jumps up on this fucking dude. <laughs> he's just, I don't know what it is about him dancing. I'm like, this dude is a fucking stud. Like, good for him. <laughs> and, you know, they're all having a good little time. And then they drink a little bit more. They, a second round, another round, if you will, of this pure alcohol. And you're like, okay. <laughs> all right, guys. Okay. And... Then they do more and more and more. And you're like, oh, and it's just, you're just like, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh yeah, no. Yeah, and, and, and like the cinematography and everything is progressively like more uncomfortable as yeah. they just slowly basically just lose themselves in all of the alcohol. Like I'm, I'm pretty sure at one point the music just straight up stops. I and it's so. just like shots of them in like pain and just like consuming that's, alcohol. Uh, that's, uh, I know what you're thinking about. That's a little bit later. So, oh, okay. at this point, they, they've gotten super crazy. Like, they're blackout, but they're goofy. And it starts off funny because, like, they go to, like, a market. <laughs> because, oh, yeah, because, uh, because, uh, Nikolaj's wife, yes. So, Nikolaj's wife, before they had their drinking session, was like, oh, you need to pick up a fresh cod from the grocery store. He's like, oh, okay. And so when they get super blasted, they're like, oh, we shouldn't stay here anymore because we're, you know, we're fucking idiots and we're not going to do the thing. And they're like, we should, we got to go get that fresh cod. He's like, oh, okay. So they go to the market and they're fucking, they are just utterly wasted. And it's actually hilarious. Like, it's not awkward or anything yet. I mean, it's awkward. What are you talking about? It's terrible. It's like, oh, God. So, so I think it's Nikolaj. He like, 
one of the workers goes up to him. He's like, can I help you, sir? He's like, do you have fresh cod? <laughs> you know, and, uh, if he was speaking English, do you have fresh cod? <laughs> it's like a fucking fish person from a Cthulhu story or whatever. But, <laughs> but the store employee's like, oh, no, we don't have fresh cod. We've only got the frozen stuff. Nikolaj is like, ah, oh, fuck. And then he, like, falls over and, like, a <laughs> drops a bottle of wine with him. And he goes to get yeah. up. He goes to get up, and like as he's walking away, the store employee's like, "Oh, excuse me, sir." Then Tommy walks by, and he puts his hand in his face. He's like, "This is fucking awesome." I love it. Would have been, would have been, uh, what would have made the scene perfect is if Nicholas stumbled in there and was like, "You guys got any Danish? <laughs> I can give you a couple of Denmark shlom." <laughs> oh my god, no. <laughs> a couple of Denmarks. Wow. Couple of Denmarks. Whole Denmarks. <laughs> yeah, whole Denmarks. Um, so, so what did the boys decide to do when they can't get their fresh caught? They decide to go fishing themselves, and they go out to the fucking pier, and, and like they have their nets, right? They're like trying to catch fish, and fucking Mads Mikkelsen, Martin takes the 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 hilt, the base of his, and he's like trying to stab where he thinks fish might be. <laughs> And then Tommy, Tommy's like, all right, I'm going to get the fish myself. He takes off his jacket and jumps in the water to get it. It's like, there's no fish there, you fucking idiot. <laughs> it's fine. It would have been even better if fucking Mads was stabbed in the water. He was like, God. Danish, you ruined Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> oh I like it better when it was just the no. Dutch. <laughs> These Dutchlanders, I swear. <laughs> and then that's the point. That's the point where Nikolaj is like, I gotta go home. And they're like, okay, whatever, fine, bye. And, and, and so Nikolaj goes home, and oh my god, he is trying to go up the steps, and he trips at one point. And I'm like, oh! That would hurt. That would hurt so much. Oh yeah, I'm like, like smacking your shin no. against the edge. Like, oh. Oh. Also, the struggle to get up the stairs when you're that drunk is just. Oh yeah, he's like on all so fours and like cringe. leaning against the wall. Like he is fucked. So up. cringe, yeah. He's fucked, and uh, yeah. So he uh, he goes upstairs, and you remember how earlier he was sleeping on the couch? Well, he just goes straight into bed with uh, his wife and like I think their baby and maybe mm. one of the. No, kids. it's just his work. It's just it's wife. just his wife, yeah. Because the ba the kids both run into the room afterwards, I believe. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, he goes into bed and it's like, okay, whatever. He made it to the bed at least. <laughs> he pee he doesn't just pee the bed, dude. This this dude, oh my <laughs> god. So he fucking turns into Niagara Falls. Oh my god. You ever wonder like how much a grown man can pee? Uh, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot, especially a bigger guy. Yeah, he soaks <laughs> the bed. <laughs> Could you imagine if they, like, made the actor, like, just hold his piss in all day <laughs> just to get, like, the most authentic fucking pee scene Jesus. Out? Well, props to the to the woman playing his wife if that was a yeah. thing. I don't think that was a thing. But, yeah, and, uh, you know, he pees the bed, and she's like, oh, my fucking God! And, you know, she, she you screams. You disgusting creature. She yeah, screams. Like, oh. She screams, and, uh... You know, that, of course, wakes up the kid. She goes to grab the baby because, you know, she's always holding the baby. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's a baby. And <laughs> Nikolaj is like, oh. Yes, you do. He's like, oh, my God, I'm sorry. I pee, you know, blah, blah, blah. And mm -hmm. she's like, you know, I'm going to stay with my parents until you get your shit together. Yeah. And he fucking, God, he tries to crawl after her, but, like, falls out of the bed. This dude is a fucking mess. He tries to take a breathalyzer test using the baby monitor. Like, jeez, dude. Yeah. He's, like, trying to see if he's good to drive, and she's like, that's the baby monitor. Oh, man. And he tries to he's climb... A beyond exasperated, yes. Yeah, he tries to when climb back don't. on the bed. He tries to climb back on the bed, but, like, he literally can't get himself off the ground. He's just, like, dragging the blanket and shit off. Oh yeah, god, was, what a uh, fucking That was one of the moments where I was like, you know, I think his wife's got a, his wife's got a good reason to be a little bit miffed, gotta say. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That was uh it, it, it's it's kind of at this point where the drinking itself starts to become like grossly irresponsible. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, that, like, whole, that whole getting absolutely blitzed and then trying to go to a supermarket was already... <laughs> as soon as they left the house, that's when they fucked up. Anyone like. who ever <laughs> thinks to themselves, oh, hey, you know, we can uh, get super... Me and my friends can get super drunk in one place and, we'll, you know, we'll stay at that one place. That's not going to yeah. happen. You're going to be blacked out and you're not going to know yeah. where you are the next morning. Yeah. 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 Always... Always lock your doors and put your keys somewhere you won't know when you're drunk. <laughs> yeah. Or just don't get that far. <laughs> yeah, or just or just be a healthy adult. Don't get that far. Mm-hmm. Like me, like me, I never get drunk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not fun. I like being drunk. <laughs> that's a, that sounds bad. That sounds bad. No, it's like you know, like, like <laughs> social occasions. Like if I go to a party and just having a good old time with friends and stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, some, 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 sometimes, yeah, when you're with friends and stuff, it can be kind of enjoyable. But for the most part, I kind of drunk just... and getting blasted. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. There's a difference between getting there's a difference between getting drunk and doing what Martin and his friends did. Well, Nicolas says at one point he refers to alcohol as like being drunk as a spectrum, and it's like, yeah, you know, there's uh, there's like that buzz and then ditzy drunk super like wasted and then just black out like yeah. the, and then everything in between of course yeah and props to the movie for having the again just having the fucking integrity to be like you know it's just it's taken in moderation alcohol is not just evil yeah. thing thank fucking god but yeah thank god glad what it didn't devolve into a don't drink psa you know yeah well because it very easily could have oh yeah absolutely. oh there's oh, yeah. an oh i don't know if either of you i don't think either of you know this so yeah they're making an american remake of this movie that came out last year oh no yeah uh it's gonna start leonardo I... dicaprio which i mean hey leonardo's okay. cool um leonardo's cool but i guarantee like even like i guarantee from the start anti-drinking psa yeah, probably. Even then, it's just like, why would you remake this? It's a perfectly fucking good movie on its own. Yeah, just fucking watch it with subtitles, you cowards! Ideas, and so they're just rehashing shit. Remember when Death Note got a live-action American thing? Oh, God. Uh, no. God, no. 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 <laughs> Yo, can we talk about that sometime? Because I'm not even a fan of Death Note, and it still pissed me well, off. You need to watch Death Note. First of all, you need to watch Death Note, because it's one of my favorite fucking shows ever. It's really good. All right, all right. I'll watch so Death Note if we can cover if we can cover the fucking live action American Netflix version. Oh, Absolutely. Uh, uh where were we? Oh yeah, we, they you know they super blasted Nicholas and his wife. Blah, blah, blah. And um, then we it shows Martin waking up the next morning. First of all, he's on concrete, so our, and he's got like a cut on his head. So already you're like, oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, you're um, like, oh no, he's on the floor, keys in hand, he's obviously got a head injury, and then and then people are shuffling out of a house mumbling, and they're like, oh god, it's the neighbor, is he okay? Uh, yeah. So he's like, passed out at his neighbor's, which, oh god, that's not a good look, my his guy. Son, his son comes over and he's like, dad, it's not our house. It's like, mm-hmm. oh man, he got <laughs> fucked Just... up. Just the way his son just pauses there, and that's just that wave of, like, disappointment and sadness that, like, yeah. flows over the son as he kind of, like, comes in to pick his dad up and walk him home, and it's just like, oh, no. Yep. As that's... a big yikes. Yep. Um... Kind of reminds me of that one time that uh, <clears throat> we were living in a... Uh, there was this one point where my dad was living separate from my brother, me and my stepmom. And like, he was living in like a big city and running a tow truck company, essentially, so that we could have like a second big income for us. And uh, there was one time where we were visiting him in his city. And uh, he, he took my brother's car, which at the time, it wasn't his, but it was gonna be his and he drove it to another part of the city, while we were home alone. (laughs) And he went to a bar and got so fucking drunk that he essentially had to like <laughs> sleep in like the car for the oh, night before no. he came back. Did he pee the seat? <laughs> uh, uncon- uh, don't know. <laughs> I, know. I don't know. That that's part. better. That's better to not know. Yeah, yeah. Especially since that was like my brother's car, and he got it not. So. Yeah. <laughs> 
That was actually his, that was his first car too, which would have made it even worse. Oh no. Yikes. When my mother drinks, she just sings more and it's fucking hilarious. I get I get really cuddly. I'm I'm a cuddly drunk. I like cuddling. But then again, but then again, I like cuddling even not when I'm drunk. So the drunk just amplifies the desire to cuddle and to have general human affection. For me it's like three steps. For me it's like three steps of like calms me down, gets me a bit randy baby. Uh, oh god. <laughs> uh, then Die. then sadness and then the fourth step of gone. <laughs> Just blasted. Yeah, if you if you hit sadness, that's at the point where you go, "Ooh, yikes." That's I where you got to stop. Like you got to realize it. Yeah. It went uh, word of advice for our listeners, if you're drinking and you get to the point of feeling sad, that's when you stop. <laughs> Uh-huh. In fact, yeah. that's that's when you start trying to sober up, drink some water, eat a fucking steak, put on your yeah. put on wet socks, yeah. you know, do your thing. <laughs> also, similarly, if you start hiccuping, <laughs> <laughs> I know that they always show it like movies, of, like cartoons of like drunkards hiccuping, but no, no, it's a real thing. It do happen. <laughs> oh yeah, it's funny. So. <laughs> you do get the hiccups. That's also a sure sign that you've had too much. Yeah, because that's a lot of air bubbles. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, his son takes him home, and it's you know morning time. So uh, mm-hmm. Annika's Annika's like just getting home, I believe, uh-huh. and they're just having breakfast. And Martin looks like a fucking mess. And that's yes. when Annika decides that she's gonna call out Martin for his drinking. And you know, okay, reasonable thing. You just you know yeah. setting a bad example right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for his kids. Yeah, do, you, do you want to tell your kids what happened, basically? And he's like... Uh, yeah, she says, do you want to tell your sons about this? And that's when he goes, do you want to tell your sons about what's going on with you? Uh... And, and like, oh man, this guy is firing shots in this movie. He's throwing the potatoes. And immediately Ooh. Annika's like, oh no. So she's like, kids, yeah. kids, go to your room, go to your room. Mm-hmm. We're about to fuck on the table. No, they're not. So... <laughs> no. <laughs> No. So, uh, she sits down. She's like, what are you talking about? And uh, she kind of goes, she rants at him a bit. She's talking about how, she says something to the effect of, uh, it really it really bothers me that you're having so much fun with your friends and not with me. And then Martin goes, okay. And he's just eating his food and he's like, do you want to tell me if you're having fun with anyone else? And she's like, what? But it's not with me yet. And he's like, Ugh. She She's like immediately like, oh shit, he knows. And that's when, uh, she doesn't even, it's, it's one, she's one of those people that's like, immediately she's like, look, I wasn't going to wait forever, blah, 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 blah. And Martin's like, you know what? That's okay. You don't have to wait. And he fucking, man, he slings that shit off the table. He's like, he's, uh, he's not a happy camper. He's, he's a little, he's, he's, someone rustled his jimmies pretty bad. Someone rustled his jimmies? Yes. Also, if you're in a relationship with somebody, just don't, just don't cheat. Just yeah, don't do that. I mean, I like, the problem just... is, it's difficult. And, like, I'm not saying cheating is ever the, like, good option, but sometimes, like, if you're genuinely in a relationship where it, it's gone that downhill, and someone offers you something really nice and something really inspiring, even the strongest of us will be, you know, <laughs> tempted, right? Yeah, no, I can speak yeah. from experience, like, like absolutely. <laughs> If your relationship yeah. has gotten to that point where you are both so unhappy and so detached from each They've other. They've been unhappy for eight years. Yeah. It's... And, it takes, and it takes alcohol for you to be, like, happy and engaging yeah, with one that, another. That golden apple is going to look very good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, like, if you're in a relationship, just just don't cheat. Like, yeah. talk. Talk just with don't. your significant <laughs> Just talk like it. You can say that all you want, but it's I saw this fucking, not going to happen. I saw if they this, were talking, it wouldn't get to that state. <laughs> I saw this fucking meme. It was like, it was like the Doge girl, like with the little black hair or whatever. Fuck. And she's like, "Hey, so I noticed you've not been talking to me lately. So I fucked someone else." <laughs> I mean, okay. <laughs> yeah, communication is <laughs> important yeah. in relationships. Uh, it really is. If you're unhappy with your significant other or you want something changed, you gotta fucking tell them about it. Don't immediately opt for breaking up either. Fucking do something about it. 
Like, unless they become, <laughs> yeah. like, a shit... Like, if they're fucking doing cocaine, okay, maybe it's time to step away, but... Yeah, maybe it's like, oh, yikes. <laughs> yeah. But if it's like, oh, like, you know, my partner's been depressed and we don't go out much, it's like, well, maybe you should try to, like, help them again. Yeah. Like, depression or something, I don't fucking know. Yeah. Yeah, or if, like, you feel like that spark has, you know, been extinguished, then try shit to reignite it once again or like talk to your significant other don't just don't cheat it's just a very <laughs> immoral and awful thing to do and it <laughs> it leads to nothing but hurt well, yeah do you think people cheat just because they want to be a bad person no <laughs> not at all i don't think they do i i, it's and problem, I, I don't I, isn't it is it's like you, yeah. can, you can tell people all you want don't cheat it's gonna hurt the other person but when the relationship is that far gone you kind of I mean, you've really stopped loving that person, haven't you? And so at that point, to you, cheating on them doesn't even feel like it would be a hurt because basically at that point in your relationship, are you even in a relationship? Well, that, I, that I, I, think, like, I think part of that, so terrible, but... I think part of that is when people become disconnected, mm -hmm. it ends for one person when it still hasn't for the other. Yes. And mm -hmm. since they don't communicate, they don't fucking know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But it is terrible. I think it, it would definitely be kinder to realize that if someone offers you that golden apple and you want it real bad, and you should be like, all right, I'm going to go talk to my significant other and be like, yeah. hey, this person's offering me a golden apple. Do I take it or do we want to try this? Because <laughs> <Like>, <laughs> if we're not going to try, I'm leaving your ass for the golden apple. <laughs> Let me tell you. Stay tuned yeah. for C's coverage of The Marriage Story starring Scar Scarlett Johansson and uh, Adam Driver. <laughs> Oh, that movie's oh fucking depressing as hell, at least from what I've seen of it. I'm gonna watch that sometime soon. But anyways, yeah. Martin fucking, he yeets everything off the table, and he tells her to fuck off, yeah. and... Uh, Scares the shit out of her, obviously. Yeah, you know, also, but... also, tune in to see his next time for more marriage counseling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, Martin, he fucking storms out, he's like, you know, I'm not someone to be waited for, and it's like, yeah, yeah, I get that. Um, he goes over to Tommy's, because Tommy's his, his bro, mm -hmm. and... Wait, no. Does he go to Tommy's? No. It just shows him leaving, and then it seems like there's some sort of, like, time skip. Yeah, I think I think there is some kind of time skip after that. Because like I'm pretty sure the next is... time... Mm. Yeah, because I think the next time you we see, or the next thing we see is Jeez. Martin and... Uh, He's having and, breakfast by uh, himself and the house looks a little emptier, yes. That's <laughs> right, that's right. Oh, no. <laughs> I know what that insinuates. Oh, gee. Because, like, I remember the next scene. I just didn't remember what <laughs> happened immediately after that. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, basically, um, it, it shows him having breakfast by himself. Next day, he goes to school to work. And... They're having a, a staff meeting because the principal's like, hey, so, you know, we've been finding alcohol. We know that someone's having a problem. Mm. And that's when, at the worst possible fucking time, Tommy comes uh, in utterly <laughs> shit -faced. Oh, God. This dude uh, is far gone. He's stumbling all over, and it's obvious, too. Like, he's stumbling all over himself. He's, you know, kind of slurring his words. Mm -hmm. And Peter and Nikolaj and Martin, they're all just like, oh, no. And then, yeah. like, at some point, he fucking stumbles, and I'm pretty sure he fucking hits his nose on something, doesn't he? Actually, no, I totally forgot. We t uh, forgot to talk about a scene earlier. So it oh, yeah. it's, it's when they start drinking more, and it's after Martin uh, has got himself to, like, 0.12 uh, BAC. Um, he's at school, and he's, like, mostly doing okay. Like, he's kind of moving weirdly, but there's kind of a flow to it where he's, you know, he's, yeah. like, he's fine for the most part. And then he, he like... Gets out of someone's way and BAM! Smacks his fucking nose against the wall. He's and... paying attention to his uh, thermos, effectively screwing yeah. it on. He just, yeah, full force into the door frame and they're like, woo, yikes! Yeah, and I want to say it's Peter that comes over and he's like, ah, yeah, I got him, he's fine, he's fine, he's fine. <laughs> he's like, dude, are you okay? He's like, yeah, yeah, I'll be fine, I'll be fine. <sighs> but yeah, this time, yeah, this time it's Tommy fun. and uh, it's not just as simple as bumping into a wall and passing off. It's like, oh yeah, he wasn't looking at it. This dude is gone. And it's pretty obvious he's going to be fired. They don't show it, and I'm glad they don't, because it's just like, y you know, like, they respect yeah, their audience it, enough it, to put it together themselves. Yeah, it would just it would just be another pointless, or another, it would just be a pointless scene, essentially. Well, not pointless, but it, we don't need to see it. A bit it. redundant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, redundant, um, that's the word I was looking for. Because Martin takes him home, 
and he puts him on his bed and he puts his feet up on a stool for him so that you know blood circulation is still good good yeah. for him and the next scene is Tommy finally waking up and Martin's there at his house and he's you know he took uh, his dog out to pee and he's got his place kind of cleaned up nice for him and, yeah, he got uh, rid of all of the bottles of alcohol. Yeah. Which at this point you realize, oh dear. <laughs> like, you knew Tommy had a problem when we came into work absolutely blitzed. But you kind of realize the extent and the length of the problem when he's cleaning up the house and it is just, like, every available countertop is empty bottles yeah. of alcohol. And you're like, uh-oh. Yep. And, uh... What a good friend. Yeah, he's mm-hmm. a great friend. And he stays there and waits for him to wake up, and he's you know, petting his dog on the couch and all that. It's okay. Uh, Tommy wakes up and he's like, "Oh, hey, Martin. You know that was, uh, you know, that was not a great thing that happened at school." And Martin's like, "Nope." And he doesn't, you know, again, he doesn't say that he got fired, but it's like, you know, that he knows. Yeah. And uh, Tommy's like, "Oh, hey, you know, you want to hang out for a while, drink a bit?" And Martin's like, "Tommy, stop." And he has to tell him like a few times, like, "Dude, stop, stop drinking, stop." Yeah, like, hey, take it easy, take it easy. So Martin goes to leave, and he's like, are you going to be okay, Tommy? He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to be fine. And Tommy's, he, I don't remember exactly what he says, but he's talking very cryptically. Um, well, not cryptically, but mm-hmm. he's kind of... Vague. Vague, yeah. Uh, Martin like goes, he's not exactly telling Martin everything. Yeah, mm-hmm. and Martin steps outside, and Tommy's like, hey, you know, I'm rooting for you, man. It's always been you and Annika, and it's great. And, to- and Martin's like, okay... And he's like, well, you know, I'll see you around, Tommy. And he's like, and Tommy's just like, nods. And then he closes the door, and you're like, oh, no. <laughs> he's dead. <laughs> I so, guess. I just, as soon as they showed him, like, cleaning up the house, and then as soon as he left like that, I'm like, no, 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 don't, don't do it. We'll get there soon, though. We'll get there soon. So... <laughs> We then get to, it shows, like, the test, the exam day for the kids. Um, Peter is, no, not Peter, because Peter's, yeah, yeah, Peter. Um, Peter is talking with Sebastian, and Sebastian, it's it's like, a, it's an oral exam where he has to talk about a subject or whatever, and I don't, I don't remember the subject he gets. It's some, like, fucking European name that I couldn't pronounce if I tried anyways. Danish. Uh, fuck it. <laughs> the huge cultural significance of the invention of the snack known as a Danish. Mm. True. But yeah, it's it shows the kid with test anxiety, and he gets uh, he like draws a card which like determines the subject he got, and he's like, oh, you know, I drew number three, and he starts to walk away to get ready for his exam, and Peter's like, oh shit, and he's like, hey, yeah, number three, that's like your worst subject. So, kid's freaking the fuck out. He's just he's already crying. Peter's like, okay, come on, buddy, come on, come on, come on. So he takes him over to a room, closes the door, locks the door, and he's like, hey, have a drink of this. The kid's like, I thought you quit. He's like, look, just look, have a drink. Yeah. <laughs> you need it. Just he's take like, it, he's kid. Like, yeah, this will calm your nerves. Like, it's good shit. So the kid takes a drink, and the kid's still kind of freaking out. And he's like, okay, just take another drink. He's like, okay. And then Peter's like, okay, now I need one. Fuck. <laughs> so <Yeah>. he <laughs> takes a swig himself, and they're talking, and he's like, look, you're going to be okay. It's going to be fine. The kid's like, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. So they go back to the exam room, and Sebastian's struggling. He's just like, uh, you know, it's uh, not really talking as well. Mm-hmm. And Peter's like, you know, Sebastian, take a sip of water. Just, you know, clear it throat and stuff. Because <laughs> there's another teacher there, and he's got to, you know, pretend it's water yeah. and all that. Uh-huh. Sebastian takes yeah. a drink, and finally, it's, you know, it's taking the edge off. He's like, he takes a deep breath. He's like, Whew. Okay. And he starts talking about his subject, and I don't remember the specifics, but I remember that it, he was, was talking uh, about dealing with failure. Yeah, it was the psychological effects of failure on the human psyche and how humans deal with failure. Yeah. Which was funny, because you're like... <laughs> <laughs> like, like are you sure this wasn't the perfect subject that. for you, son? Like... Yeah, like, yeah, human response to failure. You're like, wait a minute! I'm a failure. <laughs> God. I know all about this. He's like, well, yeah, 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 you do. Keep going. <laughs> I think it's the other teacher who asked. He's like, can you give us a specific example of someone dealing with failure? He's like, well, yeah, actually, me. Oh, yeah, I it's failed. like, oh, my, my boy. Yeah. And you know, it, it's implied that from there. Well, okay, so from there, it cuts to 
Martin, who's like, oh, hey, you know, students, uh, good luck on your exams, blah, 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 blah. Martin's, you know, he's not had anything to drink, so he's not, like, particularly peppy. But yeah. uh, he says enough for the kids to be like, yeah, yeah, let's go get it. And then it cuts to uh, the, I want to say it cuts to the choir, because it has them singing in the background of the scene, and it shows everyone graduating. Uh, Martin gets hugs from his students, Sebastian and Peter hug, and it's like this really wonderful little moment where it's like, okay, the kids are fine, thank fucking god. The kids are okay. Thank yeah. god the kids, Jerry. Oh, the kids are okay. <laughs> thank god the kids. They've all, they've all passed. Like, fuck yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, and uh, one of the, it's like a really minor thing that had been mentioned, but like one of the students' dad had mentioned way earlier on when they met with Martin, they were like, hey, you know, my student needs at least a B so that he can get into uh, the university to be a doctor or whatever. And it shows Martin walking out of the classroom. He looks at the student. He goes, you gotta be. And they're like, yeah. It's like, yeah. yeah. Wonderful yeah. little moment. And it shows the graduating class going outside to just, the, I don't know, the schoolyard. And they're all having a good time. And then Nikolaj walks out. And you see his face. And you're like, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> so Nikolaj goes over to Martin. And you don't hear what they're saying because it, like it has the choir singing yeah, in the background and all that. Yeah. yeah and you see oh man Mads Mikkelsen's acting is so good cause he like freaks out Wait. just enough mm -hmm. uh, are we forgetting a scene before this where uh, Tommy <laughs> heads out to the pier with uh, his, his popper oh, yeah. that's right I thought that was after this whoops my bad no it's nah. before it's... it yeah. oh no yeah, it's right before the, it's right before the graduating stuff. that's right that's right, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, cause it has okay, the yeah. choir singing in the back okay yeah I was getting mixed up so yeah, before it shows everybody graduating, it shows Tommy, he goes out to the pier, and he's got his dog with him, and he just gets on the boat, and it's implied, I think, that his dog, like, is about to die. Like, his dog is very much, like, this is the day they die, most likely. Well, the thing that's also terrible is that he struggles to get the life jacket on, because he's obviously very drunk. Yeah. And then he just throws it aside, and you're like, oh god, he's dead, isn't he? He's dead. <laughs> Yeah. Stop it! They're like foreshadowing. <sighs> yep. He puts the dog on the boat and he swims out, and they don't show anything. You know, it's just it's the shots going back and forth of uh, mm -hmm. the kids graduating, him going out further in the boat, and then uh, at, it you know it goes kind of back and forth, and then it goes to the boat, and you just don't like because before you saw him sitting like you know yeah. on, like on the seat on the edge of it, and now you just don't see him, and the dog's like it's looking just down. The dog yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, God. Uh, I like how both of these movies use a dog to tug on the heartstring <laughs> in completely different ways. Vincent Berg, you bastard. Oh yeah, uh, Nico in the hunt, a uh, dog dies. Who the fuck's Nico? Oh, of course. Alora, sorry. Oopsie. <laughs> oopsie. Oh. That was a past oopsie. life. A past life. <laughs> <laughs> and also, you're still technically your Discord username, but whatever. Fuck. Oh, God, don't tell them that! Bleep that! <laughs> oh, no, they'll find me! Uh, <laughs> they'll find you by typing in your the first name yeah, of they'll your type Discord Nico. name. They don't even know if it's a C or a K. Fucking losers. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> That's true. Um, but yeah, and eventually it shows uh, Nico uh, going over to Martin. And... and uh, it's you know you see Mads Mikkelsen uh, being told and he's just his acting is so good as always he's just you know he freaks out just enough he's like clearly very devastated and he sits down and he's like oh my god mm -hmm. and uh oh wait I forgot about one scene actually <laughs> there's a very it's a very brief scene actually no it's after this it's after this okay I'm good I'm good, good. so anyways yeah hard transition from this to you see Matt Mickelson he's wearing a suit and he's walking towards the church and you're like oh no mm -hmm. and he goes over and he meets Peter at the entrance and Peter's like hey man I guess we gotta go sit up and it, it's a, it's not the smoothest little way of sliding it in but basically I mean you kind of figured they're gonna be pallbearers but Peter's like hey I guess we gotta go sit in the front since we're the pallbearers it's like eh, okay not bad, it's just like, eh. <laughs> it's just like very direct. It's like, oh yeah, they're the pallbearers. But um, they go up front, and that's they go to sit down. That's when Nikolaj comes in, and he's got his wife. 
and she says hello to them and she's actually this is like the most decent she is to anyone in the whole movie because she's like okay this is a shitty day (laughs) and uh you know it just shows them sitting down there with each other for a little bit and then it cuts to them uh lifting up the uh the casket and they're going to walk down the aisle and martin looks over and sees little specks with his mama and Spex is uh, crying, and it's like, oh, 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 oh no, no, Spex. It was, uh, it fucking sent me. I, I, I was crying. Oh, this was a Ella blubbering mess. Together. I was, a I was, mess. I was. I could not contain myself. I was bawling. Yeah, by that the whole point. scene fucking got me. <laughs> like I was already crying by the point that they started walking down the aisle, but. Oh no! Whenever, yeah, whenever Martin looked at Spex, I just I couldn't fucking handle it. I broke down. Oh my god. Yep. Uh, They take him out. They put him in the what's the fucking what's the car called that's always used for caskets? A hearse. Hearse, yes. And uh, you know they slide the casket in, and little Spex goes up with the rose and puts it on the casket. And I'm like, why the fuck are you doing this to me, Thomas? Uh, Thomas, yeah. please stop. <laughs> and uh, then Spex starts singing uh, some kind of song. I don't really know what the song is. I'm sure someone. It would... was the song they sung as a team. Yeah. I, well, I'm, I'm just saying, like, I don't know what the song. Oh, I don't know what it is, is either. It's about Denmark and stuff, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's about, like, the beautiful land of Denmark and loving life and all that The Dutch? The Dutchlands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holland, yeah. The yeah. Dutch place. Um. But yeah, him, he starts singing, and then the other kids from the team start singing. They've all got their uniforms on. That's so bad. It was such a fucking hard scene to watch. Martin's crying, and Bob's just crying, Peter's crying. And it's like, oh man, you fucking, mm, Thomas Winterberg. And then of course there's, and then of course there's Matt Mickelson's fucking brilliant acting. Ugh. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, It cuts to them driving, they're driving away, and... Uh, then they, uh, then after that they go to the restaurant that they were yeah. in at the beginning of the movie. Whatever they were talking about, or whatever they were at. Uh, whose fucking that, birthday was it? I don't think that was immediately after, was it? I think okay. so. I missed. I can't. No, remember. no, 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 no. What? Well, I, I know that somewhere we forgot to put in the scene where Annika and Martin are talking about. Yeah. Uh, I, doing I, an I, event. I, yeah. I legitimately uh, forget where it's somewhere around here. I think uh, it's yeah. right. It's after the funeral, I think. I is but it right because I'm pretty sure. Restaurant. Well, yeah. no, it, it can't. It can't be after the. I don't. We legitimately can't, can't after remember the off the top of our heads. It's somewhere. Uh, <laughs> it's around after the, the funeral. funeral. It's either because after, the, or after. Yeah, no, it. it's before the funeral, but. I, uh. mm. Okay. Yeah, anyways, it's before the- so we'll go. We'll talk about that scene first. So at one point, uh, it shows Martin and Annika. They go to have dinner, and they're it's they're lunch. basically talking about practicalities and uh, when they would have the see the kids and all that. And uh, unlike in the hunt, his his ex wife here is at least being a little bit reasonable. <laughs> and Martin's like, he can't really like. He's talked a, a lot in the movie about how he just. He can't see himself without Annika. So he's telling her, like, look, I don't... I want us to be together still. And she's like, I can't do this. And she, you know, again, she's not looking him in the eyes, like, at all. She orders, like, a white wine and just... She fucking chugs that thing, like, really quick. Like, I think yeah, it's like... Does. Jesus Christ. I think it's like three sips and that whole thing is gone. And, you know, he's just trying to talk with her, but she's just clearly... It's not like... A disdain for him or anything like that like she's not hostile she's just like i don't want to think it's about this really very uncomfortable for her yes yeah. and she just wants to avoid it she doesn't even want to like she it's wants, painful she wants to avoid <laughs> the subject. yeah yeah and uh martin can't help himself so eventually she just gets up to leave and that's the end of that scene so mm-hmm. yeah. yeah and we don't know and we don't remember where the fuck in the movie that fits <laughs> it's, I, uh, I know it's, it has to it's, I, I, it's well it after, has to be before the it, before the funeral, but after obviously when we last saw them, when she talked about cheating on him and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's it's not after the funeral. Because after the funeral, they go to the uh, yeah. restaurant that they were in at the beginning of the movie, and then we have the scene leading into the credits. Yeah. So um, after the funeral, it shows uh, 
all of our three uh, now three uh, characters. Um, the three musketeers. Oh. Emphasis on the tears. Oh. God. <laughs> <laughs> oh <Nice>. boy. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, they go to this restaurant and they um they go to two restaurants because like they go to one restaurant and then eventually they go to another. But anyways, they go to this restaurant and they're just they're very upset. They don't really say much, but they end it with you know saying for Tommy. And it's like oh, my man. And then eventually, okay, you know what? I'm looking this fuck up because it's bothering me. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. I'm too distracted. I have to know. I need to know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I mean, the other thing is that originally they were at the restaurant, and so the the camera work's quite clever because it's just focused on the three men and they're just talking, and then you know one of them says, "How how are you doing?" I still think about him, and then it pans out to the empty seat, and I'm like, "No." Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Thomas Vinter knows what the fuck he's doing with that fucking camera. Painful. It hurts so bad. Because anyone who's lost a loved one will know one of the things that hurts the most is if you ever had, like, I don't know, a An place where you guys would sit. Yeah, like at the dinner table, and then, you know, that seat's empty. It's bad. That is a painful <laughs> visual. Okay, so <laughs> the scene with Annika, uh, it occurs after this, uh, the last scene we see with Tommy and Martin. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then so after the funeral, they go to uh, they they go out and you know they have their empty seat moment. Um, and there's some time that passes. It shows the kids going off, like they're graduating and they're having like a sort of I don't want to say festival, but you know they're having like a celebration out in the city, off in the pier. And it shows uh, our three musketeers once again. Uh. They're no. They're chilling out. They're eating together, and that's when the camera shot that you talked about happens. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's this. Re- uh, so they're eating, and Martin gets a text from Annika saying, "I miss you too." And you're like, "Oh my god, my ship!" Wait, no, that's that doesn't happen yet. Yeah, it does. No, because that happens yeah, after they that get. That happens to... at the, the yeah at the pier graduation. Yeah. That's yeah, that happens at the pier after Martin's already started drinking and dancing. That's what I'm talking about. I said yeah, there was some no. time that passed, and then it shows. The... No, it's not after. Yeah, they're still. No, it's there. So what's happening is they're still eating, and then suddenly they see the kids in their graduation buses, buses coming down the road. So they decide to get up and go follow, and that's when you that's... know because uh, Martin's yes. been getting texts like from the waifu where they've been kind of like. You know, hey, like, I miss you, he texts, kind of. And he's, you know, talking about, like, you know, I feel like Tommy was rooting for us. And just, like, all this no, stuff, right? So, okay, no, what happens is it shows hmm. them after the funeral having dinner, but then there's a, t- it, there's a little bit of a time skip because it shows them going to the pier and they go into the restaurant. Mm. And then that's when, when they're sitting at yeah. the table, and it's much more, like, even, like, the scene itself is more colorful, it's more, you know, mm. brighter. And it shows them sitting there, and uh, Martin. that's when Martin gets a text from Annika saying, I, I miss you yeah. too. Um, okay. okay, never mind. Yeah. I'm stupid. No, you're fine. And, Wait, uh, other texts before then? Uh, I think they text during, <laughs> I think they text during the celebration, but I don't think they text it's, it's They text right before the that. celebration, like as, they're, like, as Martin's mm-hmm. walking over there. So, yeah, what's up? You're getting ahead. It's so, like kind of a lonely, won't they, right? So, uh, <laughs> Nikolaj is talking about how, you know, things are getting better with his wife, which, hey, you know, good for my boy. Uh, good for Nikolaj. For and Peter's like, hey, did the kids already move out? And he's yeah. like, no, they're, they're not peeing anymore, which is nice. And that's when Martin... <laughs> I said, now that I'm not peeing anymore. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when Martin's like, that's when Martin's like, and that's, there's, you know, it's the little things that count. <laughs> it's really nice. And, um... Anyway. <laughs> That's when they see the graduation bus go by. It's going towards mm-hmm. the pier, and they're walking out. And Martin gets another text from Annika saying that she she's willing to she's wanting to talk about things. And you know, it's pretty much implied from there that they're going to. Mm-hmm. And then we get the best fucking scene in the history of films, probably. And it also won an Oscar, didn't it? This this scene pretty much won it its Oscar. Mm-hmm. Um, Stunning. <laughs> we get. So Martin and Peter and Nikolaj go out, 
and they go over and Peter gets picked up by his choir students. They like fucking throw him in the air and pick him back down and he goes up to Nicholas. It's like, oh my god, they threw him, they threw him. It's this really, you know, just a little wholesome moment. And yeah. everyone's, uh, you know, everyone's having themselves a drink. Martin goes over and his students love him. They give him a, a bottle of some kind of wine or champagne or something. Yeah. He drinks a bit. And that's when I think Peter... Maybe Peter, maybe Nicholas, maybe both of them. They're like, hey, you know, you got to do the dance. And he's like, okay, okay. So we finally get the dance after all the teasing. We finally get this wonderful dance. Yeah. <laughs> and it is... First of all, the song's amazing. It's the song from the very beginning of the film that I mentioned before. Yes. And the song's great. It's just this really... Just it's happy. very simple, yeah. but yeah, it's, it's very happy and very uh, uplifting. <laughs> yeah, and it's really hard to put into words like how good this scene is and like what makes it good because it's you know it's a dance number right but it's just, you see there's kind of this increasing energy to it where like Martin starts off he cut, he does a couple of moves and then he goes over to sit down and he you know he looks at his phone real quick but you don't, they don't actually show what like if there was a text he was reading or anything mm. and he looks out towards the water and then he goes up and he starts dancing some more and it just picks up from there and he's like running through the crowd and the kids are like spraying their they're like you know they lick the the tops off of the bottles and they're like spraying them down with alcohol yeah and then there's also this like icon and then there's also that shot from like the poster where you know he's running and they're spraying champagne and that's, stuff like yeah, that that's what i was talking about yeah yeah and the scene that i'm showing is uh, the the scene that i'm showing the picture that i've had up is the very start of that where they give him the bottle and it's mm-hmm. just this really it's it's a it's an ending where it's like we just saw like a beloved main character die and everyone <laughs> dealing with it and they've managed to transition to this sort of like it'll be okay and it's really fucking life affirming to me because oh man it, it's it's nice to have I'm going to make the weirdest fucking comparison it reminds me of how Persona 3 made me feel where it's oh. very where it's very you know once once you've dealt with the bad <laughs> good still comes and that's mm. yeah it's like just just because there's just because of the fact that there is pain now doesn't mean that there won't still be a chance for happiness and love afterwards yeah what a what a no, good no, fucking cap off to that philosophical <laughs> fucking what a good cap off to my philosophical musings just hearing l fucking crunching on some <laughs> crunchy ass back no you can't talk about that i muted my mic for the obs no <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, fuck. No, no, no. oh god! I kind of wish you didn't, because oh, now I kind of. Yeah, I'm not about to fucking ASMR. chew my goddamn pretzels in this fucking thing. <laughs> L, L uh, pretzel eating ASMR when? Uh... Yeah. No. Patreon, Patreon, Patreon. No. <laughs> Patreon. Patreon pretzel eating, pretzel eating. <laughs> oh, yes. Look, my... find exclusive. <laughs> My hundred dollar a month tier is already getting feet picks. Okay, I don't need to. Oh, I need to add to it, make it more expensive. You can, you you can you can find L's, you can find L's lovely pretzel eating ASMR exclusively on his. Don't you mean my page. loveless pretzel eating ASMR? Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. Very funny. We went from one movie oh, with a very God. bitter ending of, shit's always bad. <laughs> <laughs> to this movie where it's like you know it's I gonna be okay it's not the worst but i i don't know because that final scene didn't really do anything for me in terms of like it was good but it didn't make me feel any better <laughs> that's probably why i'm still sad about well, hey it. you know what it'll be okay because eventually <laughs> life goes on mm-hmm. it's true just like the movie you can't forestall the passage of time. <laughs> no, the movie ended after that, Al. Oh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Am I wrong? No, you're loose. Hey! What are the, you know, you keep, you keep fucking talking to me about making the bot- God of War joke, and yet here you are, months <laughs> after you first made that joke, just chugging along with it. I don't know what the fuck you're talking- I'm funny. Tell him, tell him, chat. Tell him, chat. I'm funny. Oh, so, oh, oh, so, oh, so you making this like joke over? Like and subscribe if you think okay. I was funny. If you like and subscribe, like and subscribe. That means you think I'm funny, but it also means you get feet pics. So I mean, hey, you know, it's up to you. Like and subscribe to Loose Belmont if you think L is L is not funny. 
<laughs> no one's going to subscribe I'm to me. Subscribe from Liz Belmont. Oh, same. <laughs> Round of applause. Thank you. I would too if I were you. Um. So okay, I'll ask. Uh. Well, okay. So final thoughts on another round from uh, Elora. I'm still sad. <laughs> Understandable. Very sad. As a whole, uh, what would you the say? The entire movie is kind of traumatic to me, really. <laughs> Understandable. It was good. I enjoyed it. I wouldn't unwatch it if that was an option. <laughs> I would unwatch it so I could watch it again. <laughs> All right. Because <laughs> like when it, when I first watched it, it it hit me. Hmm. Yeah, it was very good. Um, I would have called it a comedy. <laughs> was that? I, I would not have called it a comedy. <laughs> I, just, I don't know what kind of humor they got overseas, but Jesus fuck. <laughs> Funny Europeans getting drunk, obviously. Uh, oh we actually so forgot we actually forgot one it's a very little scene um when it's when they get really shit faced they go to this bar where <laughs> fucking peter he's got nothing but his boxers on he's playing a fucking piano mm -hmm. and martin's like dancing on top of the piano and he like crowd surfs and they're distract uh nicolaj is distracting the uh, bartender while fucking tommy's in the back just nabbing the booze. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> that was funny to me. Yeah, it was a very brief scene uh, in the middle of other things that were happening. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. Luce, what, what... Well, okay. I shouldn't ask which is your favorite, because, like, obviously. But... <laughs> obviously, obviously, it's the one that doesn't make me extremely depressed whenever yeah, I yeah. watch it. Uh. So, um, what type of question do I ask here? Uh, which would you say, hmm, which would you say had, uh, like, like, hit you harder, as in made you more emotional? That's a very hard question. Crunch. Crunch. Fuck <laughs> <Walk> up. <laughs> Crunch. <laughs> We're just adding automatopoeia. You know what? No, no more pretzel him. eating until the podcast is done. Ah, uh, <laughs> we've ruined it for the audience. <laughs> they weren't hearing it. Gosh, they were in their hearts. <laughs> They're hearing like my, my, my little, beautiful, my little, my little thing doesn't even light up green when I chew. I, I'm here. Yeah, you should, you should do it again just to prove it to us. No. Okay. You know what? Okay. No. I'll do one crunch. <laughs> one good crunch. For the audience. There you go. I didn't even fucking hear that. Are you fucking serious? I literally held my mic next yes. to my face. <laughs> okay, you know what? No. Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna put like four of these things in my mouth. Are you fucking ready? Go, 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 go. How do you not hear this shit? I heard the Yeah, I heard the faintest ghost of a <laughs> It just sounds like It might be like it might be like the auto sensitivity being like, oh a bunch of noise. Okay, we're not gonna fucking do that then. Clearly you just need to talk with your mouth full. <laughs> oh, <laughs> fuck up. <laughs> there we go. ASMR. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, Luce, which one would you say uh, uh, hits you more um, emotionally? I would say you already know the fucking answer to that one. Um, no. I, I would definitely say uh, another round, just just because of how much, because of how much the relationship between the main characters were built up throughout the film, and for them to just lose someone, and of course, you know, obviously, I'm no stranger to loss myself as well, and. Uh, so, yeah, that one just hit a little harder because of the fact that it wasn't as constant depressing. It made the depressing parts hit a lot harder. That's fair. Yeah. And then there's yeah. also another reason as to. Sorry, go ahead. No, I, I was just saying, yeah, I do feel like that's definitely a technique to be like, and suddenly I crush you. <laughs> yeah. And of course, there's also another reason as to why it hit harder. But yeah, I remember both that. Of both of you know what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked <laughs> yeah. about that. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I, well, I'd say it's like the inverse. 
for the hunt, right? Where it's like you get these little wholesome moments littered throughout, and it's like you're just so fucking relieved when they happen. You're like, oh, thank fucking god. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh wow, some a human being showed common decency. What a fucking treasure. It's 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 like it's like actually finding a moist part of a hot pocket. It's like, he oh my god, I found, I, I found I found this small bastion of hope in this dry desert of bland flavor. Moist. What are you doing with hot pockets such that they have become the Sahara? <laughs> I don't know. They just that they're always so dry. You you blitzing them? Like what's going on? <laughs> Yes, I am actually getting like three tanks and four Spitfires and just blitz crazy <laughs> this fucking hot pocket. Oh my god. <laughs> Spitfires aren't German, my guy. <laughs> I know, that's the joke, dumbass. Wow, you fucking see these guys speaking so disrespectfully to a woman. Ah, ooh, I'm suing. Oh. I'll do it. Damn. Swear on my boba. <laughs> R.I.P.C.s. This is the finale of the series. <laughs> nah, I'll I'll keep it going while you're gone. <laughs> Jill time. <laughs> just 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 give me your password and email. We'll oh, be no, good. Like that one, chief. But wow. uh, yeah, no, they're fucking great movies. I think <sighs> another round's obviously the favorite because it's fucking it's happy uh, for mm. the most part. Uh, you know, celebrating life. Oh, but one more thing. One more thing. I'm just going to go ahead and get right to it. So Thomas Vinterberg, wonderful human being that he is, uh, was lucky to win the Oscar for Best Foreign Film, which, I mean, you know, it's one of those pri- it's one of those Oscars that you're kind of like, eh, there should be a bit... You know, but it's fine, it's fine, fine. Mm-hmm. He won the Oscar, and he goes up on the stage, and he's thanking like everybody he's name dropping so many many people i've never even fucking heard of and it's wonderful and it's great Mm. and then he starts talking about the making of this movie and i'm like oh my god so four days into shooting okay well okay 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 let me back up so at the very end of the movie when the credits start it says for ida and you're like what does that mean so you look up his acceptance speech and he's talking about how four days into shooting his daughter died in a car accident, and it's like, oh my god. Yeah, and with such a tragic event happening, even more surprising, the movie itself is, like, as uplifting and, like, happy-go-lucky as it is, because, like, that's a horrible thing, especially for a father to go through and everything like mm-hmm. that. So, like, like, it's just like, my god, like, what a fucking man. <laughs> yeah, the loss of a child is uh, just not. Yeah, good. like what a what a it's fucking parent, what, really. what a fucking dude. Yep, and the fact that he even fucking continued making the film in the first place is like, damn. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, his daughter was going to be in the film, but it just couldn't happen, obviously. And he, you know, he ended Cheering up dedicating up. it. He ended up yeah, dedicating it to her. Like, sorry, I was just saying he ended up dedicating it to her. Yeah, and like seeing the parallels between, uh, you know, the friends losing one of their loved ones and Hint, uh, Vintenberg losing one of his own loved ones as well, it's just fucking, ugh. It makes it hit a lot harder. Yeah, when I uh, rewatched it the first time with uh, Luz after uh, having seen that acceptance speech, I was like, oh man, I muted myself. I was like, whoosh, oh my god. It is, uh, but he, you know, he ended up making the movie and he dedicated it to his kid, and it's a good what fucking a, movie. Oh my god! I mean, you know, barring what obviously happened, but like, what a lucky kid to have a movie like that dedicated by such a wonderful human being to them. Mm-hmm. Yes, I, I wish that they could have been around to see it. Well, they did get to read the script and they were excited about it, so there's at least that. But yep. Yeah. Not much comfort, but... really. Yep, Vinterberg is, I don't know if I've said this, but he is one of my favorite directors right now. He is just an incredible human being, like, not just as a director, but just a wonderful mm. man. Yo, Vinterberg, come on, Cs. Uh, that, that'll happen, you know. One day that joke will get old. That day is not today. 
So, who's joking? I want Thomas Vinterberg to come on and talk to yeah, me. Yeah, like, <laughs> you fucking awesome. Breath. So, uh, I guess, what future plans are going on for C's and uh, the wonderful people about? Uh, let's start with Alora. What's what's the happy oh, hat for you and your content? <laughs> well, I feel like tomorrow I'm going to explode. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, that man. I mean, basically, I'm just going to continue with my streaming, of course. I'm definitely going to finish DOC 5 <laughs> on pain of death. But then I have just, like, a whole bunch of other games lined up. Like, I have some, like, Noita, some Carrion's good. I do like Carrion. So basically, yeah, I just have a huge ass library of Steam games, and I gotta get through them. <laughs> so I we going. Like... <laughs> yeah, look forward to uh, the streams. You can come chat with us and enjoy some good old... You know, because, like, you, you see the videos from, like, me and Luce, and, you know, we're, like, mm -hmm. the big, you know, oh, hundreds of hours, it's so good. Blah, blah. But, like, <laughs> now we have a newbie. We can, I know. <laughs> we can bully them. I mean, we one can encourage us. them. One of us. <laughs> <laughs> one day, you too will be a, a weird human being that screams Media at terrorists. Condiments. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Media terrorists, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> this is now my life's path. <laughs> and, one uh, of us. One of us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Loose mm -hmm. Belmont, uh, would you like to say anything? So, hi, my name is Luz Belmont. Uh, I'm a sexy cat man, and uh, I play Final Fantasy XIV, but that's not important to you because you? you don't really care about that. Shut up. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, that's not important to you guys because you don't really care about that. Uh, but anyway, yes, uh, don't worry. Uh, I myself am indeed actually working on video content. I know I've said that like a thousand times, but I'm actually uh, working on a few scripts right now, personally, and. Uh, I'm pretty excited for them. Uh, I believe we'd mentioned before that I'm making a vein video, but I'm also making another surprise video that I don't want to talk about. Ooh. 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 Surprising. Wow. Yes. And then, of course, I've got another video on another game that mm -hmm. I may or may not make in the future. It's called Immortals Phoenix Rising. Don't buy it. It's terrible. <laughs> Damn, shooting from the hip. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's bad. It's basically a Breath of the Wild ripoff without oh. any of the charm or actual, like, good stuff that Breath of the Wild had. Uh. And also, it tries way too hard to be funny when it has no fight to. <laughs> so all good, also, really. <laughs> also, and also, the worst part is it's got Sonic Boom Syndrome. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's uh that's me i also like i i also do art as well so you know uh i <laughs> take missions if anybody wants to and yeah. also the occasional uh dare i say style videos yes i also occasionally post wacky woohoo devil may cry videos sometimes i post me uh yeah i'm just at the moment i'm just trying to diversify and, and do more i guess than just my usual gameplay videos because those are getting kind of stale oh no it's okay or at least they're getting they're getting stale for me to make i don't know if they're getting stale for like viewers or anything because like <laughs> nobody fucking comments on them or anything like that but um hi thumbs up them thank you thank you <laughs> Sorry, you just have to come over and watch me play I think I, Five. <laughs> there yeah, you go, that's too. your new content. I, I, just yell at I me. Made, <laughs> I made a Resident Evil 8 sort of short meme video at one point that like nobody fucking watched, but it was still fun for <laughs> I me, watched like, it. I guess. I don't remember it at all, but I watched it. Oh, thanks. I don't remember it? Wow, thanks. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 just on the off chance, he's like, oh yeah, what was it about? I'm like, oh, well, you got me. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut you down first. <laughs> I'm gonna cut myself down so you don't have to. Okay, you then. For context, uh, last night in the Sierra Madre, a bunch of us were all chatting, and we had a running gag of uh, Dante is voiced by Obama and Virgil is voiced by Trump. <laughs> oh, God. Why oh, do you refuse to gain power? <laughs> The power of our father's father. Oh, uh, I don't have a father. 
I just, I just don't like it. That's all. <laughs> it was bad. I hated it. I'm pretty sure it made me worse. Cause get the whole you point down. Was, oh god, I was trying to get a better grade than a fucking C, and I ended up just getting a B. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it, I'll take it. <laughs> Moving on. Three B's not bad. Uh, not bad. What's that? It's not bad. A B. Yeah. Wait, are you implying that you took damage? Ugh, disgusting. <laughs> Motherfucker, you take... When was the last time you didn't take damage? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was fighting uh, for yeah. It's not fair. You can't hate on me like that. <laughs> it's, it's okay. It's not that Nicole. good. It's, it's okay, Alora. Everybody learns at their own pace. I'm not judging you for making mistakes. It's only human. <laughs> Oh, because she plays on human. It's the only human. Ah, yeah. uh, I don't no, bitch. Just, I play on journalist mode. Not... I know. I'm just... Yeah, she doesn't play on journalist mode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on mayo mode. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, he played it on some of Sparta, stupid. Yeah, yeah, sure he did. So, <laughs> uh, as for me, I have a bunch of things planned at the moment. Uh, DMC5 video is making some great progress. Yeah. And okay, so I have a few things planned out, and I'll end out. Um, this will be my little season announcement. So, Ooh. uh, pretty much right alongside this episode, probably, and uh, probably this will probably be a couple days after. So, the plan is for tomorrow, which will be the twenty third of August, my DMC three commentary will go up. Which for those uh, anyone who's like watched Matthew Matosis, it's like those where he plays through the game and he's talking about things that happen. And I was like, you know what, I want to try that because like. Like, I've been asked if I want to do, like, LP stuff, and I'm like, eh, I don't really just want to do that, because it's just, you know, I don't want to be one of a million other, like, ooh, let's play Devil May Cry 3, Mission 1, Mission 2, blah, 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 blah. I want to do something. Yeah, but I'm like, most people, you'd actually be entertaining to watch, because you're good at the game. I'm pretty good at the game. I feel attacked. Oh. I feel double attacked. Shade. Hold out, hold out. In fairness, I was not referring to you or thinking of you when I said that. I was just thinking of other YouTubers who pick up popular I was just games. Just a blast. <laughs> unfortunately, yeah, it was an explosion, uh... and unfortunately, you were at the epicenter. Splash damage. Collateral damn. damage. Yeah. But um, I have that plan. Then of course Evelyn. the C's episode, mm -hmm. and so my plan is for September fifteenth to be the DMC five video. If not very soon after that, because September fifteenth is when I uploaded my first video last year, so ah. I'd like to. You know, oh, it'd be cool to have the DMC five cool. video that I've been talking about basically since I first started my YouTube channel to actually be a thing uh, the year after yeah. my first video. I think it's cool, fitting. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, following cool. that, still have a review series on Dead Money. The script is almost done. Uh, well, it's mm -hmm. it's almost done with the second draft, I should say. <laughs> And that'll be probably seven parts. Uh, I was originally originally it was going to be seventeen, then it cut to eleven, then it cut to seven. Listen. So you're yeah, welcome. Well. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm currently in the midst of working on my special video, and it's probably going to be at least five parts. Ooh. ooh. Oh, oh, and um. Why I stream? Oh, and uh, you know, I've been talking about my DMC five video being super long. When I originally was writing it up, I had a whole. I, I was starting to write a fucking pitch for dmc6 basically and i realized this is several pages long i should just make it its own video that's good but that's what's gonna happen i'm gonna have a dmc6 pitch because my dead space 4 pitch is my most popular video by far and i'm like you know what people like this people like my ideas so i'm like let's bring that to devil maker already got so much written up jesus christ we've got an entire server just dedicated to sharing shit with each other that were like written down and we've like oh, thought up and oh my god there's so much shit Dude, dedicated I've... to his dnc pit six pitch i'm i'm yeah. genuinely impressed how much he's thought of like a game that might not even ever exist hmm. oh like you've seen the abridged notes oh. my friend like Oh God! <laughs> I like, I put in I put in effort to like cut down what I sent you to the basics. What a long man! Very long. Mm -hmm. um, long so, yeah, and good. I have a dead money series. I have the DMC six pitch planned. I have uh, the next insultingly bad video, which will be covering DMC Double May Cry because it's it's about oh. fucking time I make that. Oh, yeah. I'd say I'm about halfway through. Yeah. I'd say I'm about a third of the way through. You the script. stole, you stole my idea. <laughs> to to steal my insultingly bad format? No, no, that wasn't exactly the idea. I was yeah. 
Let me make a video on DMC though. Oh yeah, you talked about it earlier. Comparing yeah, it to uh, DMC well, three. Why don't you still do you, it? <laughs> I'm gonna like I'm, yeah. him making one is not gonna stop me from making one no. or five. Um, I also have a I have a few video ideas, but there's one more video that I have planned, mm -hmm. and I told Luce about this, and I'm gonna keep it a secret for now. It's <laughs> you're not gonna expect this. No fucking human being will expect this video. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what it was. Uh, here, I'm going to text you right now. Oh, sick. Sick. I get to be the cool kids club yeah. of, like, two girls people. <laughs> I see how it no is. No girls allowed. Ooh. Boy game. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one. The cool thing about all of this with my content is, like, I know it's been taken forever for the DMC5 video, and I appreciate the patience. It's something I really, really want to make as good as possible, and I've made a lot of progress. It didn't help that I moved across the country, and I had a really busy summer with family visiting, so things have finally calmed down. Major progress has been made, and the scripts for a lot of other things are nearing completion, and they'll be much shorter things. You know, they're going to be fucking five-hour projects. The Dead Money series will be several parts, but at least the videos will be, you know, it'll be separated, so... There will be a nice stream of content, I think, following the release of that DMC5 video, at least relatively consistently. And also, more Seize episodes. Uh, Seize 11 is going to be... Uh, Seize 11 is... I'm just going to say it's going to be special. Yes. Hell yeah. And uh, Seize 12 will be Mass Effect. Yes. You hear that, Luce? You have two episodes left to... Uh, I know I have two episodes left. I'm actually probably going to play it after we're done here. Hey, right on. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't know if you're about to end it, but you can't end it just yet. We have not gotten Evelyn's take on another round and the hunt. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, Evelyn, what say you? A woman of few words. She's, did you hear that little meow she gave? I did not. I was gonna say, do, you, do, you, do you want me to meow? Like, <laughs> Elora, uh, Elora, please. It. Uh, Elora, please uh, meow for me. Oh my god, what the fuck, Luce? <laughs> I need you. I need you to I speak for Evelyn. Meow for me. Jesus. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so. There, there, there's not really an outro, but I figure we can conclude things with for Tommy. Oh, oh, oh for Tommy. For Tommy.